all right guys in previous class we struck up in somewhere where we were trying to deploy on tomcat server using our maven server but it couldn't happen due to uh, uh, execution of wrong command so in this class i'm quickly going to show you how we are going to deploy it uh, from the maven server to tomcat server for that i'm just going to my maven server this is my maven server i just logged in and this is my tomcat server so i would like to deploy on my tomcat server from my maven server for this we need a web app application because uh, i want to deploy a web based application on our tomcat server for that uh, we have already couple of projects we have already couple of projects i'm just removing these projects and uh, going to reconfigure it one more time so now we don't have any projects at all we are going to create a web based application so for that you know that we need to execute mvn command so mvn followed by archetype so we are going to generate an archetype we are just generating an archetype now it is going to ask us that sorry it is going to list list out all the templates which are available uh, in the maven uh, re, uh, repository to create new projects so if you do remember we were searching for the uh, web app uh, application so in previous class we have executed 1599 and it may change depends upon the uh, if, whenever they are going to add new templates that's why yesterday or in previous class it was showing around 500 something now it has been changed so better to we are going to search for i'm just cancelling it we are going to search for the our tomcat archetype so grip i'm just pulling the name of the our archetype so web app web app archetype maven it takes into the this is the one maven archetype web app that is the one we are trying to install we just grab it from here you can see here this one while executing our command directly we can specify minus d option with this it will ju just create it so now we are just gripping it so this is the one right maven archetype web app and uh, these two are not what we are looking we are looking for the maven web based project so this is 1610 in today's class i mean to say by today so they have updated again i'm going to execute the maven archetype generate it is going to display again all the templates will give our template name as a 1610 okay now in this also again there are different versions uh, that is seven okay seven is the latest one and uh, prior to that one we have the alpha versions okay so nothing but uh, it is not fully uh, what i can say fully developed it will work but some of the features doesn't work something like that we are going to call it as a beta versions maybe it could be the same thing sorry we are going to use the option 7 or else we can leave it as a default next uh, define the value of the pro uh, property of a group id so group id we should specify group id usually the company name followed by the project name in our case our company name is in dot galaxy it is in reverse and also the project name so in this case we are going to call it as a web app project so i'm just giving it as a web app project or else it is something related to uh, projects okay um, maybe custom client name we can give if it is a uber related project i can give uber if it is related to the sorry uber uh, if it is related to the ola i can give the ola related but for uh, just as a naming convention we are doing a web app based project so we are giving web app now 
artifact id so artifact id nothing but a project name what is the project name you would like to give i can give any name so i'm giving web app project i can give any other name as well so it is going to create a folder called web app project under that it clones the all the template next snapshot version what is the name you would like to give in the snapshot so i'm fine with the 1.0 snapshot so it creates the snapshot with that name and all this information is tracked under uh, palm.xml i hope you know so next thing is package name package name we are just giving the as it is as a group id so it will take the package name with that and it displays i'm going to record all this information in your palm.xml is this fine for you or not so i'm saying yes i'm fine with that one so why to build successfully so now what happens it cloned the template onto my local system successfully let me list out it you can see here the project name web app project this is the artifact id we have given and if i go inside to this one and clear the screen ls if i see there is a palm.xml as well as src is there i can just list out with the tree you can see here palm.xml and the src folder if i open the palm.xml you can see the what and all plugins are required for this one and the information which we have tracked uh, group id you can see here in dot velaxi dot web app and artifact id web app project snapshot versions this is the one and package it is aware because it is a web based application but it is going to take the whenever it is creating a package name it takes the this one and this one sorry this one and this one if i am not wrong and remaining all our properties which are required because it is a template as i said right so developers are going to use these templates according to their necessity all right now what we can do is we can just build quickly clear mvn install okay so or else mvn package i can give mvn package so we are packaging the code which we have do downloaded and uh, i have already executed package so it already downloaded list of the prerequisites for the uh, to build this project i mean to say third party libraries that is it's quite quick and if i do clear and ls so earlier we were having form.xml and src now yet directory called target has been created under target directory you have again multiple folders that is maven archiver and web app project under web app project it cloned the code what is there okay so index.jsp same thing index.jsp and the var files you can see here web app project dot var this is the var file it has been created and this var file we should deploy in on the tomcat server nothing but in this server okay so to deploy uh, on tomcat server we need to update our palm.xml as well as the servers uh, sorry settings.xml in our local repository so that we have already discussed in our previous class but anyway quickly i am going to edit our palm.xml mm. yeah palm.xml so let's go and edit palm.xml so we need to install the plugin which can deploy the code okay so i'm removing everything whatever is there because we don't need all this stuff and we have updated the code in our github repository so let's go and grab that one okay so this is the repository we are using under this one we have maven under maven how to deploy where file on the tomcat server and if you see the instructions so we need to update uh, first thing is we need to download our archetype we have downloaded it then we need to update our palm.xml so this is the code we should update here uh, it is not uh, tomcat 8 sorry i need to update it it is tomcat 7 so let's modify this one according to our according to our server information it is 7 and 
here we need to update with our server name so our server name we know already what is the target server name this is our tomcat server i can take the dns name or else i can take the uh, ip address but i i prefer to use the dns name i will just quickly run this one if i give 8080 i don't think so it is going to run because uh, i haven't started my services i'm going to quickly start the services on the tomcat server so tomcat services to start we need to go to opt where we have configured our tomcat under opt we have this folder under this folder again we have bin directory under bin we have a script called startup.sh so currently it is in stopped state if you want to check you can clear the screen ps minus cf grep tomcat if you search no services are running with the name of tomcat so ps minus cf is a process table check for any services running with the name of tomcat okay nothing is there and also net start minus ulpm this will tell you that what and all services are running on your system there is no service running with the port number 8080 on this system so we are quickly starting it so dot slash startup dot sh so if we start it if i check for the process table this time there is a service apache tomcat is running and also net start minus tulpn it tells that there is a process which is listening on port number 8080 that is a java based project sorry application now if i refresh it or if i execute it it is going to work right so now we are going to deploy it i hope you know you need to log in over here so i can log in as a admin admin or else with the tomcat username as well so we have already configured a couple of applications this time we are going to configure the uh, instead of web based web app project we will configure with some other name anyway so now go to our code so we need to give the our url of our tomcat server so i am removing the existing one and the url of the tomcat server till here is sufficient then what is the uh, name you would like to create in the target system nothing but here just now we have seen the project names right all these are the project names so slash is there docs are there examples like this different projects are there we should go with the one of the project name so i'm going to name it as a hello world web app okay let it be the same name because we don't have any application with this name hello world uh, minus web app so once we deploy it it is going to create that particular name so let's copy this one into our palm.xml which we are trying to update it so here we need to create it i2 insert mode anyway it is in insert mode and okay so now we have copied or updated that use a plugin to deploy our tomcat server that is tomcat 7 uh, plugin we are using and also this is the target server name and uh, on target server name we would like to create this folder right let's save this one and now we should provide the credentials of our tomcat server as we discussed the credentials are stored under .em2 so let's go to our home directory nothing but tilde nothing but it takes us to into our home directory and pwd root user we have we have logged in as a root user and root user home directory is slash root under this we have uh, a directory called dot m2 go inside to dot m2 and va settings.xml by default this file doesn't exist but we have already created in previous class so it is there and this is the code we need to update it so we are using the deployer user under deployer as a password now we have saved it anyway nothing to change over here because same users we are using and again go back to our previous directory so our previous directory is slash opt i don't think so slash opt in the current working directory itself i have cloned the web app project 
go inside to web app project now we are going to deploy it so de to deploy we need to execute a command called let me see if any other steps did i missed so next thing update our servers.xml and this is the command to deploy so far we were installing package or uh, package or uh, install commands now we are using the deploy so while using deploy use this plugin so plugin colon goal that is how we can give if you if we need the ex explicit plugin names so we are trying to do this one so maven tomcat tomcat 7 under deploy we should do it from our project so now it is going to deploy the tomcat let's sorry up our application in the target system with the name of uh, which name it is going to deploy hello world web app okay with this name there is no project yet created now if i go to our web application and so far we don't have hello world web app if i refresh it you can see there is a new application has been created that is hello world web app now if i click over here it takes into our web page and uh, currently this file have only hello world from where it is retrieving this information if i go to again my tomcat server clear the sc screen and uh, tree if i give so here we have web app project right so from in this one uh, it is going to capture i mean to say uh, compile this entire code and uh, it use the index.html where this particular file is available in current location dot nothing but in current location there is a directory called src under src we have main directory under main directory we have web app under web app we have this particular folder let's go into that directory directory so ls we have src go inside to src we have main under main we have web app under web app we have index.jsp now if i edit again this one so quickly we are going to edit this one so i'm just updating my source code it means that developer has updated his source code again i'm going to my uh, slash root parent directory nothing but to execute our command because wherever you are executing mvn command in that particular location you should have dot uh, sorry palm.xml without that name uh, you cannot execute your command let's execute i'm going inside to src and mvn uh, install just i'm trying to execute it it is going to fail because in the current location it looks for the palm.xml you can see here uh, project to execute there is no palm.xml in the directory slash root web app project src so wherever you are executing your maven command you should have palm.xml or else you need to give the path of your palm.xml okay how to give we are going to see in our jenkins but for now i'm again came back to my parent directory now we will execute it because our source code has been changed nothing but developers has changed or updated their code now we want to deploy the updated code whenever we want to deploy the updated code then we should go with a build and deploy that is what we should do right so again we are going to do mvn uh, tomcat 7 colon deploy so whenever we do deploy what it is trying to do is it is going to create a uh, hello world web app that is our project name we have given right so hello world web app the project name we have given so it will try to create this particular directory structure but it is already exist so it fails so subsequent times if your project is already deployed if you want to deploy it again then we should use a command called tomcat7 redeploy but we'll try with the deploy and we'll see what happens so now what happens it is trying to build the new code and it try to deploy the new code on the target system oh great so deploy also worked but we'll go and see i'm just trying to refresh it 
you can see here new code is not copied why because the web app directory is already sorry this directory is already exist i'm sorry in that whatever where file is there if it finds where file it is not going to redeploy it it is not going to redeploy it that is the reason you could still see the old code new build happened but the file is not copied onto the target system successfully because of the deploy command that is that's the reason we should execute redeploy command so whenever we execute redeploy it is going to remove the target web app directory sorry uh, target where file and create update the new where file and now if i go and refresh it you can see the new code that is welcome to devops so this is how we can update our code and deploy it on our target server is it clear any questions I just went little fast because uh, most of the stuff is discussed in previous class. That's the reason I quickly run through with uh, this one. So anyway, we are going to start a new concept called continuous integration in today's class. Uh, okay, so this is one of the key service in our entire DevOps pro process. I can say from now onwards, we could able to see the advantages of DevOps. Maybe you might be getting confused why we are executing Maven commands, why we are deploying this way, that way. So a lot of confusions might be there. Uh, you are going to get the most of the clarifications over here. Okay. So with that, we'll start our continuous integration topic. So, so far what we have done, if you do remember, we have a, uh, group of people are a team who is developing code so that code they have checked in why it is coming like this hold on a minute not this one yeah sorry so so far what we have done we have a group of people okay of course we don't have assume that just developers are there who is pushing their code onto the github repository initially we tried this one but for now we are building our code directly on maven but usually developers uh, create their code i mean to say whatever archetype generate we executed right same command they execute on their local laptops and they create a project they modify their project they check in into the git once it is checking into the git from maven server we are going to pull that one okay so instead of uh, doing all this stuff we have bypassed the git and we are directly creating code on maven for the easier purpose that is what we have done even in today's lecture okay so we have code on maven once we have uh, created code we are deploying on tomcat server and also we what we can do we can store it in our artifactory um yes in our artifactory whatever outcome it is coming but this is not right way of managing our devops flow what happens whenever developer is pushing new code today also we have changed index.jsp whenever we change new code again we need to execute a maven command to redeploy it is not easy process to every day we log into maven server and execute the multiple deployments because people may push their code frequently and we cannot able to deploy quite frequently on the tomcat server uh, without any automation so the process should be something like this we are expecting so developers push their code and maven could able to build it and the artifactory we are going to do the versioning and these versions get deployed into the tomcat we should not deploy directly from the maven onto the tomcat system we should maven can able to only push the artifactories into the artifact repository from artifact repository only we need to pull and deploy it on the our application server it may be a tomcat jbus web uh, web logic or web sphere any kind of application server we should deploy it so this is the expectation so this is what we are expecting or we want to do so that uh, and also all this process could be automated so who can do all these activities nothing but whenever code is there we need to 
tell to maven to build that one i don't want to go and execute maven build or maven package so somebody has to tell to maven that to do this one and maven should automatically do that one once maven could able to build the uh, artifactory i mean to say yeah artifact that should i want to push it into the jfrog i don't want to again tell to my maven that okay push that one into the artifactory once it is pushed i want to deploy this on your tomcat server by taking from the artifactory so i don't want to handle maven to deploy on that one why because maven is meant for build the artifactory sorry artifact not to for the deployment so somebody we need to organize all this stuff so who can do that one that is where the continuous integration comes into the picture why we need continuous integration because the builds happen quite frequently sorry the code check-ins are happen quite frequently by the developers maybe they check in code every day two three times or every day once or uh, uh, once in two two days like that they are going to check in their code whenever they check in code we need to initiate a build whenever we need uh, check in they check in the code we need to initiate a build so we need to initiate whenever uh, build is initiated it should go through with a lot of process like running the test cases generate artifacts and uh, uh, pushing those artifacts into the artifactory all this stuff has to happen quite frequently and continuously it is not one day task so uh, so if if it is hap should happen as a continuation process we can still do with the maven but there is a lot of um, um, manual work is necessary or else we need to write a lot of scripts uh, okay if somebody knows the cron job we can set up a uh, cron job to do this some activities writing by writing some scripts but we don't want to make it as a complicated okay so that is where we are going to use the continuous integration so continuous integration can able to handle it in smoother way nothing but it won't be much difficult and quite efficient way as well quite efficient way nothing but whenever the build sorry new code comes it uh, it can able to initiate your maven server to do uh, build once the build is done it generates the artifact right it tells that okay it uh, not it tells it push the artifactory into the uh, sorry artifact into the artifactory and also if it is necessary to deploy from artifactory to it is going to deploy on the target system all this can be managed efficiently by using the continuous integration now what are the continuous integration services are available in the market so lot of people might heard about the jenkins okay this is the one of the more widely used continuous integration tool in the market at this moment okay so then bamboo is there circle ci team city git labs also there so like this we have various tools in this particular continuous integration uh what i can say under continuous integration so among this we can use any of the continuous integration tool to achieve this particular task okay it doesn't mean that only jenkins we can use any of the continuous integration tool for this purpose now people are tempted to use more jenkins because there are a lot of advantages uh, using the jenkins so before talking about the jenkins we are going to talk about what is continuous integration uh, we just discussed about it continuous yeah we just discussed but we'll talk about continuous in integration then what is jenkins and why jenkins and install jenkins i hope till here we can able to complete today's class then we are going to see create a job what is plugin integration additional plugins understanding workspace okay all this stuff we are going to do in upcoming classes till what level we can able to complete in today's class we'll go with that one so this is what we are going to discuss in today's class first we'll discuss about the continuous integration continuous integration nothing but let me open my okay so let's take a uh, simple example that uh, you received a project to develop for your client assume that it is going to take one year okay you have received uh, uh, one project and to develop and uh, to give it to your uh, customer you have given a timelines for uh, one year 
but before coming to the uh, you get a project there are a different phases it going to run first you are going to discuss with your uh, client and you 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 take the project requirements project requirements we are going to gather from the client okay so what he is expecting out of this project what he want to achieve it so that we are going to gather it from the client okay client requirements sorry okay client requirements then once we have received the uh, requirements from the client we are going to uh, next phase called project design so project design so what we do is we will uh, gather the project uh, sorry client requirements uh, then we are going to do the project design whenever we do the project design we will come up with the lot of inputs that in which language we are going to develop this code and uh, what is the timelines and uh, uh, when we are going to deliver it what is the initial features you are going to get and uh, uh, when the fully loaded application get delivered so that is how we are going to tell to the customers we cannot give the or deliver the all the features at a go assume that let's take an example that uh, a e-commerce website we are developing for our client whenever he comes to the e-commerce website uh, uh, usually in previous days before coming into the devops what they, we were doing we need to deliver the fully loaded application to the client it is uh, like okay uh, i will give all this stuff by so and so date it is not like that okay feature by feature we are going to do why because you need to integrate all your code once it is completely developed then only we can deliver it okay so we have assumed that project design is done and we think that it requires a 30 developers okay 30 developers to design this code and uh, client is agreed and the billing is fine and uh, timelines we have given it as a one year to deliver this project now what happens we are going to our the project uh, uh, architect is going to design or sorry split into the different modules we cannot run it as a single one right so they de define or they split it into the different modules like that uh, first five developers work on login page okay login page nothing but whenever you hit the bro application sorry uh, website it will ask for the login page where you need to fill your information and it should get stored in the database and everything should happen uh, in the login page next to five developers assume that they are working on the uh, what i can say billing nothing but uh, assume that customer has purchased the product and once he purchased the project how the billing process should happen how to take his credentials uh, sorry how to authenticate the payment method whether payment is done or not all this stuff it is going to happen is handled by other team next 10 developers are working on sh uh, shopping cart nothing but whenever we search for something what and all information it should display where what and all uh, inventory it should uh, show all this information depends upon the key keywords what products should i need to define all this stuff okay next to shipping once the he ordered the uh, product then what we need to do is we need to ship it into his uh, address so where the project is there sorry product is there once it, the product is uh, delivered when it is delivered after delivering uh, when is the return policy is over all this stuff has been developed by some other team like that we have divided the four modules and we have given it to the developers to develop it now before uh, devops nothing but assume that currently we don't have devops methodology then what do they do they are going to uh, they are going to develop their entire code as a team and they are may or may not integrate their own code frequently because the developers keep on developing their code once the code is completed a particular developer then he is going to uh, speak with the other team and he says that okay my code is completed and i am waiting for your code in this case what happens whoever completes their code first they are sitting idle or they may or may not help the other because in between if you go and help the other team it may not work 
so you need to wait until the other product are completed or other modules are completed once other modules also get completed you will try to integrate all this code at once all this code at once then you can see or find out the lot of bugs uh, because while integrating you will uh, feel that our one team goal may not uh, reach to the another team goal so this team says that okay i was expecting so and so so and so from your uh, code but that code is not delivering the inputs what i am expecting so with that expectation i have built my code and uh, previous code i mean to say these guys is not giving the same inputs for these guys then it doesn't work so then the integration issues comes whenever you are uh, integrating your code integrating nothing but combining all the code relevant to the project so it may happen the person to person or team to team this integration process issues so to overcome this integration process issues how it will be every day if we are integrating our code that is what developers thought or management thought that okay why can't i uh, integrate the code which is developed by our developers every day so that we can see the progress at the same time in this case before to devops client doesn't have any clue that till which level my project is completed why because he cannot see any development until everybody developed their piece of code and integrate everything if it is not integrated he cannot he doesn't know anything it's like a either zero either hundred percent you cannot see the in between progress in our code even they give some junk code uh, that we have completed client doesn't know whether it is really completed or not so even client also have the good visibility that till which level my code is completed is at least something is working for me okay so that is how uh, people thought and they come up with a solution called devops in the devops process what it comes or it do it is going to integrate the code regular basis not the at the end of the project delivery okay so it will integrate their code quite frequently maybe every day or uh, multiple times in a day they are going to integrate their code whenever they have very little piece of code if they find the integration issues it is quite easy for them to resolve the issues because i have written some code today and some error is there in today's code it is quite easy for me to remember what i have developed today and what could be the problem but if i developed a piece of code today and after one month you come and tell told me that okay whatever you have developed one month back it is not working for me it is like a uh, going back and rethinking how i have developed and what was my assumption while developing that code so all these problems get resolved if you do the continuous uh, daily integration or quite frequent integration so that's where we came up with a continuous integration so continuously if you integrate your code in daily basis or once in a uh, sorry multiple times in a week the issues can be fixed as soon as possible that is one advantage okay next uh, in the devops process the flow has been little bit changed okay so the client requirements also whenever we taken with the client what we can do or we can tell that okay initially we build a login page so instead of saying one year i will say one year but i will split it into the different modules nothing but after three months i will give the login page so you will go and check your login page and you can see the what is happening in the login page so he can fill the some information and he check it out whether the validation is correct or not next offer after three more months i will give shopping page okay so you can go and fetch the inventory and what and all information is there whenever you search with the keywords after three months you are going to see the billing nothing but you can uh, uh pay the product i mean to say you can buy the product and you can give your credit card information or your billing information all this stuff next after three months you are going to see the shipping as well shipping information like uh, like you are going to get a message to your mobile once uh, your product is delivered where sorry not delivered is uh, in the uh, shipping 
and you will uh, whenever you receive you are going to update in your databases all this stuff is going to happen after three months so by splitting like this client will have the very good visibility what happening on his project because every day he can see the development and after three months what, what my client is saying um, uh, my developer is saying that he is going to show me a login page after six months he is going to show me a one more tab called sh uh, shopping after uh, nine months he is going to show me the billing as well like that he can have the clear visibility of what happening in the uh, for his project at the same time for these guys also it is quite easy or quite uh, efficient to handle it once this is working i know what i have worked over here maybe 30 developers only work on this particular module okay once this is completed in three months all these developers may go and uh, do the shopping uh, related module then they ship into here then they move into here like that the all the developers get worked efficiently even though they are what i can say commonly distributed still they have the better visibility every day we are integrating the code with all this stuff so all this should work collectively not as a independently so the this activity nothing but integrating your code in quite frequent basis we call it as a continuous integration okay so in this process whenever i say that in uh, three months whenever they are developing it will go with the test uh, uh, phase and also pre-prod nothing but before production then prod okay so we are going to do with all this stuff once test is fine then we'll go with the pre-prod one pre-prod is fine then we are going to deploy on the prod so after three months customer can able to see on his production maybe it may not go live okay there is a difference between pre-prod and go live so while developing developing phase so even though they deploy on the production uh, it may not go live go live nothing but even though it is on the production server the website may not work it is still under uh, construction phase something like that we can keep it so the benefit of continuous integration is the efficient way of handling either client side or customer side and also uh, efficient way of working to resolve the issues as soon as possible or bugs i can say all right so that is about the continuous integration now we are going to talk about what is jenkins okay so jenkins is the leading open source automation server so what is the purpose of jenkins is it is a going to do the automation what it is going to do the automations okay it is going to do the automation with the build and deployment as well so jenkins provide hundreds of plugins to support building okay deploying and automate automating any project so it is going to build and deploy in build and deploy there are a lot of phases again it will come in the splitted basis we are going to talk we are going to talk about the all the phases okay so this is what jenkins can do and uh, it is an application okay jenkins is an application which manages manages and monitor executions of repeated jobs it is also going to do the manage it is also going to manage repeated jobs repeated jobs nothing but every day you need to do the same activity every day you need to build your code every day every day you need to deploy your code so these all are repeated activities repeated activities you can uh, automate it by using some automation tools or you need to write some scripts so rather than writing scripts we can use the jenkins as a automation tool it makes your work more easy if you are doing repeated tasks now why people are using jenkins okay because jenkins can able to what i can say do deploy operate and monitor and also once the plan is done developers are going to develop the code from here it is going to take it 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 can able to uh, take the code and it builds it and test it then deploy it operate and monitor all this stuff it is going to do and again if there is some problem uh, while it is monitoring monitoring nothing but uh, in whenever it is running on production we are going to see uh, how it is working that we call it as a monitoring 
so once monitoring have some issues then again it is going with the plan plan nothing but developing your code okay so this activity can be efficiently managed by your jenkins now what makes jenkins so great as i said jenkins is widely used uh, continuous integration tool okay why because jenkins is a open source it is not a paid one it is a open source if if you just have a linux system or uh, even windows you can install your uh, jenkins okay next next it is easy to install uh, i'm going to show you how to install jenkins in today's class next easy gui okay very simple steps or a simple way of handling your uh, jenkins server very few options you will find uh, i mean to say it have a lot of options but uh, it is quite simple to manage next to distributed builds distributed builds nothing but uh, your jenkins have different kind of applications to manage i mean to say your project may need java application dot net application uh, maybe javascript or python uh, php different kind of applications are there so you would like to build all this by using jenkins so jenkins can able to uh, hand it over his load to his slaves that is where master and slave concepts come into the picture uh, but yes it is going to distribute his builds nothing but rather than i do my work i can give it to my clients who can do the same work for me okay that we call it as a build distributions next to track revert changes so track and revert changes you can track out when the build happened when the changes to this particular code happened maybe it uh, sorry it happens at the git level but in the artifact level nothing but when the new build happened and when the new build got deployed and what was the changes happened uh, in the new build you can check it out on the production sorry in your test systems in case something is not working it is quite easy for you to revert it because you will have the previous sorry previous artifacts so these all are makes your jenkins uh, more efficient okay sorry so that is about the uh, why we are using uh, Jenkins next we are going to see how to install our Jenkins okay so we are going to see now how to install Jenkins so Jenkins you can install to install your Jenkins you need a separate server okay so okay now to install your Jenkins you need a separate server uh, where you can use it as a continuous integration tool but even in jenkins we need a maven why because you you can build it you need to build it if you are not using maven uh, you cannot able to build it uh, appropriately so what we can do you can use your maven server as your build tool or else i'm going to create a new server on top of that one we are going to install Jen jenkins then as well as mavens that could be easy right so first what i will do i will take a fresh 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 server and i i'm going to install jenkins on top of that one then we are going to install again maven why because the builds happens in the maven server wherever the builds happens there you need a maven server maven uh, setup otherwise you cannot able to build it right so the maven sorry jenkins installation has been updated in our uh, repository that is Vyankil's repository if you go to the simple devops project here we have jenkins and uh, we have a file called jenkins installation this is the file you can able to go through with this one to install your jenkins okay it works so quickly i will run through with the jenkins how we can install so we need an ec2 instance with internet access and in security group the port number 8080 because even jenkins also runs on port number 8080 like how our tomcat runs then first we need to install java why because 
Jenkins is a Java application. It uh, de developed on Java. So it requires a Java to install your Jenkins. So first we are installing Jen Java. Once we have installed Java, we need to set up the uh, environment variable. Okay, once we set up environment variable, we need to uh, check out whether Java is properly installed or not. We need Java 1.8 to install Jenkins. Next, we can install Jenkins by using this one. Okay, these are the commands to install Jenkins. Then we can start the Jenkins and access it from the public, sorry, browser with the public IP colon port number 8080. So this is how we are going to set up our Jenkins server. So if you go to again, first step is we need to install Java. Prior to that one, we need an EC2 instance. So quickly, I'm going to launch new EC2 instance. So it is Amazon Linux I'm taking T2 micro and uh, as it is nothing to change on these slides, sorry, screens, name, I'm giving Jenkins server, okay? I will give like this, Jenkins server. Next, Jenkins underscore server I'm going to give. This can be anything here. Next, we are going to choose our security group that is DevOps SG. Anyway, port number 8080 is already opened. And I'm using DevOps key. Launch the system. Now we have created a new system, and for Jenkins T2 micro system is sufficient. Okay, there is no issue. Okay, my Jenkins server is up. I'm taking the IP address of this one. And EC2 minus user. That's it. So we have logged into new system which we just created. I'm closing all the tabs. We, we may not need Maven and uh, Tomcat at this moment. So I just closed it and clear the screen and sudo su minus host name. If you want to change your host name permanently, you can change it under your uh, slash etc host name. Okay, this is the file here. You can change your host name by default. It is taking this as your host name. So I'm going to give Jenkins server. Okay, I'm giving all in small cases and uh, this will take effect once you restart your system. Not immediately. You need to restart your system. But for now, if you want to take it immediate effect, you just need to do host name Jenkins server. Okay. If I go again, SUDYSU minus nothing but you need to log off and log in rather than that one. I'm just again switching as a root user. So it takes that this temporary effect. But after restart from next class, anyway, we have updated this one. It takes as a Jenkins server and this is commented it out. So it is not valid now. Now I have named it as my Jenkins server. So first thing is whether Java is installed or not. Java minus version you can see here. There is no Java at all Now we should install Java as I said we need a Java 1.8. So yum install Java Not Java Java 1.8 Either star I can give instead of star. I can give the name as well package name It is there over here You can give the yum install minus y Java 1.8 open JDK devil Okay, this we can give, but I'm just giving a dot star. So it is going to take the name automatically and install Java in our system. Yes, do you want to install it? Yes, I would like to install it. That's it. So Java installation is going to happen. If you see even for our Maven server or Artifactory or Tomcat for everything Java installation is necessary, right? So if frequently if you want to install Java in AWS, we have uh, one concept called um, user data. 
okay in aws we have a concept called user data that is aws concept where you can tell to your system what and all softwares it should install while it is coming up so what you can do rather than that one maybe you can experiment it so choose this one same way now here you have your option called user data in user data you can specify whatever commands you would like to in execute on your system so just now what we have done we have we are installing uh, java right so if i just give this one this command okay so what what it happens whenever it is setting up your system it automatically installs java as well you no need to install it again mm -hmm. sorry you no need to install it again not only java if you want to execute few other commands all these commands you can keep it over here but you are while you are keeping it you need to provide the hash escalatory mark slash bin bash okay by adding this one if you execute this one now whenever you launch your system your system will comes up automatically with the java okay this we call it as a user data user data will help us to automate some of the activities I mean to say before starting or setting up your system you want to uh, require some software this command you can execute and also you may need git as well okay you can do the git okay all this stuff you can do you want to download maven also wget and maven server url if you give it is going to download maven you want to install maven as well so like that you can do the automation up to whatever you want all these commands you need to keep it in appropriate way automatically it picks up and uh, uh, it it is going to set it up your system in later classes we are going to see how we can automatically install our jenkins server nothing but i will give all the information over here and whenever i launch it it automatically comes up with the jenkins a server is running with the jenkins okay that also we can do but that is all about aws concepts if i want to do more automation okay as a devops engineer you need to think about this one whenever i am executing any command how can i do or how can i automate this one if you are thinking in such way you will become a good devops engineer okay okay but for better understanding most of the cases i will go with manual steps in my trainings so that you can understand what happening in the background then one by one one by one we can automate it okay so java installation is successful now now what we need to do we need to install jenkins as well right on top of java we need to install jenkins so yum install jenkins i'm just trying to install jenkins whenever we install jenkins we'll see what happens it is saying that there is no packages related to the jenkins there is no packages related to the jenkins sorry jenkins i'm a bit confused whenever i execute yum install java it is installed java whenever i execute jenkins it is not working okay so there is a reason behind this that is uh, usually what happens i will quickly run through with this one so what happens in your system assume that this is your system i mean to say like linux server so this is your linux system your linux system is by default configured with one of the repository repository nothing but uh, the list of the packages which are required for this system by default it is connecting connected with the rhl repo rhl repo nothing but red hat red hat team is going to run a cloud repo cloud repository where it puts all the prerequisite softwares if you do remember in our maven also we have a repository right maven have all the third party libraries over there and uh, whenever we are doing build it communicate through the internet through to this repository and install it similar way even linux system also it it requires some of the operating system packages right so these packages it is going to pull from the rhl repo but in this repo there is no guarantee that you will find everything but it has the most of the quite frequently used or all the necessary 
packages which are required to set up your system so jenkins is quite frequently used uh, packages or softwares on linux system that is the reason they have kept it over there now similar way sorry not jenkins java similar way jenkins is not the quite frequently one so jenkins is run in the separate repository which is managed by the uh, jenkins itself so jenkins team says that i have a separate repository called uh, repository so this we call call it as a jenkins repo just for naming convention so if you want to get the jenkins packages you need to connect to this particular repository okay i don't kept it where everywhere you just connect to this particular repository so that i am going to give or you are going to get this particular jenkins packages so to now we need to configure this repository in our system i mean to say whenever i execute yum install jenkins jenkins could able to check in this repository as well as in this repository okay if it is checks in the both the repositories it can find the packages in in the jenkins repository currently it is configured only with this particular repository with this one so here we don't have jenkins packages it could not able to communicate now we need to set up in our linux system to communicate with other repository as well that already mentioned in the jenkins uh, installation procedure now if i go and uh, jenkins download if i execute you can see here jenkins installation and setup it is taking us the jenkins.io this is the official website of jenkins okay jenkins.io and there is a download option over here if i go here you can see the instructions how you can download your jenkins yeah here you can see here our red hat fedora and centos this is to download download jenkins 2.2 triple two dot three this is the latest version not this is the one yeah not this is the latest version this is the latest version okay uh, always this is the latest version and the long term support nothing but this is the st stable version stable version nothing but the testing has done and everything looks good on this particular version those we call it as a stable version uh, weekly version nothing but every week they are going to update some fixes and they are going to release the weekly versions either we can go with this one or this one but always better to use this one because this is not fully tested one so go with the red hat fedora because we are installing on red hat now you can see here red hat linux rpm packages for jenkins to use this repository run the following commands so it is saying that if you run these following commands you are going to communicate with this particular repository otherwise you cannot able to communicate so let's execute these commands i'm just going to do the wget all this information going to get stored under slash etc m m dot repo file is there under that one it will get stored but anyway we just trying to download the repository information next they have given the key to communicate with that repository let's take this repository sorry let's take this key so now we we told that communicate this repo and i have enough credentials to communicate with this repo that's cool now we have set up the key as well now if i run m install jenkins it is going to communicate with the new repository and installs jenkins you can see here this time it is identified it has identified the jenkins packages would you like to install it yes i would like to install it and uh, it takes a while to download and install on our linux system okay so now again if i go back apart from linux we have the different uh, uh, flavors that is if you want to do the docker free bsd mac os open b bsd windows okay generic jar packages so this one also you can use you can see here where packages are there where packages nothing but applications so to run where packages what you need to do anybody tell me if i want to use these packages how can i run this uh, particular where file uh, on tomcat we can deploy 
yes what we need to do first we need to install java on top of java we need to install tomcat and tomcat we just copy this var file and kept it under web apps directory if you do that one you can access the application from the browser that you can do that if you want to experiment you can experiment this as well it is going to download the jar file okay anyway don't need it cancel it you just need to take the copy link uh, packages sorry copy link address and uh, you know you need to go to your tomcat server and if you deploy over there that's it your system will be your jenkins will be up and running this is the installing the Jenk jenkins that is configuring the jenkins that's it there you are not installing at the operating system level where where file means you are not installing at the operating system level m means you are installing at the operating system level okay my J jenkins is installed now uh, jenkins is a service again you need to start how the tomcat or maven sorry not maven how tomcat or artifactory we are starting right similar way service jenkins status we need to execute it but here we are going to use a service service jenkins status if you do remember we have discussed about these commands okay all the services whenever we you we install at the operating system level you can execute with the service if it is not installed at the operating system level you cannot execute with the service that's the reason whenever we start artifactory or tomcat we are using the uh, scripts to start it not this one but we can configure with the service later classes we are going to show you if we configure with the services and we can enable that one to auto start with the system start nothing but whenever you reboot or stop and start your systems system automatically it starts with your uh, operating system now just now we have installed and it is in the jenkins is in stopped state you can see here it is loaded but it is in inactive state now we need to start the service to start the service service jenkins start okay this is the command to start the jenkins and it is started and if i check for the status now it is in running state and i can access the jenkins server from the browser now and net stat minus t u l p m it is also runs on port number 8080 and 8080 is already opened right you can see here it is also running on java and 8080 is already opened at in our security group level now i can access this from the browser to access it go to jenkins server and take the ip address or else most of the cases i am going with the dns name why because due to some restrictions in the browser so from now onwards i will go with the <clears throat> dns names not with the ip addresses so here you can see here port number 8080 we are using and i'm canceling this and uh, yes uh, now we need to unlock jenkins whenever you install and if you want to lock in you should have the credentials right otherwise if i give this ip address to you even you can log into my jenkins so to get credentials you need to go to this particular location where lib jenkins secrets initial admin password so in this file they kept the initial admin password you need to grab the initial admin password from this link now go here and cat let me clear the screen cat and if i open this file you can see here there is a randomly generated password is there and if i click on this one sorry if i give password over here and continue now i can able to log into my jenkins whenever you log into your jenkins initially it suggests some of the plugins it's like uh, by default whenever you are installing any operate sorry application on your windows it is going to set up something right similar way it is going to suggest some of the plugins we are going to talk about what is plugins in tomorrow's class but uh, just install the suggested plugins okay suggested plugins 
next these all are the plugins it is installing let it be you can see here it is installing folders build timeout and you can see here workspace cleanup pipeline git okay just to remember all this subversion all these uh, sorry some of these plugins are not necessary for us in later point of time like ant gradle uh, mailer email extension ldap okay so these all are the uh, plugins which are installing by default because they assume or they think that these all are the quite frequently used uh, plugins that's the reason by default they are suggesting these plugins let it be but if you don't need these plugins you can uh, remove in the later point of time and if you need any additional plugins you can install in later point of time plugins we are going to talk in uh, next class okay let it run still it is happening okay now we need to set up a user because we we may not to use the admin credentials all the time and also it is not a best practice to use the admin credentials that's the reason we need to create a new user for our jenkins so i am creating a user called jenkins okay and also password also i am giving jenkins at 123 there is no caps in the jenkins just jenkins at 123 and full name jenkins user and email id jenkins at velocity.in just i am giving some random email id and save and continue and now you can see here this is the jenkins url and if you do remember we are using the public ip address so this ip address keep on changing you cannot use the same uh, jenkins url so i'm just uh, ignoring this step okay because if i keep the same url this ip address may get changed that is the reason i don't want to do i will use the whatever ip address uh, it is going to generate during the startup of my system at that ip address i am going to use it now my Jenkins is ready and start using Jenkins. Okay, so this is our Jenkins console and we successfully installed Jenkins and this is the Jenkins user we just logged in and this is to log off and there are some other options we have over here which we are going to discuss in next class. Okay, any questions over here? Okay, it's so if you uh, download this uh, files on our Tomcat, hmm. so we know we need to deploy the link on that for link. downloading. The no, just you need to go here, take this one, copy link address, and uh, we have already logged into our Tomcat server, right? Cat server okay so you just need to go to slash opt apache apache tomcat and web apps as a root sorry slash opt apache web app and here you just need to wget and you need to download it that's it and uh, if I take the Tomcat server IP address from the browser and go to manage, or else directly I can specify Jenkins over here. But uh, you can see here there is a Jenkins is there, and if I click over here, it takes us to the Jenkins. This is on another system. I mean to say, in my Tomcat server, this is another way to set up your Jenkins. All right, so if you don't have any questions, we are going to wind up for today over here and see you again tomorrow. Okay, bye guys. So if you do remember in previous class, we have set up Jenkins server. 
and this is a, my server i just started and if i try to access this server from the browser if i start it from the browser sorry if i try to access it from the browser on port number 8080 okay so it is asking for username my username is jenkins and password also jenkins at 123 right so we have logged in this is an uh, brand new server i mean to say fresh server so far i haven't set up anything okay now if we want to create any new job you can see here create new job job nothing but a task if you want to achieve something regularly or uh, what i can say frequently you can create as a job in jenkins the purpose of jenkins the purpose of Jenkins is to create jobs which you want to execute quite frequently or regularly. So it is going to help you to achieve those tasks. For that we have, we can create jobs. So to create a new job, this is the option to create a new job. Apart from creating a new job, you have people build history, manage Jenkins, my views, and uh, lockable resources, credentials, and a new view. So these all are the options. This is build queue and build executor status. Build queue nothing but if you have any jobs in uh, in the queue to execute it, that will show in the build queue. And build executor status nothing but if any jobs are running, it is going to show you under build executor. So at this point of time, we don't have any jobs and we we are not running any jobs that is the reason it is going to show you this uh, nothing over here so we'll start with our first jenkins job to create any new job either you can click over here because it is your first time you can see this one later point of time you cannot see this option but whenever you want to create a new job this is the option you can go to the new item or else create new jobs both are take both take you into the same page now i am going to give as a first jenkins job okay the name of my job is first jenkins job this is a required field and once you have chosen your job name there are different kind of jobs are there but for now freestyle project we are going to go do so the freestyle project is this is the central future of jenkins jenkins will build your project combining any scm with any build system and this can be even used for something other than software build so freestyle project is a kind of pro uh, option where you can build any kind of code any kind of code you can build and uh, any kind of software you can build it but you will understand more about going forward about freestyle but this is the freestyle project we are creating and we can use if you don't know which project you should use then blindly go with the freestyle project so you need to select it here and click ok now it will take us into the next page where you need to provide inputs for your build whenever i say uh, job job is a task so what task you would like to achieve from this job that is what you need to specify so description is there in the description field you can provide the description what is the purpose of this job i can just mention this is a test job and moreover description is optional it is not mandatory apart from this we have multiple options over here but just ignore for now and uh, source code management we are not touching anything and build triggers are there and build environments and build okay so we want to build something through this project so what we are going to build there are again multiple options execute web sorry execute windows batch command execute shell invoke and invoke gradle you can see here invoke top level maven triggers run uh, with the timeout and a uh, few other 
so these all are the options which are you can see under build and these options get increased depends upon the plugins you installed if you do remember we have installed ant plugin we have installed gradle plugin that is the reason you could able to see these two options maybe because whenever you install plugins it is going to show you more options but for now what we are doing is we are executing shell command means i am going to execute a simple shell command or else if you want to execute on windows this is the option so which one i need to choose it depends upon where you have installed your jenkins in my current case i have installed my jenkins on windows sorry linux so i am going with execute shell if you are you have installed your jenkins on windows you can go with the windows bash command batch command okay now execute shell here you can provide the command what you would like to execute i want to just execute a command called echo okay echo is a command which will display the content whatever you specified in the columns so something like this so hello world okay this is the command we are executing and i am going to execute same command in my jenkins server this is my jenkins server echo hello hello world okay whenever i execute echo hello world in my shell prompt it is going to just display the same thing it is going to display same thing so even here also whenever the build happens it is going to display the same output so now let's apply apply nothing but if you change anything you are going to apply those and save it once you have saved it you can able to see your first jenkins job this is your first jenkins job and these all properties belongs to jenkins okay earlier we have seen here jenkins properties where you can see first item is new item okay if i go back here you can see the jenkins dashboard but currently i'm inside my job in my job i have the job status changes work workspace all these options are there and among this you can see a option called build now build now is a option which can trigger your current job which can trigger your current job and you can see here build history so far any builds happened or not if no builds are happened you cannot find anything but whenever a new build happens it is going to display over here so let's execute build now and whenever the build is happening you can able to see the build result over here and the build whether it's happening or not yeah i clicked it or not let me try it one more time build now yep build scheduled and yes you can see here build has been completed and uh, if you want to see the build output there is a arrow symbol over here right you can click on the arrow symbol or else directly if you click on this one it will take you into the console output console output nothing but the output of your command or you sorry the output of your job you can see here started by jenkins user because we have logged in as a jenkins user right that is the information it is displaying if you log in with any other user it is going to show you the same username running as system and build in workspace we are going to talk about workspace in a minute but you can see here what it has done it is executing this jenkins.sh this is executing as a script why it is executing as a sh script because we have chosen option as a shell script executed as a shell okay that is the reason it is do executing this shell script and echo hello world so this is the instruction which is there in the shell script and it created temporarily a file called dot sh under tmp and it's added this line and executed that particular command and output of this one has displayed over here and result whether it is successfully finished or not is available over here okay so this is the option or this is how you can build your job in jenkins okay now whenever you create any job in your uh, jenkins system it is going to store your data in this particular 
location that is where lib jenkins workspace okay this is the default directory where lib Je jenkins workspace so in this location your job information gets stored you can see here first jenkins job this is the job name i have given so where can i check this one i can check this one under my jenkins server cd go to your jenkins server and ls you can see here your first jenkins job is there okay but we are going to talk about this one more in a while okay now before uh, talking about this one we'll execute or we'll create one more job okay now i'm going to create one more job that is going to display the my system current time it is going to display my system current time so to display your current system time we can execute a command called date okay so date is a command which will display the current system time this is may 19th okay 133 utc okay 2020 the year so this is the command to display the date and i can add echo and date command both together that is echo current time and date is sorry current date and time is i can just specify dollar date okay so what happens whenever you display the dollar date it is going to execute it as a command it is going to execute it as a command if you don't specify dollar okay let's try it yeah dollar date colon so it is going to display the current date and time you can see here current date and time is tuesday may 19th so and so so what echo command does do it displays this one as it is whenever you specify dollar in front of any uh, command it replaces this value with the command it replaces this value with the output sorry it replaces this value with the output so if i don't specify dollar it is just going to display the content as it is it is going to display the content as it is even i can remove these braces as well i can just give the dollar you can see here whenever i give the dollar it is not taking at all so this is the command to display the your date this is the command it is going to display the date now we are going to keep this one or with this one we are going to create a new jenkins job let's go back again i'm going back to my jenkins console okay you can see here now you are able you could able to see the one job which is just created now we are going to create a new job again new job new item and uh, date job okay just we are giving date job and it is a freestyle and okay to connect sorry create this job displays current time so this particular job is going to display the current time and we are not changing anything we are just going here and execute shell and i'm just giving our command echo this is what uh, we want to display and dollar date apply and save now let's build this change so far it is not built okay because this is a fresh job we just created and build now you can see here this is completed wait so this is completed and you can see the arrow mark over here here arrow mark you have the changes what changes uh, you have done in this particular job and console output this is what we are able to see edit build information and delete this build so console output we can click same information we are going to get at the same time if you just click over here it takes you into the console output again it is ran by the jenkins user and the build in workspace so and so and again it's created a new dot uh, sh because we are executing it as a shell and this is the command and you can see here current date and time it is 136 
because it is going to execute on the particular system which you have specified in our case it is executing on jenkins server itself so whatever jenkins server data is sorry date is showing same thing it is going to show you again if i execute it is going to pick up the latest time earlier it is 36 right this time it could be 37 okay so it takes the or the build will happen immediately whenever you click on build command okay now we are going to add little more changes to this particular or uh, uh, new job we are going to create a new job so far we have created two jobs now let's take in another example that i would like to display my name i would like to display my name so usually in linux what happens you can assign a value to a variable so i can specify that name is equal to r shankar and uh, sorry name is equal to r shankar i need to specify in the braces and echo name if i give it is just going to display as it is whatever you have specified but echo dollar name if you specify it is going to replace the name value with the my name so the output of this command is ar shankar so i can just trim this one little bit my name is dollar name okay i'm just displaying my name is dollar name you can see here my name is ar shankar okay so same command if you want if i want to execute in the uh, jenkins first i need to define the name variable then i need to define the uh, this particular parameter okay we'll trim little bit more about this one so i'm going to replace my sorry first name first name is equal to ar and uh, second name is equal to shankar okay i'm just giving my first name is ar second name is shankar so echo my name is dollar first name and dollar second name okay so now if i execute i could see the same output but you can see here my name is so and so so and so let's keep this particular commands in our jenkins job and we'll execute and we'll see the output so again creating a new job i'm name it name it as a test job because we are going to modify same job from now onwards so test job and it is a freestyle project okay and uh, i'm going to execute the command i am not giving any description at all so this is the command i need to execute so first it is going to store my uh, first name in this particular parameter so in this particular parameter my first name gets stored in the second parameter or second variable my second name gets stored and echo so and so uh, echo my name is first name second name first name followed by second name then it displays the my name so apply the changes and save it save it what happening yep it got saved now if i build it yep build is successful and if i see the output you can see here my name is ar shankar my name is AR Shankar. Again, if somebody want to execute the same command and they want to display their name, okay, then what I need to do, I can edit the existing job. I can edit the existing job. To edit your existing job, there is an option called configure. There is an option called configure. So configure is an option which will displace our job in the edited mode. Just click on the configure and you can see here whenever you are creating your job whatever information you could see same information you could see so here you can update your command now i want to name it as a jenkins followed by user okay so this command is executed by jenkins user 
or my name is Jenkins user I just would like to display and save it and uh, if I build it again now you can see here again it has been completed and this time my name is Jenkins user so this is how we can edit our existing job so to edit your existing job there is a option called configure there is a option called configure right now again I would like to edit this one but this time what I would like to do is I don't want to uh, what I can say yep I don't want to give the values in my Jenkins uh, hard-coded value I mean to say here I am giving my values right I don't want to give my values over here I want to call or I want to give my values outside outside nothing but while executing my job I would like to give so that whoever want to display their name they can give their first name and second name then it should display for that purpose we have we need to write a cell script so I am quickly going to write a cell script okay so before writing I am switching back to my home directory under home directory I don't have anything so I will create a test job dot sh so test job dot sh I am writing a simple script in the script nothing we are doing new same thing whatever we have executed in the Jenkins job same thing we are doing okay see I'm just specifying that first name Jenkins second name is uh, user and I'm displaying it over here but in shell command if you do remember in yesterday's class also I told you that uh, if you want to add user data, you need to add one particular uh, entry that is has escalatory mark slash bin bash. Okay, so this you need to add for any cell script. Any cell script if you are writing, starting line must be this one. So this is this entry we call it as a shebang. Okay, so uh, shebang nothing but this entry we call it as a shebang. If you search for shebang entry in cell script you can see here this is called shebang and uh, are a bang uh, line and this is nothing but a, a bash interpreter and it contains the so and so interpreter called slash bin bash okay so we have add, added a, a shebang this is the uh, must entry in any cell scripts okay depends upon the uh, shell you are going to change it over here okay sometimes it may be slash bin bash something like that it may get changed but by default on uh, Linux flavors it is bin bash now first name is Jenkins second name is user and just I'm going to save this file to save WQ and if I execute this cell script test yep so before executing any cell script you need to add the execution permission so you should have your execution permission so how to give execution permission anyone what's the command to give this execution permission what is the command to change the permission ch mode ch mode yep so ch mode is the command to change the permission and execution permission you just want to give execution permission you just give 111 but we don't want to give only execution permission that is the reason i'm giving 755 755 nothing but give the read write execute permission for the owner then read and execute then read and execute for these two guys if you don't want to change existing permission but addition to that one you just want to give only execution permission then plus x is the command so plus x nothing but execution ex right so x as uh, treated it as a execution permission so we are giving execution permission to this particular script so everybody get the execution permission now you can see here everybody got the execution permission okay plus x nothing but give the execution permission everyone okay now the co color also has been turned into the uh, what i can say green now if i execute it 
to execute any cell script let me clear the screen so to execute any cell script a dot slash and script name if you are executing in the current location nothing but dot nothing but in the current location there is a file called testjob.sh is there if i give just to testjob.sh okay what it treats it treats that okay this particular command is available in a, a slash bin directory and it looks for there so you should execute or you should tell that your script is available in the current location so dot slash represents represents to the current location now let's execute and see the output you can see here my name is jen sorry my name is jenkins user but i want to give this while executing my cell script so for that purpose in cell script there is a option called runtime variables where you can provide the arguments so to provide arguments you need to edit this one and you just need to replace this one jenkins user with dollar one and dollar two so what is the meaning of dollar one and dollar two whenever you are executing your cell script after your cell script if you give some value that treats it as a first value i mean to say after cell script if you give some value in our case this uh, test job under dot sh right so test job dot sh space if i give ar then the ar treat it as a dollar one next value treat it as a dollar two nothing but how many values you are giving next to your script those treat it as a dollar one dollar two something like this okay now let's save this one sorry before saving i'm just saying that i will give the value for the first name and second name whenever i am executing my cell script that is the meaning of this one so now let's save this file and uh, what i will do i'm going to execute it to execute test job and uh, i want to give the dollar one so here dollar one nothing but the value whatever i provide over here so i am giving a uh, username as a ar it is dollar one and uh, after ar again i have given space then shankar so i have given ar shankar so this will treat it as a this is the usually in the cell script this is dollar zero this is dollar one and this is dollar two so now the values get replaced with the ar shankar in the script now let's execute and you can see here my name is ar shankar again i'm going to execute it i'm going to execute it in the what i can say mm -hmm. narendra modi okay i'm giving two values that is narendra is a dollar one modi is the second value dollar two now you can see here my name is narendra modi my name is sonia gandhi so if i give the first value and second value it is going to treat the both the values so if i give bigger name uh, something like uh, a b c e f sorry d e f g h i now how many values i am giving this is dollar zero and this is dollar one and dollar two and dollar three so now what happens what is the name you are thinking to get it displayed my name is followed by what values does it get a display a b c d e f yes it is going to display a b c d e f even though you give the extra parameter dollar three in your cell script nowhere you are using the third parameter okay you are not using the third parameter in your cell script that is the reason it just ignores if it is having the more values because you are just considering only these two values if you give additionally if somewhere you are using it just to display if you are not, if you are not giving it don't display okay so this is how you can write a simple cell script to follow the give the variables now i would like to execute same job y from my jenkins so in that case i need to copy this cell script into some location so i'm keeping this under tmp 
or else in my current location slash home ec2 minus user is there so maybe yep i can uh, keep it in the same location and i will give the this cell path sorry cell script path so let's go back to our jump jenkins job and go here so instead of what i can say the values what i will do i will give the cell script path where my cell script is there this is my jenkins server don't uh, misunderstand this is my jenkins server and uh, what i can say this is available in this location so what does it do it looks for this particular file in this location in this location and test job.sh okay so what i am trying to say is execute this cell script and uh, save it and save now if i execute this job what will happen anybody you can see here it is failed why it is failed it is saying that permission denied okay so it doesn't have permission but sorry anyway even i want to fail one change you can see here the color of your change it is in red color earlier you can see here it is in uh, blue color so whenever your build have the blue color it means that your change is sorry your build is successful whenever you can see you see the red ball it means that your uh, build is failed failed now if you go and check it out you can see here finished with failure why because this jenkins user doesn't have access to this particular location so what i can do i can keep this particular test underscore uh, job dot sh under tmp so tmp will have access to everyone so let's move this one or copy this one into slash tmp now i'm going to change my job also and to change our job again we need to click on configure and we just need to specify the slash tmp apply and save this file now we will execute it build now now you can see here the build is successful and if i click over here it's just to displayed only my name is and nothing after that why it is like that anybody we didn't pass uh, uh, pass the arguments yes so whenever we don't pass the arguments it just think that it is an empty space and uh, empty spaces doesn't recognize over here so we we must need to pass the parameters or arguments so in jenkins job also we can pass the parameters okay but to do that one we have a option again i'm going back and configure if i go to configure and uh, edited mode i have opened my uh, change as a edited mode and you can see here there is a option called this project is parameterized this project is parameterized parameterized nothing but you need to provide parameters for your project while building it so if i click over here you can see here add parameter again we have different choices to add parameters that is boolean parameter choice parameter and credentials parameter file parameter like this we have multiple options we have multiple options so we are choosing the string parameter string parameter means i am giving my own option i am giving my own value some value i am going to give that is string string nothing but characters so if i choose this one it will ask that what is the string parameter name so the name what i am going to give is first name okay my parameter name is i am giving a first name and a default value default value nothing but we just executed our job but we haven't provided any value so if you don't provide any value what is the default value i can take it so here i am going to give the jenkins as the default value and the description provide your first name okay this is the just description so this is one parameter i have added but our script is expecting two parameters right so we need to add one more parameter again this is also type of string now i'm going to name it as a second 
user sorry second name second name and second name is just giving user and a description provide your second name okay so we are changing our jenkins job as a parameterized and apply the changes and save it now you can execute this job but while executing you can see here earlier whenever you click you you check this is just like a build but this time this has been changed to build with parameters so it means that without parameters you cannot build this job now let's click on this one and you can see here it is asking for the first name so the value of the first name so provide the provide your first name this is second name so provide the second name and same names we should use the in our in our script i hope uh, even in our script also we have same names let me just test it out so first name and second name okay so same thing there is no caps even there is no caps over here now these all are the default values you can change these default values like okay i'm changing the default values if you don't change anything it treats that as a default value and it displays the jenkins user yep okay so now we have built it and uh, if i go to the console output you can see that okay it hasn't taken the value because there could be some change in my script build with parameters let me try with the default value itself build now okay there is a problem with the cell script so in the cell script first name is equal to dollar one second name is dollar two sorry this one i need to replace it sorry we need not to specify the dollar one and dollar two it it doesn't take like this we need to edit it we need to name it as a vi and we just uh, remove this one because we are directly taking the first name and second name we are directly taking the first name and second name so we just need to remove the variables over there or if you want to keep the variables what you can do you can just uh, change it to the first underscore names sorry uh, yep first name instead of dollar one i need to specify the first name whatever is their uh, input we are taking from the jenkins job but rather than that one i can give the just as a first name and second name now what will happen it is going to take it is going to take these values okay now in this cell script the first name is replaced with the first name which we have provided and second name get replaced with the second name which we have provided okay so now let's execute it and i'm going to build job again build with parameters and i'm trying with the default values and you can see here build is successful this time my name is jenkins user why because jenkins is the first name user is the second name similar way if i change my parameters okay i'm changing it to narendra modi and build it now you can see here your name has been changed to narendra modi okay so this is how we can change our um sorry this is how we can pass parameters while running our jenkins job while running our jenkins job is it clear any questions Um, Shankar, to which file uh, you give execute permissions? I didn't follow that. That that, that part. test job dot sh. The script which we are running right now, right? That yes. is the test job dot sh. I just copied it. You can see here, cp test job dot sh onto tmp. I just copied it over here. Under tmp, we have this file at this moment. So currently I'm in my home directory. 
and if I go to the slash TMP here also I just copied the same file you can see here same file is there and content you can see I just removed the first two lines but in this script it is the previous one right it is still with the same name sorry same parameters so you you use ch more command to give execute permissions to this file i have given ch mode command on this one once you have given the execution permission on this file and if you copy that file into other location it also get the same permissions you can see here whenever i do the copy of this particular file into other location with the same permission it got it got copied onto the tmp okay so even if uh, we copy it to any location we first have to hmm. grant execute permissions no matter where we copy the file right so that is must no 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 see if you see i have given permission ch mode permission only on this file what is available under slash home ec2 minus ec2 minus user once i have given permission to this one i have copied it into the tmp whenever you copied it into the tmp it get the same permission what this guy see, this guy is having so here i didn't give the execution permission at all i have given execution permission only once once i have given permission if you copy it over here it is also going to get the execution permission okay to make it clear i'm going to my home directory or else let me remove the my test job and go to my home directory so pwd i'm under my slash etc home so here here if you see my test job dot sh is there and it has the execution permission and if i check ls minus l slash tmp you don't have the test job dot sh now i am copying this file onto the slash tmp copy slash tmp and if i do ls minus l slash tmp this particular file got copied into the destination location nothing but into the slash tmp with the permissions as well so here i no need to give any permissions because the permissions whatever this guy is having same permissions get copied into the target location so what if i don't grant the permissions at all to this if test don't, means now if i want to change it to the ch mode uh, 444 file name and uh, oops i changed it into the my current location So I'm going to slash TMP. So you mean to say if I have only CH mode 444 over here, something yes. like this, yes. you don't have execution permission. If yes. you don't have execution permission, even your Jenkins job also cannot run. Whatever it is or whoever is running your cell script, it must have the execution permission. At least the guy who is running it. Okay okay now if i try to build my jenkins job it is going to fail why because there is no execution permission for this file you can see here it has been failed and if i go and check permission denied okay yeah. if i give again ch mode 755 on test job okay and if i execute it now this time it is going to successful i'm trying with the default values and this time it is successful why because it has the execution permission no matter whether you are running from the jenkins job or else a manual command you must provide the credentials uh, shankar yeah uh, how to provide this uh, jenkins user like uh, pseudo permissions to run jobs from other locations see this jenkins user created at the jenkins console level okay so you cannot able to give or grant the access to this user if i go and check cat slash etc passwd this is the location where users get created right oh 
Jenkins automation user. Okay, a yeah, user got created here. Yeah. The Jenkins user got created, but yes, still this user is not a user which we have created. By default, whenever you install Jenkins, a user called Jenkins get created. So this user and whatever you can see here, this user, both are differ. Okay. Okay. So you cannot grant the permission, but by default, the Jenkins admin user get access to the slash var lib Jenkins. Okay. So in this location, he will have access or else to the TMP. So those two locations we can keep our files. Okay. Generally, we keep from var lib uh, Jenkins and then we'll run jobs. See, usually we don't give the cell scripts like this. So configure here we have given cell scripts, right? So we mostly we don't give cell scripts like this in this uh, uh, in this one. If you if we give also, we will specify the appropriate user as a which user you need to execute this command. That also we are going to specify. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. Not a problem. You are going to see in the later classes how we can execute uh, because we don't run all the scripts in the Jenkins level. We run on the target systems so there. We need to specify the user and we can specify as a which user you need to log into the target system and you should execute the command. We are going to discuss in a while about that as well. So now we have seen that how we can give the parameters. And still we have few more options. I would I would just like to go with those. So test job. If I go to the again configure and uh, in the configurations we have this job is parameterized. We have chosen right. And if I go to the add parameter under parameters, you have the boolean parameter. Nothing but a true or false. If uh, in the script you can specify that if this is true, then only display the some x output if it is false display the y output that we call it as a boolean parameter next choice parameter choice parameter nothing but you can uh, list out the uh, number of choices okay assume that i'm giving the name okay name i'm giving so name is uh, i want to choose only Okay, like this I have given four names now assume that I have removed these two. Okay string parameters. I'm removing And uh, if I save my job, okay, if I save my job and the description choose one name out of this, okay and uh, This name I'm just giving the name but uh, instead of name I'm giving the first name why because our script at least uh, have the first name parameter so apply and save now if I am executing this one build with parameters this time it doesn't allow us to type the name you should choose any one of the name these we call it as a choices if I give Rahul Gandhi build now and uh, you can see here the output of this command first name is correct right Build F I R S T N A M E. So Rahul Gandhi build now. Why it is not successful? Test job. Okay, sorry. We have just copied right. So it came as a previous script. Edit this one and remove these two entries and save this file. And if I go back again and execute this script and uh, Rahul Gandhi, if I choose, and the output of this command is Rahul Gandhi. Why? Because we have given only first name, even though in first name itself we have provided the full name. Okay, so this we call it as a choices. Choices, nothing but you can choose the choices, whatever you would like to. Now, again. We are going to configure it and we can see few other parameters are there and most of them are self-explanatory 
file parameter nothing but you can keep your file parameters in file and you may pass it i never used it and credentials if you are using the credentials okay but we haven't created any credentials now let it be at this moment like this we have multiple other stuff is there even password parameter is there run parameter string parameter so string parameter we just seen so these all are the options okay you just try with the self explanatory but most of the cases we choose the string parameter are the choice parameter while running our jobs okay rarely we may go with the password parameter if you would like to pass pass the password as a uh, what i can say input clear questions i'm just leaving it i'm not changing anything okay so now we are going to see our uh, job console you can see here in our job console we have a uh, few other options apart from the what i can say build parameter we have configure we have seen and rename is to just to change the name of your job you can change the your job name that is the option to rename but we are not changing the job name next delete project nothing but it is going to delete the entire project it is going to delete the entire project and you can delete the particular build as well you can see here delete assume that this is red one nothing but it's failed i don't want to show this build so i can delete build 9 yes i would like to delete build 9 and you can see here 8 10 11 12 13 so you can delete your builds if you want okay but usually we don't do that one we don't delete our builds now let's delete our build 13 i'm just deleting build 13 yes i would like to delete build 13 and if i do again build and uh, this time i'm choosing narendra modi and build it now you see you can see it is build 14. okay and uh, all these builds outcome is stored over here workspace or the execution of this particular stuff so workspace if i click in workspace no such file or directory and because this is a cell script you cannot see the any information but it should it should display some of the information but yes uh, usually if you are cloning from some other location you can see but these all are the on fly commands that is the reason you cannot see anything under workspace but going forward you are going to see the uh, few other stuff in the workspace now delete project yes i just discussed and changes if you want to see what and all changes uh, you have done before executing your job then those changes are displayed over here we have done changes and we executed you cannot see this and status anyway we just seen the status what and all stuff it is happening and back to dashboard it will take you into this location so again you came back to your location now if i go to again test job and it also displays the things what when was executed each job and what is the result out of that you can see here last completed build last unsuccessful build last failed build so when was the last successful happened when is the unsuccessful happened uh, when is failed happened okay so unsuccessful nothing but it is like a failed one you can see here failed build and unsuccessful build both are giving the same one now completed build successful build stable build and uh, stable build these three are same stable build nothing but working one and also successful also both same completed build also same okay 11 min uh, 1 minute 16 seconds ago okay A completed nothing but entire build has been completed and the last build of course this is the last build the last build is 14th and build number it is giving and the last failed one see here we have deleted the 13th job so it is nowhere tracking the record of that one it is saying that 13th one not 13th one ninth one was the failed build right we deleted it so it is not having any track of that one but we rarely go and watch this one but usually by looking here itself you will come to know whether your build is successful or not okay 
so that is about the job you should know we are going to add more parameters in our job in a later point of time but for now i'm just going back again and this is our console page okay this is our console page and you can see here these all are green green nothing but these jobs are running success successfully and this is weather okay weather nothing but if it is a shiny sun it means that the builds are successful if it is cloudy and shiny some of the builds are failed uh, and some of the builds are successful if it is full cloudy nothing but rainy cloud it means that all the builds are uh, or most of the builds are failed or all the builds are failed so that will give this information again this is the build information and last success when when we have executed these particular jobs when we have executed these particular jobs last time and the last failed you can see here these two jobs not failed our first job and uh, date job that is the reason it is not showing anything but here it is failed 24 minutes ago build number three it's failed and execution duration how many seconds it got executed this executed 33 milliseconds this is 0.15 seconds 14 milliseconds and if you want to build this particular uh, builds you can execute this one so schedule a build for the date job nothing but whenever i click on this one it is going to execute a build will happen and you can see here currently it is uh, 40 minutes ago right and it is third and if i refresh the build could happen and 10 seconds and build three happened okay so you can build your jobs from here as well this is your build one so now this is all about the how we can use the new item and this is about view view nothing but how you can see your uh, console uh, but we are going to see in later now people people nothing but the uh, users who are having access to this particular jenkins console so far you can see here only jenkins user having the access and the jenkins user name is jenkins user and uh, that's it okay not applicable lot last commit activity uh, there is no commit it seems so this is the about the user if you want to create new new users you can create by you going the manage jenkins you are you can create by going into the manage jenkins now build history even i'm not sure yep so if your build information is shown over here nothing but when the build was happened and what and all builds happen on which date all this information is available over here you can see here our build 18th it has happened okay 18th it has been happened and these many builds happened and if you see here these all are the builds which was uh, happened most recently and uh, from there the older jobs okay our first build we have executed on 49 minutes ago and the latest build we have executed around 1 minute 11 seconds ago okay and this is stable we need to make sure that our jobs are stable and you can able to see the console output this symbol represents to the console output which we have seen just now next manage jenkins so this is the one of the important uh, entry in our jenkins console because all the options are most of the activities we are going to change over here you can see here there are multiple options okay so configure systems configure global security so configure systems nothing but if you want to interact with any other tools like in our case we want to interact with the maven we want to interact with the uh, git we want to interact with the artifactory tomcat server if you want to interact with any other applications we are going to use the configure systems next to configure global security this is related to the security next to configure credentials it's create the credentials global tool configuration again this is one of the important one here also we are going to set up our tools okay here we are going to set up our tools but in the configure systems we are going to set up our credentials most of the cases it handles with the credentials next uh, reload configuration from the disk manage plugins this is one of the important one which will enhance your um, jenkins with the lot of additional options so 
if you need any additional feature you need to go with the manage plugins it's like a loading your jenkins to do the more activities okay so that talks about the manage jenkins and systems information system log and load statistics jenkins cli even we can manage our jenkins with the cli script console like this we have various options are there and also we have manage users this is the option to create users currently we are not creating any user let it be like that and i am going back to my views so you can create views over here views nothing but you are having three jobs over here out of three jobs you are only want to get a uh, couple of jobs are run by you you want to see only your jobs not the other jobs because jenkins is managed by multiple users multiple users are logging in and they could be creating their own jobs then you want to manage only your jobs if you go to jenkins console you could able to see the all the jobs now i can name it as a plus and i create my own view uh, view name i am giving as a test view and uh, list view sorry yeah list view and i can add the uh, what and all jobs i would like to select on this one selected jobs i want to select all the jobs enabled jobs only like this i can choose all selected jobs so we have only date job assume that date job is only managed by me apply and save if i give and you can see here one additional view has been created and this is all all jobs and whenever i go to my particular view i could see only my my jenkins job view okay so quickly what i will do i will show you shankar uh, yeah. this uh, i mean my view only will be visible to this particular user no everybody can view but you can still restrict i believe i think okay. while creating you can restrict it so my view this view this view automatically displays the all the jobs that are currently used here uh, have items in a simple okay i don't think so you can restrict it because everybody can may have access but let me test view too mm. Build button. Think. Uh, add column. Uh, no, you cannot restrict it. Everybody can able to view that. So we have discussed about most of the things, and uh, we are we need to dig little more details about the manage jenkins okay so before digging into the manage jenkins what we need to do we have created a code right in git if you do remember in github slash arsr we have created a hello world uh, application if you do remember we have created it and we pushed it over here yep so test hello this is the job we have pushed some time back right if you do remember we have created with the mvn command and we pushed it over here so now i would like to build this job whenever i want to build this job of course i need a uh, maven should be installed otherwise it cannot able to build because this is a maven project but i'm just going to show you how can we pull this code into our jenkins server so i'm going to create a new job today and a new job name i am giving hello hello world and this is a freestyle project i am choosing for now and work it now i am giving description this job pulls code from github okay this job is going to pull the code from github and we can see here now we are not giving any parameters why because we need to give the url of our git git uh, repository for that you can you have a option called source code management in source code management none nothing but we are not using source code management 
for this job that is the meaning of this one if you click on git you are saying that i'm using git if you if you click on subversion you are using subversion so subversion anyway we are not using we can delete this one to delete this one we need to delete the plugin but git we are using so we need to choose the git we need to choose the git and the url so what is the url of your jenkins job so this is the url of your jenkins job always you should provide the https link always you should provide the https link copy this link and copy it and you can see here failed to connect to the repository error performing the git command and so on so so what does it mean that you are trying to access the git but i don't know what is git i don't know what is git so to make it work or to clone your git repository onto your system you need to do two activities one is you need to install git on your local system here if i type git it should work so git is not installed over here and also you need to tell that where this git is installed to your jenkins server then only it can able to identify this one then only it can able to identify this one so let's install git on our local system it is quite simple let me become a root and yum install git okay yum install git this is my jenkins server so i'm installing git yes i would like to install so i have installed git now if i do git yes it's installed and uh, if i want to know where the git is installed which git okay which is a command which will tell you that where your git is installed where your git is installed you can see here it is saying that git is installed under slash usr bin uh, under that git has been installed now you need to give this path to your jenkins now you need to give this path to your jenkins then only it can able to identify that okay i know what is the git command or i know how to clone this one okay now what i'm going to do i'm just saving it even though it is failed i just saved it and i need to go to the jenkins dashboard under manage jenkins you can see here under manage jenkins we have global tool configuration we have global tool configuration nothing but we are adding new tool to our jenkins we are adding new tool to our jenkins and here you can see here maven configuration jdk git okay there are different options are there but for now just to concentrate on git you can see here git so git we need to add under the name you can specify any name for that matter i am giving just git and the path of path to git executable so where is our git is installed on git jenkins server it is under this location right so this path you should provide this path you should provide once you have provided if you click in uh, outside it should not show any error okay most of the cases if this value is correct it doesn't show any error and apply and save it now i have set up my Gen git in my jenkins server as well as well as on the console now if i go to the again jenkins console and you can see here your hello world job and it is in, uh, not built nothing but we just created so nothing is there let's go and check it out now and configure and uh, if you see the output now you can see here we just added this one and it is not throwing error previously it is throwing some error right it could not it it says that it could not able to identify again i'm taking the url and if i copy it over here you can see here please enter the git repository and if i copy it over here it doesn't show any error it doesn't show any error and credentials if you are accessing the private repository test hello is a public repository if you see here this is a public repository test hello okay if it is a private repository you need to provide the credentials for example we have a private repository right I just created a private repository not just sometime back we have created a private repository 
yep you can see here demo repo is a private and this one also is a private so let's take this url and specify over here and we'll see what happens so this url i'm copying and and instead of test hello i'm specifying this one and you can see here it is saying that failed to connect to the repository command so and so so and so uh, it is saying that invalid username and password because you need to provide your credentials to access the private repository you need to provide credentials to access your private repository but how to access private repository we are going to see in later classes for now again i'm just given the Control Z to go back to the test hello and test hello is a public repository now it is not throwing any error okay now if you scroll down you can see here branch specifier from which branch you want to <coughs> clone the code I want to clone the code from the master branch this is the default option if you have some other branch okay if I go to my hello test hello project we have only one branch only from that branch we are going to clone it if you have another branch or new branch you need to specify the branch name over here okay now i'm not building it i'm just taking this code into my jenkins server so just apply no other information i'm adding and save it and you can see here build now if i click on build now it is going to clone the particular repository in our jenkins server after that we are not doing anything that's the reason it says that it is success we are just cloning it build not yet done but if, if you see the output started by jenkins and building in web app uh, sorry workspace under this location no credit no credentials specified because it is a public repository cloning the remote git repository and repository name is so and so and all this information is telling that okay how i am taking the code and the it has taken the code and the last commit what was done on this system is initial commit and the result of this particular uh, build so result of this particular build again if i go to my job and if i go to workspace this time you can see some content this content is equivalent to the your content which you have pushed over here okay so in hello test world src and palm.xml is there right so you can see here src palm.xml is there same thing you can check it out from your uh, console as well i mean to say in the cli as well so cli path information is uh, available over here if you go to the your build result you can see here in this location i am creating this one so just you can copy where lib jenkins workspace and go inside to this one and you can see all your jobs over here so under workspace i mean to say in this particular directory it is going to create all your jenkins jobs and it is also going to store the what is the outcome of that one if i go to jenkins first job sorry not outcome uh, if it is a build one these all are cell scripts so it is a temporary files you cannot see the any result over here but if it is some code is there you can see the result but if i go to hello world we just cloned the code right so same thing if you do remember before building in our palm.xml also sorry maven also we were cloning this code right palm.xml and src was there then we by using the mvn command we used to build it now if i want to build it i need to install mvn on my jenkins server then only i can tell to my jenkins that okay build this particular code by using the maven so i should install the maven on the jenkins server once i installed maven i need to tell to my console that okay maven is installed in so and so location we just informed how git is installed and where it is installed right similar way we need to tell to maven yep here we need to tell to maven that where the maven is installed nothing but maven home directory we need to specify once we specified we can able to build it how to build and how can we give this information we are going to see in tomorrow's class so that's all for today again we are going to meet tomorrow bye and see you tomorrow
all right so we'll discuss what we are going to discuss today so first we are going to see understanding about plugins next installing additional plugins whatever is necessary next set up maven on jenkins so far our maven server is differ and jenkins server is differ but we are going to set up maven on jenkins then run a maven job from jenkins and dsl jobs then maven and sorry master and slave in jenkins then integrating artifactory with jenkins and jenkins pipeline maybe all these concepts we may not cover we may cover till here or else dsl jobs still here we are going to cover in today's session let's jump in so i have already started my jenkins server and i also logged into my jenkins server my jenkins server name is jenkins server we have renamed it but uh, in previous or uh, two classes before we have commented out the our existing host name so it was not picking up so i removed it and i just kept only jenkins server even you can do the same thing next thing i am accessing my jenkins server from the browser and 8080 is the port number Username is Jenkins, password also Jenkins at 123. Okay, I have logged into my Jenkins server. So most of you know that how does it work? So you understand the console now. Uh, nothing in the build queue. Usually in, in, in general what happens in the build queue, there could be few jobs will be waiting to execute by your Jenkins server and uh, execution uh, build executions uh, executor status if any builds are happening it is going to display over here you can see here you can see only two numbers nothing but at a time it can able to run the at a time it can able to run only two jobs at a time sorry at the same point of time it can run only two jobs if you want to run more than two jobs you need to increase this build executor status you can increase depends upon the your jenkins server capabilities we are going to see whenever we are talking about master and slave systems right now we are going to talk about ma manage jenkins so you can see here here we have a lot of jobs and uh, there is a warning but just ignore it so configure system configure global security uh, so like this we have various options and uh, we are going to talk about manage plugins if you do remember we have installed com uh, few plugins while installing our Jenkins those are recommended by Jenkins whenever we were installing so here if you click on the plugins uh, manage plugins you will come to this page under this page you have updates available installed and advanced so here in uh, installed whatever plugins you have installed on your system you can see those plugins over here I'm just clicking on installed you can see here and plugin we have installed during the installation next uh, um, bouncy castle api plugin build timeout next command agent launcher plugin like this we have uh, some plugins and here you can see few other plugins but there is no uninstall option over here why because these all are the dependency plugins nothing but if i want to install this plugin these plugins are necessary so it installs the dependency plugin then it installs the other plugin as well but anyway we are going to see in a while so these all our plugins are available on this system now if you want to install any additional plugins you can go to the available stage so in available stage you have lot of plugins okay which are developed by the jenkins and these plugins are available so this is uh, plugins are one of the reason why we use mostly jenkins because it can interact with the any tool or most of the tools which are available in jenkins whenever you have plugins then only your jenkins can interact it if you don't have plugin the, your jenkins cannot interact with the uh, the tool which you want to use so it is always necessary that you should have a plugin even now i want to interact with maven if i don't have maven plugin i cannot able to interact with my maven server that's the reason i must install maven even git as well 
if I don't have git plugin I cannot able to interact with my git so it's it's always necessary that you should install respective plugins now these plugins are developed by your Jenkins guys so if I go to uh, Jenkins plugins okay you can see here Jenkins plugins dot IO if you go here you can search for the plugins whatever is necessary so this is the where you can search for your plugin assume that I need git plugin I can search for the git plugin it displays the git plugin in git also there are different kind of stuff is there maybe we may not use all this stuff but this is the git plugin but the same thing will be available over here so over here in available state if you search for git you can find the git but at this moment you cannot find it because available state it is going to show you only the plugins which are not installed which are not installed but git plugin we have already installed but still you can see some results these all are the additional git uh, github authentication this is also github authentication and uh, git cloning build notification github issues like this we have few other keywords came whenever we search for git but if i go and search for installed state git you can see the git plugin yep you can see this one git plugin so this is the git plugin which we are talking about and do you can able to see the git plugin to install or uninstall maybe it is not showing uh, it is showing as a dependency but usually you can see the git plugin you you need to install manually okay so like this you have hundreds of plugins sorry so you have hundreds of plugins in your uh, git uh, io you can just go to plugins and you can search whatever plugin you need and you can see the category wise these are all our new plugins recently updated under training plugins okay so these all are the uh, categories which are divided but most of the cases we are going to search our git plugins in, under available state and if it is under installed stage nothing but it is already available for our Jenkins system if you don't find something in installed state you can come and search for available let's talk about maven maven also it's installed so you can see here you cannot able to see the maven integration is there yep so this we need maven integration and even you can go and search for maven over here you can see here there is no plugin for maven there is no plugin for maven in the installed state so we are going for in the available page and search for search for maven okay so maven integration plugin we should install so select the plugin whatever you would like to install and you can see here the versions they have they are going to specify these versions keep on updating whenever they have your latest plugins so maven integration plugin 3.6 if we have installed maven integration plugin after that they have released 3.7 then it will show up under update status currently these uh, jenkins system we have installed recently and whatever plugins are installed there is no updates for these plugins but once we have installed and any updates came for those plugins then it is going to show you over here right so i will go again to available plugins and maven it's taking time here okay maven so for maven you need to install maven integration plugin okay maven integration plugin do we need any other plugins no and maven invoker yep sorry so maven invoker as well so these two plugins we we need it maven integration and maven invoker so these two plugins we need to manage our maven next install without restart and download now and install after restart so these two are the options what you can tell to your jenkins that you can choose install without restart nothing but right now it is going to install it download and install after restart if you choose this option it downloads the plugin but it won't install and 
until you restart your Jenkins services. Not the server, Jenkins services. Jenkins services means this Jenkins application. You can go here and uh, service Jenkins. Jenkins stop and service Jenkins start if you do then it is going to install that particular plugin Okay, but I want to go with the install without reboot most of the cases We can install most of the plugins without any restart, but few plugins It is mandatory to restart your server. I mean to say uh, Jenkins server in those case you must go with the restart uh, after installation but anyway, I'm just going with the install without restart. Now you can see here, even though I choose Maven integration and Maven invoker plugin, it is installing Java doc and uh, loading plugin executions. These two are the additional plugins which are added to this one. So whenever you choose your plugin, it automatically grabs the dependency plugins. Even it requires the git plugin, but if some plugins are already installed, it doesn't show us But uh, if you need the plugins uh, Dependency plugins it is going to show you the all the dependency plugins which it is installing Now you have installed the plugins and it this blue color nothing But it is successfully installed and you can see here go back to the top page or else what you can do you can restart Jenkins with ins when installation is complete complete and no jobs are running so now you have installed if you don't want to face any problem you can choose this checkbox if you choose this checkbox you can able to uh, it is automatically restart your jenkins let's choose this one and we'll see you can see here the installation is successful that is the reason it is restarting our jenkins not the server okay so what does it do as i shown you it is going to stop the services and start the services and whenever it started once the jenkins is available it automatically redirect, redirects to the home page but most of the cases you no need you no need to restart your jenkins most of the plugins but few plugins it is always recommended to go with the uh, restart All right, it's just got restarted now again. I'm going to log in Jenkins Jenkins at one two three I have logged in now again. I'm going to my plugins dashboard not updated center manage Jenkins Sorry manage plugins. I can go directly manage plugins now now this time I will go and search for Maven in available status You cannot able to see that one or else I will go and search in the installed state and if I search for Maven You can see here now you could see Maven integration plugin and Maven invoker plugin Earlier it was under available state and we have installed it whenever you want to uninstall you can uninstall So if you install any plugin you can get the option as a uninstall but if you are not installing uh, what I can say that particular plugin you cannot able to uninstall it is a dependency plugin so you need to remove the uh, the plugin which is depended on this plugin it automatically get removed maybe it may be depended on some other and or gradle so if I remove and or gradle it is going to remove it next available if I go and search for available again As a Maven you cannot see the plugins which we have installed if you search for Maven integration or Maven invoker plugins You cannot able to find it because we have already installed so it will be in an installed status next advanced so advanced is the uh, what I can say Way you can upload your plugins you can see here upload your plugins assume that some plugins are not at all available or you might have written your own plugin Okay, you can write the customized plugins. I don't think so uh, It is necessary, but still few times what you can do you can download your plugins Sometimes you can download your plugin and you can upload over here Okay, you can upload over here and uh, install the plugins that is another way, but uh, most of the cases we don't choose this option. Okay 
sometimes it may not pick up under available then you need to go and download the particular plugin and install it okay so this http uh, configuration we never tried it but you just ignore it for now so this is about the plugins so whatever plugins you want to install search in the available state and install it once it is installed it comes into the installed uh, tab and uh, if there is any updates for the installed plugins the updates will be available over here but we don't update frequently maybe if necessary we are going to update it all right now go back to the jenkins that is about the jenkins uh, what i can say maven uh, plugin installation uh, yep i can just need to yeah uh, can we know i mean uh, dependencies what plugins are dependent on no it automatically picks up you no need to know or uh, uh, it is not necessary as well because uh, there could be sometimes uh, uh, 30 40 plugins may be necessary to install even if i take git okay git is already installed if i check for the git so git is already this one git plugin is already installed so initially if you start install your first plugin you can see the lot of plugins are installing even if i am installing git it may install 30 40 dependency plugins during the git that's how it comes and a few plugins even for maven also it uh, necessary lot of uh, dependency plugins but uh, those might be installed already we have ant and gradle right ant and gradle also will do the same similar kind of activity how the uh, maven does do so those plugins might be already installed that is the reason you could see only four plugins okay okay sir. no problem next thing uh, you can remove or uninstall your plugins so and we are not going to install anyway sorry using anyway so i'm uninstalling it to uninstall you just need to click on uninstall you can see here you are about to uninstall and plugin this will remove the plugin binaries from the so and so so and so that's okay yes to remove and it has been uninstalling let's wait for a while so you can restart your jenkins server from browser itself so after your jenkins url you can just give restart so it will ask you that are you sure do you want to restart yes i would like to restart so this is simple even instead of going into the uh, what i can say cli and restarting rather than that one you can restart from the browser browser itself just you need to give slash restart so it restarts your jenkins server again you need a you need permissions to do that one because my jenkins user is an administrative user so that i can do if i create a normal user you cannot able to restart it again i am going to manage jenkins and manage plugins and installed if i go and ant if i search there is no plugin for ant okay so we have removed it and if i search under available state whenever you remove it it will show under available state now because again if you want to install you can search for ant and it displays the and plugin so where does it it is not showing here again i may need to restart it to grab it but anyway so this is how we can uninstall and install required plugins okay any questions on plugins all right so now we have installed our maven plugin now i would like to run my maven job for that you can create a new item and this time earlier i don't know i haven't observed it whether we have maven project or not but once you have installed maven plugin you can see this maven project 
okay usually it doesn't show up if you don't have the maven project so you can see the description build a maven project jenkins take advantage of your palm files and uh, drastically drastically reduce the configuration so it takes the maven palm.xml file and it can build but still you can build your maven project from the freestyle as well okay there is no issue but as i said once you have installed your plugin you need to install your maven as well right sorry you need to configure your maven to your jenkins so that is the reason you should again go to the manage jenkins and you should tell to your uh, what i can say uh, jenkins that where you have installed maven where you have installed maven so just to treat that maven plugin is differ and maven installation is differ so maven installation nothing but on server where you have installed so far we haven't installed maven in this system so far we haven't installed maven in our jenkins system so what we can do we can go to the global tool configuration and if you scroll down usually this maven option you should get whenever you install maven plugin but uh, we have got what i can say pre-installed plugins couple of them that is the reason you might have seen this option earlier as well and if you see here gradle is there now and is not there because we have removed it otherwise it might have shown and as well but now go with the maven installation add the maven you can you need to give the maven name okay this is the maven configuration if you see this one this dotted lines is showing that till here it is maven uh what i can say configuration so i'm just giving name as a maven and you can see here install automatically install automatically and if you choose this one unchoose this in install automatically you need to give that where your maven is installed so in case if you have installed manually on your jenkins server you need to give the path of your maven home that is a, a slash opt uh, slash pin we are giving right sorry slash opt slash maven and slash pin right so same thing you need to provide over here maven home directory maven home we are going to set up right that path you need to specify over here otherwise you just need to choose the install automatically but usually we don't go with this option install automatically we don't go with this option this is a temporary way to run only that particular job okay to run only that particular job and you cannot see this installation in the server at all you cannot see that installation or the server at all but to run maven job even you can choose this option but initially we'll go with the install automatically then we'll go and install manually apply and this is a shortest way to run your jobs but most of the people doesn't recommend to go with the install automatically option now we can go and create our new job here i'm going to choose jenkins job one okay sorry not jenkins maven maven job one i'm choosing and a maven project this is a maven project so let's try with the maven project and if i click ok then you need to give the description but we are not giving and it is not also parameterized parameterized so we are not choosing let's go with the git and this is the url it is a public url it won't ask for anything now if you scroll down and you can see here three steps okay for the build this is three steps and we are building it so we need to tell to where your palm.xml is located so what does it do this palm.xml it looks for the root directory root directory nothing but you just cloned it here right so here it it looks for the palm.xml assume that this palm.xml is inside src then you need to provide the path of this palm.xml like src slash src slash palm.xml so this is how you need to provide but currently it is under the top level top level nothing but in the uh, root directory itself of this particular repository so just form.xml would be fine now you need to provide the goal 
goals nothing but how we are giving uh, in our mvn command right so same mvn command it is going to execute so there we are giving goals as a clean and package right okay clean and package we are giving so same uh, inputs we are giving clean package install deploy all this stuff we are we can give but we are just going to clean package so it is going to create a package and we are not doing any other stuff apply and we just given the form.xml and what is the goals it has to execute so goals and options here we need to provide the goals and save it now i have created a new job that is maven job one so and uh, we need to execute this job so to execute this job we can execute the build now so let's execute build now now what does it do it is going to pull the code onto your jenkins server and it execute the maven uh, mvn command and it creates the package it creates the package and that information get updated in the workspace so either you can click workspace or else you can get and see but now go and see the build output you can see here it started by jenkins and uh, this is the first time we are running right if you do remember dependency plugins it has to download you can see here from the maven repository it is downloading all the dependency plugins and uh, it's going going so it is downloading all necessary plugins third party plugins onto your maven server so now maven and jenkins are running on a same system okay it gone to test cases and you can see here build is successful and archiving slash where lib workspace maven job one in this particular space there is a form.xml by executing that one it has created a snapshot you can see here com dot galaxy hello world so on so so on so the snapshot name is hello world 1.0 snapshot dot form because in the form dot form.xml we have given this name then it has been archiving it has been stored under this location which location where lib jenkins workspace then your job name under job you have the target directory under target directory you have uh, workspace so same thing we have seen in our maven classes as well right so if i go inside to this one here you have the your maven job one if i go inside to maven job one you can see here form.xml src this is the source code which has been downloaded from your jenkins system and uh, it is a target directory which is created after executing uh, package okay now under package it's created a jar file that is hello world 1.0 snapshot dot jar okay and the test cases results are store stored over here this surefire is a plugin which is help us to run the test cases so if i go inside to surefire and you can see the test case results all right so this is how we can build our uh, maven code by using the jenkins maven code by using the jenkins now if you do remember here we haven't installed maven on our jenkins system maven in our jenkins system if i run mvn sorry mvn it won't execute in our jenkins system because it is temporary installation whenever you go with the install automatically it doesn't install your maven in your jenkins system only it stores for temporary purpose to execute your job once job is executed you cannot able to find the maven but if you need your maven all the time on your jenkins you need to install manually on your jenkins system how we do uh, or how we installed earlier okay so the procedure is same if you do remember search for maven download and go to maven page and uh, take the latest version so binary tar.gz this is the one i am taking copying link address and go to your jenkins i would like to install it under my opt itself wget and download the maven packages 
clear the screen ls it is downloaded and uh, untar it tar minus xvzf i'm untaring it and clear the screen ls and uh, this is the apache and i need to give the path of this one in the uh, uh, what i can say home directory sorry bin bash underscore profile so before doing that one i just rename it to the maven apache to just maven this version okay so entire directory i am renaming it so that would be easy right just i'm giving you as a maven as a name so what i have done i just renamed instead of having the Ma apache maven 3.6.3 just i renamed the directory name as a just maven so inside go to inside maven ls here you have the bin directory cd bin pwd okay so this is the path but till here we need to take now i am going to edit my uh, bash underscore profile so go to till dot sorry tilde slash dot bash underscore profile and uh, we haven't set up java path as well yeah we need to set it up okay so o m2 underscore home is equal to this one and m2 is equal to slash opt maven and slash pin okay this is the path now instead of slash opt maven we just give dollar m2 m2 underscore home as well because dollar m2 underscore home means it is going to replace this value with the uh, slash opt maven then it will be bin next path we are going to use the dollar m2 underscore home colon dollar m2 and even i would like to set up my java path as well let me grab my java path for this jenkins server so i can get that command from the or else i can go directly slash uh, bin find slash minus name java just it displays the where and all java is installed so you can see here you need to give the jar directory this is the one usr lib java uh, this one and this is the jar right so this is the location we should provide i believe let me grab the command here because it has been a while back github.com slash simple devops project and go to Jenkins installation, not Jenkins jobs. Jenkins installation and Jenkins installation. And uh, you need to search with this option. So, same thing I have done. So, yes, we need to check for this path. Okay, USR lib Java. So same thing I was talking USR lib Java till here. We need to set up our Java path Okay, so I'm just setting up my Java path as well Sorry VA Tilde slash dot bash underscore Profile, okay, so here we are setting up O java underscore home is equal to this path and uh, colon dollar java underscore home okay these steps we have already done when we were installing our maven but this time i have ran through little quickly because we know all this stuff now if i do echo dollar path it is not yet updated but if i if i do source tilde slash dot bash underscore profile so what exactly source command does do it re, uh, read the bash underscore profile again and whatever new changes you have done right now it will take up all those changes so earlier till here it was showing now it is showing that slash root bin slash opt maven 
slash opt maven slash opt maven pin and the java path okay all this stuff it has been came now even in my jenkins server also i'm going to use this path rather than using install automatically using install automatically i will use this path so let's go back to our jenkins again manage jenkins and uh, global tool configuration and uh, here maven i'm not using install automatically instead of that one maven home directory this is the one we have given right slash opt maven apply and save it now again I can go and execute the job this time what will happen it is not going to take up the maven which is automatically installs it is going to take up the maven which we have installed in our local system so let's again build it and this time it could be quite faster why because all the dependency plugins are already installed on our uh, system and it run run through quite faster and you can see here test cases and build is successful okay now if i go to my maven job okay and if i go to my slash where lib jenkins this is the default directory right so again workspace is the directory so pwd if you go inside to this one this is our maven job one and this time also we just executed package but uh, ls minus l you can see the timestamp currently it is 206 and date now 207 so just now it got created so every time whenever you execute your job your jar file get replaced with the latest one okay so this is how you can create your jink maven builds any questions okay. over here yeah shankar uh, so uh, we have set uh, this maven and java path on uh, root uh, i mean uh, root user but yes. we are running jenkins user right we are running oh, as a jenkins user i mean uh, this maven job so how does yes. the environment will be paths will be taken no even though you run it you can see here in the global tool configuration we are setting up right that is why we need to tell that where it is available global tool configuration is there here we are specifying uh, even java right yeah java path also we need to set up here sorry i think it is taking automatically yeah so oh, install yes install automatically it is taking yeah i missed it even java path also we need to set it up sorry okay. java home so java home path we need to set up the java home path otherwise it should fail yeah i forgot about that even in previous job also it should fail because java installation is automatically that is the reason even though we don't set up the uh, java path uh, it's it's working okay you should give the full path even for every tool there is a install automatical option is there if you are lazy enough to don't can't install over here then you can go with the install automatically option apply and save it okay so this is how global tool configuration going forward even whenever we are going to install sonar cube or artifactory you are keep we are keep on updating on the global tool configuration now what we are going to do is we are going to deploy on our tomcat server we are going to deploy on our tomcat server so we know uh, how to build the code from the jenkins by using maven now i would like to deploy on tomcat server now what we are going to do is we are going to configure our jenkins to deploy on tomcat server we are going to configure or uh, tell to our jenkins to deploy on our tomcat server so so to deploy on tomcat server we need a plugin to deploy okay deploy on container that is a plugin which is helps us to deploy on tomcat you can just go and search if you don't know plugin to deploy on tomcat or jenkins plugin 
Jenkins plugin to deploy on Tomcat server, you can just search for the plugin name and deploy to container. You can see here, this is the plugin you need to use, deploy to container. So this plugin we should use and we can deploy on the container, sorry, Tomcat server. Now we are going to install this particular plugin and we'll deploy on the Tomcat server. Okay. So now I'm going to start my Tomcat server. Even we have deployed on Tomcat server by using the MVN command itself. Rather than using MVN command, we can go and deploy from our Jenkins itself. But we are using a plugin to deploy on the Jenkins server. So let's go and uh, install a additional plugin. So manage plugins. This time we are going to go with the available. In available stage, we have a plugin called deploy. It's still loading. Deploy on deploy to right. Yep. Deploy to container. This plugin allows you to deploy a var file to a container after successful build. So choose this one and install without restart. Now deploy to container plugin maybe uh, need some extension plugins it is installing that as well okay now it has been installed and go to jenkins and uh, just to make sure i'm going to log into my uh, tomcat server and start the services because it is not auto started we need to add it to the init I'm going to explain that in uh, Saturday's class. Is it to minus user? So now what I'm doing, I'm going to become a root, go inside to OPT here, Apache Tomcat bin directory and ls clear the screen ls start startup.sh so we have started tomcat and i can access my tomcat from the browser so go here and just 8080 okay i'm not giving here let me copy it and copy over here and you can able to access your tomcat server okay so this is our tomcat server now we are going to deploy on this tomcat server for that i am going to create a new job jenkins job that is deploy on tomcat okay deploy on tomcat and it is a maven project and okay next we need a GitHub URL which contains the var file. If you do remember, we haven't copied or we haven't created any, uh, what I can say, it. GitHub, we don't have any GitHub repository which is holding the dot var file. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to quickly create a new project which contains the var file, then we'll update into our GitHub repository. From there, we are going to clone it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, just think that I'm asking developer that I need a Java project which generates the var file, not the jar file, which generates the var file. We need that project. So that is what I would like to say. Now what I will do, I'm going here and I will generate the Maven project. That is a MVN archetype mvn command will work right minus minus version if i check why mvn is not working this is on tomcat server i think sorry yeah so it is my jenkins server mvn so it's working mvn minus minus version What happened? Okay. 
so mvn is working now we are going to create mvn archetype next to generate and we need to search for what is the number of our from the template so just think that this all stuff is now developer is doing not as a devops engineer now i have asked my developer that i need a var file to test my uh, devops connection so he will create a var what a uh, web app application and give it to me and i can i'm going to use in my jenkins pipeline or uh, devops flow that's what i am going to do okay so the number is 1610 so let me cancel it now archetype enter one six one zero and default one seven next uh, group id com dot galaxy dot web app same thing i am giving earlier whatever we have given artifact id web app project snapshot let it be and package name also and i would like to go with this information now build happened where it happened in my home directory so now i will treat it as a i'm going to initialize it as a git repository so clear the screen ls git init dot right that is the how that is how you can initialize your git repository now this is a git repository git status if i see the one directory one folder i need to yet to push it so what i will do git add dot git status git commit minus m uh, i'm going to say that adding git repo sorry initial initial commit of web app project okay so this is what we have done now it is asking me to identify i will quickly going to run my email id is rsr31 sorry yeah rav 829 and password sorry i need to give my name yeah shankar okay so i have configured but anyway git push or is a sorry git commit right git commit command so we have committed changes into the local repository but we haven't committed these changes into the remote repository if i do git push origin master does it go to the uh, github repository can somebody says say that what will happen if i execute this command uh, it won't go because we need to add the repository first git add yes so so far we haven't added any remote repository so it throws an error that i don't know to which repository i need to push so same thing is get updated in the git config file you can see here there is no repository information now i'm going to create a repository sorry i'm going to create a repository in my github so this is my github not here here is sorry yeah so here i'm going to create a new repository and will tell to my github to push this code into this repository so i have logged in as a rsr yep so repositories create new one web app project okay you can give any name but anyway just for naming convention i am giving web app project and uh, this time i'm choosing private not the public one okay it is a private and we'll see how jenkins can able to do that and i don't need readme file and create a repository now we need to did all this stuff we just need to add this one 
after that okay this is my remote repository now i am telling to my jenkins uh, local repository that you need to use this repository as a remote repository now if i do git push origin master because we are pushing it into the master branch by default whenever you create your uh, repository you are going to get only master branch so git push origin master now it is going to communicate with this one i'm giving the credentials of this one or else i can copy my public key but uh, let it be let's use the credentials for now ersr319 is my username and uh, Okay, I think I need to give the full path. ERSR319 at gmail.com and password. Okay, all right, my code get pushed into the remote repository. Now what uh, uh, developer does do that? Okay, I have pushed the whatever code you asked. It is available under this particular path. That's how they will give the path to uh, De DevOps engineers. So now I am a DevOps engineer. Now I have switched to my DevOps engineer role. So I will take this particular URL and I will give it in the GitHub repository. I will give it in the GitHub repository. Now, sorry, uh, Jenkins. Now it is saying that I could not able to find this one. Why? Because this is a private repository. In the real world, we are going to use the only private repositories. We 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 never are we most of the cases we never go with the public repositories so you need to save your credentials uh, or you need to tell to your you need to tell your credentials to your jenkins so that it can go and get this one for that one you can add your credentials currently we have only Jen, uh, we don't have any credentials you need to add your credentials so for that if you go here it is going to create credentials over here other way is just go here leave this page and you can see here credentials so you can see here global global nothing but for entire uh, these settings so in the jenkins i want to add it and if i go into jenkins again global credentials oops yeah global credentials and add credentials so this is the way you can come over here and create the credentials or else other way is directly it will take us into this path okay so now my github credentials i am giving so username is arsr319 at gmail.com and my password i have given and identification i will just give the uh, github git user okay git user nothing but it will display over there i will show you what will it do so save the credentials so the git user now again i am going back to my jenkins job so deploy on tomcat this is the one we were talking and um, configure because we haven't completed this particular job and uh, git and url and it could not able to identify now i'm going to choose my credentials you can see here i'm going to choose my credentials and with these credentials it could able to communicate with this repository with this repository now what i will do i'm not going to add my uh, jenkins server it's uh, sorry tomcat server now just we'll do the clean install sorry clean package okay just i'm doing the clean package apply and save okay now we'll execute it now we are going to execute this particular job on a private repository okay in previous job it is a on public repository now it is a private repository and the uh, what i can say some of the plugins may change over here so if some plugins are necessary it is going to pull it you must specify sorry this is not clear clean right there is no what i can say life cycle phase called clear clear so you should choose clean again i am going to configure it is clean clean package okay clean apply save and build now
okay now it is clean package you can see here it is executing the maven command on the pom.xml and then this time it may need some additional third party repositories so it is pulling those because it is a var file earlier we were building a jar file right so it is pulling all the necessary plugins sorry packages and it builds the builds my code and this time it is going to generate my var file okay it has been successfully completed and it creates the var file the var file name is web app project 1.0 snapshot var now what i will do i am going to change the same configuration and i will tell to once the package is created deploy it on a uh, Tom, tomcat server for that purpose here you need to change install so install means the package will get created and this package on the post installation post nothing but once this is completed then we need to deploy the post right sorry once the uh, build is successful then post build actions comes once the build is successful we need to deploy it now you can see here deploy where are ear on container this option you don't get if you don't install the deploy to container plugin okay if you don't specify the deploy to container plugin you don't get it so deploy to container now you can see here where are ear file now where is your var file is located where is your var file is located and if you click on question mark it will tell you that where are ear file to deploy relative to the workspace root nothing but what does it do it will go and check in the workspace directory it will go and check in the workspace directory nothing but if i go here i'm in the web app project pwd if i go where lib jenkins web app okay so sorry where lib jenkins workspace so this is the default path here your job is job got created right so job name is uh, deploy on container okay this is temporary uh, it's created I, i'm not sure so we go inside to this one in this project where your var file is there so var file var file usually is under target under target we have a uh, web app project dot var is there and web app project also is there web app project if i go here index.jsp yeah here only pwd okay it is available under slash target slash target okay so this path we need to provide that okay our var file is available under this particular location okay so now what i will say after workspace after workspace and uh, our job name yep after workspace and our job name this is available under target so i will give target slash web app project why it is web app project it should be web app project snapshot right let me search for the form.xml what is the name we have given 1.0.1 web app project it is a var file so we should get this name but uh, our uh, var file name is this one so this is our var file name so target slash web app project dot var so take this particular var file and deploy on the target system so this context one is the context path is uh, uh, where you should publish your var file but we can leave it as a empty for now okay we can leave it as a empty and add container so on which server do you want to install ours is tomcat server right so tomcat 1.8 okay not 1.9 because 8.x we have installed and this is the server and do we need credentials okay so you can see here again it is asking for credentials because we want to deploy on the tomcat server to deploy on tomcat server i need credentials without credentials i cannot able to deploy it if you do remember to deploy on tomcat server which uh, user we have used anybody when we were deploying through the maven we were, have used one user admin or tomcat 
no those two users are used to log in from the browser but for deployer. the deployment we, deployer. yeah because we need the script access so the user is deployer if i go here and if i check for the users that is under conf cat tomcat user dot xml and you can see here the deployer user he is having the script manager script access so we should use this user this user also again we need to add it to the credentials then only you can choose but otherwise you will get the git user information so again i'm adding that user under jenkins and go here i'm giving a username as a deployer password also deployer i will give tomcat user okay and add it that's it now i have added the tomcat user deployer and the url of our tomcat server so the url of our tomcat server is this one that is our tomcat yep this one right so this url we should provide but this url keep on changing right so that is the reason we must use the public ip but for now i am giving the same url and apply and save you we need to do but anyway i am going to run through one one more time about our project so first thing is first thing is we are giving the github url this is the github url and it is a private repository that's the reason you should provide credentials we have provided credentials and it is going to build from the master branch next thing is we need to do the install of this particular plugin uh, that's the reason we need to clean clean nothing but remove the previous uh, uh, packages or previous var file and create a new var file that is the meaning of this clean and install this is the new goal so it creates the all the necessary uh, goals and it makes sure that your var file is available after that we are going to use the var file so var file is available after our workspace it is a job name it creates i mean to say deploy on container so same job name is there here so deploy on container is there after deploy and container we go inside to target under target we have a web app project dot where is there so the same path we have given and if you feel that this name is keep on changing we just give the star so star if you do give what will happen it is going to check for the where file whatever is available here we have a where file star means it is a wildcard character it equals to the any name it equals to the any name so star dot where we have given or else other way is this also will work this also will work we can give star star slash star dot where that also we can give now to deploy this where file we need a target environment so the target environment is this one and while deploying use the deployer user okay that's the meaning of this job and apply and save it now let's execute build now I am going to build and we will see what happens. So it's generated var file and you can see here. Okay, it's generated a var file as a web app project dot var. Uh, then what happened? It also created a snapshot under which location m2 home directory okay it keeps a snapshot under m m2 home directory this is not this one yeah this one yeah so where lib jenkins under jenkins it creates a m2 home directory and uh, you can see here this time it is using where lib jenkins earlier this m2 was created under root directory but this is a jenkins user so jenkins user is uh, treating it as a where lib jenkins is home directory by default this user so all the information is created over here and then once the var file is created uh, what happened deploying on the this particular location var file onto tomcat server on tomcat server there is a web app project dot var file has been created we'll go and check it out on the target system so this is uh, this is our tomcat server right so clear the screen maybe you may get confused by changing my screens so if i don't give any name it means that tomcat server if some name is there that is jenkins server jenkins server has then its own name so again i'm going back under web apps if i go under ls minus l 
so recently nothing but may 21st it has copied it web app project dot where and time if i see 242 so 242 now it is 241 so it's created and copied and i can access this one with this url go to our application and slash your project name you should give that's it you can see here hello world hello world has been uh, what i can say is the application now assume that my developer has changed his code so again i am treating it as my developer system my jenkins server itself so what he has done he said that uh, uh, okay shankar i am updating my code you need to rebuild it so what he has updated he has updated again main.ml web app so index dot jsp so when va index dot jsp he has updated and uh, same thing h2 welcome to to tomcat he is saying okay so close it now once he has updated what he has to do again git status git add dot git commit minus m updated index dot jsp git push origin master okay that's it he has pushed his code sr319.gmail.com that password now he has pushed his code now my code has been updated right so now again i need to run the new job again i need to run the new job and he came back to me and he told that okay i have updated my code so please go and build it now i have built it again and this time it should get to deploy the latest code on my target system and after job is completed if i refresh my job i could see the latest code okay it's completed and if i refresh it i could see the my latest code so this is how we can able to do or deploy uh, our code on the target system if you do remember same activity we were doing with the maven and you could see a lot of problems nothing but you need to update the palm.xml with the plugins and uh, you need to provide the credentials and a few other complications you might have seen but now we are not updating all this stuff manually because our plugin is there and uh, jenkins can able to take it up whatever is necessary jenkins could able to take it up whatever is necessary and it is going to uh, what you can say build and deploy on the target environment now assume that my developer frequently updating his code he is frequently updating his code and he is asking me that okay i have updated my code build and deploy build and deploy once it is deployed who will check the test engineers is going to validate this code whether it is working fine or not so same thing he is frequently doing because he want to update his code frequently uh, to fix the bugs and he is deploying now again coming and building this particular job is always headache right that is the reason we have few other options to build automatically your jenkins job so those we call it as the build triggers so build triggers nothing but you are going to build your jenkins job in this particular situations so the options are different so build whenever a snapshot deploying is built sorry dependency is built this is a normal one nothing but manually to uh, do that one and the trigger build remotely remotely nothing but you can execute or you can build your uh, job by using scripts we rarely use this option next build after other projects are built if you have multiple projects one project is dependent on other project then we are going to choose this option but uh, now we can just ignore it we are going to talk about this one later next build periodically so periodically nothing but you can specify the time you can specify the time that when you want to build your job okay assume that uh, whether you are pushing the code or not every day night at 12 o'clock i want to build my job then you need to specify your build information or time over here but i don't specify that okay uh, 12 o'clock every day right 
midnight okay i cannot specify like this there is a, some certain rules you need to follow to tell the time that we call it as a that we call it as a uh, what i can say yep cron job so we are going to use the cron job to tell to your jenkins to build periodically so if i search for cron job okay cron job entry if you search or cron tab sorry not cron job it is cron tab so you can see here the linux command format this is how you need to give minutes hours day of the month okay month yeah day of the month month and uh, day of the week and command okay this is the entry you need to follow first one is at how many minutes you need to do hours and day of the month in which month you want to give and uh, uh, sorry day of the month means which date you want to do and month in which month you want to execute it and day of the week in which week you want to execute followed by the command what you need to do but the command is not necessary in our Jenkins job we need to provide this information let's take an example that every day midnight you want to execute it uh, your Jenkins job then what you can do you are going to specify over here that so midnight 12 o'clock right so 12 o'clock means minutes are 00, zero. and at 12 o'clock the usually the time it takes as a 0 to 23 hours 0 to 23 hours if you see here Kranta so hours it is going to take 0 to 23 so 0 means midnight 12 o'clock 1 o'clock means 1 1 hour like that 11 o'clock means 23 hours night 11 o'clock means 23 hours so midnight 12 o'clock means it is 0 hours it is 0 hours so 0 0 and 0 0 I can give nothing but midnight 12 o'clock every day I want to execute so every day means I need to give one or two if I give only on first day of uh, uh, what I can say first day of the month it is going to ex execute second date third date but if you want to execute every day you can use the star option so star means it equals to the every day and the month also I don't want to specify either Jan or February right every month I want to execute it so here also I need to give the star and the day of the week I cannot specify that Monday Tuesday Wednesday why because every day I want to execute then you can give the star so the meaning of this one right ignore the date ignore the date month and uh, week you just execute it every day 12 o'clock every day 12 o'clock if I give only one one nothing but January okay one nothing but January so it is going to execute January month only every day on January month every day on January month if I give star it is every day every month every day every month so that is how the cron job does work so you can just explore this one how does it work you can see here month means 1 to 31 uh, month of month field sorry this is date day of the month so 1 to 31 this is month field 1 to 12 next uh, day of the week 0 to 6 if I give 0 means it is a Sunday 1 means Monday 6 means Saturday that's how it is going to take it up so now what I will do I don't want to give the every day you can see here every day 12 o'clock uh, would last have run would last have uh, run at Thursday May 21st so on so so on so 12 o'clock so it is going to execute to 12 o'clock and the next one is again Friday 12 o'clock so it is clearly saying that these days it is going to execute it so anyway usually that's how the poll uh, build periodically does work so every uh, every day on this particular time I want to execute it next github hooker target uh, trigger so github hooker sorry github hook trigger nothing but in github itself you you can specify that if I push any code or if I push any changes to my github repository then execute this job execute this job that you can do but that we are going to see in next class
and polysium. So polysium also to the similar way how your build periodically does work similar way it is going to work but the difference between polysium and periodically is build periodically is going to execute at this particular point of time whether there is changes in your code or not assume that i haven't changed my code today but still this particular job does uh, execute but if i do the polysium uh, if i give the same time every day 12 o'clock okay so assume that only we have specified build periodically if we do the build periodically whether you pushed your changes over into repository or not today i assume that i don't change anything still this particular job execute tomorrow i haven't changed anything in my repository still it is going to execute day after tomorrow also i haven't changed anything still this job is executed because the build periodically nothing but whether you change your code or not i am going to execute your uh, job but if i choose the polysium what happens it is going to check your github assume that today i haven't pushed any change then it is going to uh, it is not going to execute this job tomorrow again i have pushed some changes then it is going to execute your build tomorrow day after tomorrow again i haven't changed anything day after tomorrow it is going to skip so that is how the polysium works so polysium works whenever you have you change your code then only it is going to work otherwise it is just sit idle so most of the cases we may use the polysium or build periodically in our real world okay so now i want to execute this one every day every minute nothing but i cannot wait till 12 o'clock today right after doing changes we are doing uh, changes frequently so what i have given star star five stars i have given now what will happen in this case does anybody can tell the job will run every minute yes that's true now i am saying that star means every minute every hour every day every month every week so i am saying that run this job every minute without any issues now if i give only <clears throat> one here okay one nothing but first hour every day or zero one i can say every day one uh, what i can say uh at midnight or sorry mid, not midnight one means one o'clock every day one o'clock run every minute because we have given star right whenever it reaches to the one o'clock one 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 two one three one four one five one six like that it uh, executed till two o'clock after two o'clock again it wait for next day so but we want to test it out how the pole SEM does work so i am giving all the stars and i will update my code and push the changes and we could see that our build should happen automatically and push the changes onto our tomcat server and we could able to see the updates on our tomcat server so that is how automation does work now let's go into my jenkins server and i will add one more code sorry one more update to my code so va index.jsp and h3 okay this is devops class okay i'm just closing h3 and save this file git status git add dot git status now it has been added to my git status it has been added to my staging git commit again i am committing this change so updated again again updated index.jsp and clear git push origin master and i need to provide here sr319 at gmail.com and my password so it is headache i'm going to add my keys to my github repository so that it would be easy so go to my home directory i have already my keys i think dot ssh okay i don't have my keys quickly i'm going to create my keys git okay i will do this one in next class for now what we have done we have pushed our changes and you can see here 
four uh, what i can say commits are sorry four jobs uh, four times this job is executed now fifth build should happen okay and this fifth build also without my intervention it should happen because we have done the poll SEM. now our jenkins job go and poll to our jenkins server sorry github repository in github repository there is a commit in the latest last minute i mean to say latest commit is there now our job should able to pick up that change and execute this job it is not executing let me refresh it yep okay it has been executed and if i open this one you can see here SEM changer it is executed not by jenkins user because we haven't executed as a user whenever you do or you execute as a user then only you can see this option and you can see on which code it is executing again updated index dot uh, JSP. So this is the latest commit due to this commit. I am executing this change. Okay, and it is successful and if I go and refresh my Page you can see the this is DevOps class. So this is how we can automate our uh, CICD sorry pipelines or I can say our jobs to deploy on our uh, target systems now once it is deployed our testing team will start doing testing maybe it is a just displaying some information but usually in the real world it could be some application once it is deployed they will check whether the application is working fine or not they will run some test cases or sanity checks all those all that they will do that they report to their bugs to the developers again developer go and change his code and push it from his local system so it is a continuation process until we get the successful working code on our test environment once it is working successfully then we move on to the next level all right so that's all for today i'm just going to stop over here and i'm expecting everyone to do couple of deployments and share me the screenshot of your tomcat server okay something like this where it is yeah something like this first you need to send me the hello world screenshot then hello world tomcat and then uh, add one more line okay and send me the screenshot that is the assignment for today and any questions if you don't have any questions we'll stop here and uh, if you need time to practice tomorrow i'm fine because i'm planning to take a class on saturday as well because we will discuss our stress little more on Saturday. Due to the technical issue, I am not able to continue with the integrating artifactor with Jenkins. I am going to cover this topic in the next session. For now, let's continue with the master and slave configuration. So for now, what we, we are doing is we are building all our Jenkins job in the Jenkins server itself. But uh, let's take an example that uh, assume that you are running hundreds of jobs in a day in our real time world. So whenever you are running hundreds of jobs on your Jenkins server, your Jenkins server may not be able to run those maybe due to the uh, what I can say uh, resources point of view, your Jenkins server may not have enough resources at the same time. Uh, you may not install all the necessary softwares to run on your Jenkins. If you do, or if you install all those uh, packages on your Jenkins master itself, it may it may be get uh, heavily overloaded. At the same time, your Jenkins server may not be capable to uh, run those particular jobs. Okay, why I am saying that it is not capable? Let's take an example that we want to build uh, a maybe dotnet project we may not build on the linux system then you must build on the windows system where uh, it sh uh, jenkins should be configured on windows so that is a difficulty so your master server may not be executed because it may be busy or it doesn't have enough resources or else it may not be capable so to overcome this problem we are going to use the maven master and slave architecture so in the Maven, sorry, Jenkins master and slave uh, architecture. In Jenkins master and 
slave teacher what will happen you have your jenkins and the jenkins kind of a manager so this guy is like a manager he will have the clients it may be a one client or a, a multiple clients these clients we will call it as a nodes okay jenkins nodes so master will tell to these nodes that okay take this particular job and execute take this particular job and execute that's how the master is going to manage its his nodes so we will add these as a nodes to this particular master so that this master can instruct these particular nodes so what is the benefit of that one so jenkins server we are not going to run any jobs locally that is first advantage second thing is we are going to run our jobs over here and if it is related to the uh, java project maybe we can build it over here if it is related to the dotnet project we can build it over here and required packages instead of installing on your local system you can install it over here or over here for example uh, what i can say we want to build our uh, project uh, with the maven so we can install maven over here as well as just we can install maven over here so now what we can do our jenkins will give this particular maven job over here and it get execute and give the result to the master and master take a decision what to do with that one now again we want to push that uh, result to the art factory still we can do that one so this is the advantage of using the art factory so that your uh, sorry using the master and slave architecture so that your jenkins can do the only managing jobs rather than executing their jobs actually so in our case maybe we are running very few jobs so that you cannot see any dependency but in real world we are going to run more jobs so managing with a single server uh, doesn't possible okay so with that now what we are going to do is we have already a jenkins master server and we are going to configure one of our linux system as a uh, node nothing but a client so whenever we execute any job that job should get executed over here and the results should give to the jenkins master that is what we are going to test it with the maven master and slave say so let's go back and here what i am going to do i need to configure my slave system let's take that uh, we have already a maven server where we have already installed a maven just think that this is an empty server so far we haven't installed even maven as well just it is an empty server i want to add this server as a client to my jenkins server okay slave or what i can say node jenkins node this i want to make it as a jenkins node now need to go and go to my jenkins server and configure this as a slave for that purpose what we should do is we should go to our jenkins so under jenkins we have a manage jenkins under manage jenkins we have a option called manage nodes and uh, clouds okay so this is the option where we can add a remote node remote node nothing but a slave node for our jenkins so let's click over here and you can see here we have only one node that is master node and it is a linux architecture nothing but it is a linux system and it is in sync and the free disk space this much space is there and a free swap space that's okay uh, everything looks good so this is the master node now i would like to add linux slave okay so as i said i am going to add it as a uh, this this server event server but just to treat it as a empty server for now so go back to your jenkins sorry and we need to add a new node you can see here there is a option to new node here and you should provide your new node name so i am giving my new node name as a linux node okay just i am giving a linux node and does it a permanent agent permanent agent means it should be always available i mean to say uh, you don't want to run uh, frequently any changes so this is the permanent agent and okay to add this one 
so now you can see here linux node now description of this node what is the purpose you are using and what kind of jobs you would like to execute on this one i just say that execute maven jobs over here why because i have already i have already installed maven over there so i can run maven job or else any linux related job any any jobs which can run on linux platform can be executed over here next number of executors number of executors means how many jobs at a time over here okay so i can if i specify 10 i can run 10 parallel jobs nothing nothing but at a time i can run 10 jobs on this particular system okay and more than 10 jobs if you are running it may not execute it will go into the queue next to remote root directory nothing but in the this particular system linux system where or which directory should i need to use to work on so i can specify that slash opt so treat opt as a workspace directory so there it is going to create a workspace directory and do whatever it it wants or else i can do opt jenkins okay so opt jenkins and i will to this particular server and create a opt jenkins so same thing this is a maven server so cd slash opt under opt i am going to create a jenkins okay jenkins directory what i am doing i have already logged into my maven server and uh, i am giving this as a opt uh, what i can say working directory for our jenkins so let's go back this directory i have created next label label i can give something like maven job okay so whenever you do the maven job if you choose this label and you have four servers under this label it can run on any of those servers it can run on any of those servers next thing you says so there are two options use this node as much as possible nothing but whenever it is free execute any job if new job comes and only build jobs with the label extensions matching to this one so otherwise if somebody gives this label particular label so only whenever you use this label then only the, the jobs will execute on the server otherwise it won't execute so that is the meaning of this one so for now what we do we will or most of the cases we will use this option use this node as much as possible next launch method there are three different kind of methods okay okay two methods okay so there are two methods okay launch method okay launch agent by connecting to the master and launch agent via the execution of the command uh, on the master so what does it mean that we are going to execute the commands uh, while executing our job or uh, what i can say uh, launch agent by the connecting to the master means we are going to connect to the master uh, from the agent okay from the agent we are going to connect to the master uh, this one is by executing commands in the master itself we are going to connect to the agent but let it be launch agent by connecting to the master this is the option we are going to choose next custom working directory custom working directory nothing but uh, in which directory you would like to work so i'm going to again specify slash opt and jenkins okay this is like a workspace so same directory i'm giving slash opt jenkins in this it is going to work if i give the disable it doesn't use this but let it be slash opt jenkins next internal data directory this you need to use the uh, what i can say fail if workspace is missing means if the workspace is not available it is going to fail but uh, let it be because we have we are going to create a workspace and i don't want to fail if the workspace is not there so workspace means whenever we execute our job it creates a workspace directory okay maybe this is the workspace directory over here next use websocket yes we use it this is the com connection I mean to say network connection and we have advanced up okay this is about the jvm option where your jvm is there and uh, all this information but we don't need this uh, for this one next availability 
this keep this agent online as much as possible and bring the agent online according to the schedule and bring the agent offline when uh, uh, in demand sorry bring the agent online when in demand and take offline when ideal so there are three options this is to keep your system always up and running nothing but you your client system will be always up and running so it is uh, make your agent online all the time and bring agent according to the schedule you can schedule the time nothing but only bring the server in this particular period of time why because let's take an example that uh, most of the developers they want to build their jobs during their business hours so what we can do we can uh, schedule the startup uh, uh, that in this particular time period i want to bring up this system remaining time it should be ideal i mean to say it it should be in shutdown so so that you can uh, what i can say reduce the utilization of your system next one is bring this agent when there is a demand this is about uh, whenever somebody is executing jobs and there is no enough uh, resources are available i mean to say enough nodes are available to execute that job then it is going to bring this server online otherwise the server will be sitting ideal means it will go to offline offline means shutdown state i mean to say not the server services but this is a test one so we are going to keep this agent use as much as possible so this is the option we are going to choose and uh, this is launch agent by connecting to the master so from the agent nothing but from this system we are connect to our system so these are the options we should choose and save this what will happen it is going to create one node it is going to create one node that is linux node you can see here and the architecture it is not showing anything because i just definitions but i haven't configured this uh, linux node i mean to say to give approval that okay you can treat me as a node you can treat me as a node so that approval i should give so for that now and yeah before executing that one if you see here this is a red uh, mark into mark which tells that your node is not available whenever your node is not available you can see this er error message i mean to say error image and uh, if the node is live then you are going to see that node sorry something like this so now let's go back again i'm just click and it will give the instruction on linux node options how can you set up this linux node you can see here linux node connect agent to jenkins one one of these ways this one and second one is this one and third one is this one okay sorry first one is this second one is this one <laughs> so two ways we can connect first thing is we need to send to our agent and execute this job so that it get can communicate and another way is even we need to download this one and execute this job that will work okay so i am going with this method so first what we will do we are going to launch agent from the browser launch agent from the browser so if you click on here launch and uh, it is going to give the jpnl package okay i just want to keep it you can see here slave agent dot jpnl this particular pack i want to copy into my jenkins sorry my uh, client system my client system so go here yep all the nodes over here this is your master node and we just set up the client node but client node is still not available because we need to execute some commands on our client node so to execute those commands the instructions are given over here so if i click over here you can see the connect agent by using these steps so first thing is you need to download this one onto your client system client system nothing but onto this system i need i want to download it but downloading directly client system is not possible so what i have done i have downloaded onto my windows system from windows system i am copying over here from windows system i am copying over here and second it is copied we have one more thing that is agent.jar you can see here jar 
java minus jar and agent dot jar this is also another file which we need to copy into target system so here we need to download it if i click over here this is also get downloaded we need to copy these two files onto our slave system once it is copied onto our slave system we can execute this job okay now to copy this onto our slave system currently to our windows system from windows 2 we need to copy onto this system uh, but to copy this one we can use the sftp option on our chink uh, mobile xterm if you see sftp whatever is uh, available over here if i go to my home directory what is my home directory pwd sorry i'm as a root right so let me go as a normal user so pwd if you see slash home ec2 minus user you can see here slash home minus ec2 user whatever is files are available over here sorry so whatever files are available over here files you can see here same thing is there now if i drag and drop my files to this location it appears over here so it's nothing but this is the cli mode and this is the gui mode so mobile external have this feature where you can copy your files directly on your linux system to jenkins system sorry uh, from windows system to uh, linux system that is the option i have given by the so now i'm going to copy these two files show in folder so i would like to copy it so agent i'm going to copy this is agent drag and drop and it is copying onto my linux system once it is uploaded here if i do ls over here i could able to see that particular uh, file and if i do ls you can see here agent dot jar still it is copying not yet completed 21 percent is completed so far okay now i am copying other file as well so i just copied the both the files now if you see here you can see the both the files agent dot jar and the slave agent dot jpnl okay these two files are necessary to execute our command now we need to execute this command as it is so if we, if we execute this command it is going to uh, what i can say make our system as a client system now let's clear the screen and ls sorry executing i just copied the command and i am saying it as a work directory use it as a opt jenkins and so far i'm just canceling this command executing if i go and check under slash opt slash jenkins nothing is there so far okay now let's execute our job sorry not this one so i am executing my job enter okay works okay so what it is saying that i'm executing this job as a ec2 minus user but ec2 minus user doesn't have enough privileges to work on that particular directory so now what i will do i'm going to switch as a root user or else i can give the access to this particular folder to ec2 minus user that is the best way right so va sorry ch mode so ch own ec2 minus user ec2 minus user okay ch1 minus r ec2 minus user and ec2 minus user colon sorry so i'm giving access to my particular slash opt jenkins repository to ec2 minus user and now again i'm going back as a normal user and if i execute the same job now i think i can able to access it okay see here it is accessing this particular repository and my slave is working and it's connected and if i go and uh, check out my nodes 
can see here your Linux node came into the active and it is a Linux system it is so this is how we can add and if you see here this should be continue to run if I cancel it and again the node will go offline you can see here it went to offline so rather than running it as a in the command prompt if you give under at the end of the your command it runs in the background it runs in the background okay so now this is running in, and if i go and refresh my jenkins i can see here it is now and also if i go to slash opt jenkins okay there is a, a remoting is there from now onwards if i create any jobs the jobs information get create over here okay now let's test a job okay i just restarted right so it got locked off and logged in so i'm going to slash opt jenkins okay now okay my node is fine my node is looks fine and i'm going to use this node to execute my job okay so first thing i'm going to create a job quickly i'm going to create a job new job slave job one okay or else slave job i am creating and it is a freestyle project and okay okay so we are creating a new job but this job i would like to run on my slave system so to run this slave system you see here discard world builds git project like this you have the option called restrict where this project can run means we are going to tell to our jenkins that this particular project should run only on this one and you can see here label extension what is the label if you do remember we have given maven right yep you can see here the label we have given is maven job so we are going to choose this particular one Maybe we can give only Linux over here, but we have given Maven job as our label. So we should choose this one. Now what happens whenever I execute this job, it is going to create on, the, on this particular server. And I'm not choosing anything. I'm going to execute only execute shell. Execute shell, sorry. So we can do echo. This is a test job and uh, just to make sure that it is creating uh, sorry working on the slave system what we will do wherever this job is executed under the job server under temp create a test dot or demo file demo dot txt so what does it mean echo this particular output so the whatever output you are getting this output you need to send or you need to uh, uh, copy or create a file and copy into that particular file so now if i go to my slave under slash tmp we don't have okay so many files are there but if i check for cat demo dot txt we don't have any such kind of file but once we have executed the job and if we check this file should be available in the client system okay this is client 33.9191 and uh, if i go to my jenkins server maven server you can see the private ip 33.91 nothing but it is a slave system so let's go to our jenkins so jenkins sorry not this one so jenkins and apply save it and build now i am building this job and uh, okay build is successful and you can see here this ran by jenkins user but build remotely on linux system it ran on the remote system and if i click on the node and you can see here project are tied to linux node nothing but this particular one is going to execute on the linux node and it's executed and this is my linux node and if i check for the demo.txt you can see here this is a text job and it's executed sorry test job it's executed on the slave system and if i go to opt jenkins 
opt jenkins you can see here there is a directory called workspace got created now and if i go inside to this you can see the slave job because it is executed over here and if i go to my maven Je sorry jenkins master server you cannot see that job okay sorry this where is my master server this is jenkins master and if i log into my master node i haven't logged into my master node session and uh, devops key it's it to minus user okay this is my master node and this particular job you cannot see in the master node i mean to say in the jenkins master the default directory is where lib jenkins under jenkins we have workspace under workspace you have all the jobs okay so slave job we don't have any job called slave over here even though we created it right because it is working on the target system clear how can we configure a, our jenkins server sorry jenkins slave and how can we execute our jobs on slave system yeah and one more point i forgot to add while configuring our client agent uh, your client should install with java if it is not installed with java the command what we have executed this command itself doesn't get executed because we are we want to run the agent dot jar so this particular stuff we want to execute that's the reason we should have or we must install java on our client system so anyway it is a maven server so we have already installed java before installing maven that's the reason there is no issue now uh, one more test i'm going to do if yeah go ahead so Peter, have you run these commands these java hyphen jar in the slave agent uh, files command mm -hmm. on the uh, mm -hmm. this jenkins machine itself no not in jenkins mission in jenkins mission just now i connected you need to run on the agent system okay 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 so nothing to run on jenkins server only in the gui you need to configure your node once it is configured you are going to get a new uh, jar one jar file and a jpnl file those two you need to copy onto your slave system and run those on the slave system that's it if you run it it is going to get communicate with your jenkins master node and from that onwards your master is going to execute jobs on the slave system okay now i am going to create a one more job before creating anybody have any questions slave maven job so why i am giving slave maven job i am going to run the maven job on slave slave and uh, maven is already configured over there okay so if i go and check it out this is my slave right so in the slave if i go to opt under opt we have maven maven is under opt maven 3.6.3 okay so now what we will do we are going to create a maven project this time maven project i am choosing and uh, git url i am going to choose my git url so same or else i am going to choose my private repository this time that is web, web app project so clone the repository and repository name next credentials i am giving my credentials to communicate with that one then we are going to give the form.xml clean install okay i am giving form.xml as clean install and the next thing is yep sorry i forgot to mention the execute this job on maven server okay so maven job this is the maven job okay maybe i might have given maven server rather than maven job that could be more relevant but anyway i'm running it on the slave system okay even i can deploy it on the top uh, what i can say 
my Tomcat server. So quickly, I'm going to specify web app under workspaces. It is going to create target the slash star dot where and uh, container name it is uh, tomcat 8 and uh, credentials deployer and i can give the tomcat server url okay so let me access it but i cannot access it because tomcat i need to run it on the system quickly let me connect to my tomcat server and start the services screedy opt here we have tomcat let me become a root clear the screen cd slash opt apache tomcat cd bin and start your services to start startup.sh so my tomcat is running let me connect to my tomcat server from the browser sorry 8080 right so i'm connecting to my tomcat server and this is the url i should give in my jenkins job so what it will do it is going to build on the slave system then it is going to deploy on my tomcat server apply save and build now okay it's failed let's see why it is failed sorry maven does it exist maven part where does maven. it showing uh last third line yep uh okay so the error is maven home directory doesn't exist why because yeah i know this error so this is we have set up under slash opt maven in our jenkins system the path what we have specified is slash opt maven right because in our jenkins system maven is running under slash slash opt maven same thing here also we need to rename our maven server path Currently, it is running on slash Apache, uh, sorry, Apache Maven 3.6.3, right? So let's rename it. Or I can say, um, I can move it, okay? Sorry, copy it. CP minus R, this location to just Maven. So that it looks for the libraries over here. Just give with sudo. Okay, so what I'm doing is I just copied this one into just Maven directory. Why it is saying that slash OPT Maven is not there. In our Jenkins configuration, we said that Maven is available under slash OPT Maven. Okay, manage Jenkins. If I go here, global tool configuration, under global tool configuration, we said that Maven is available under OPT Maven it is available on the jenkins master in the same location but whenever it comes to the slave it is not in the same location so we need to copy it into this location and also we need to change our maven uh, what i can say uh, environment variables so environment variables we have changed under uh, profile dots uh, bash underscore profile right so go to root user cat dot bash underscore profile so va dot bash underscore va slash sorry dot bash underscore profile so we just need to change it to rather than rather than opt apache so apache maven and version we are just changing it to this version location okay that's it now i can able to execute my job without any issues and let's go and uh, execute our job one more time and build now
and now you can see here it could able to uh, searching for the palm.xml yes i think now it is able to clone and execute the job yes it is successfully created the var dot uh, uh, sorry web app project dot var and also it deployed on the target system so if i go to my slash this is the path right so slash web app dot var you can see the whatever we have deployed on this system and if you see your uh, slave system in the slave system we are working under opt jenkins right under opt jenkins let me clear the screen and you can see here maven agent dot jar has been created and maven interpreter and uh, maven interpreter commons and also if i go to workspace we can see the two jobs now that is maven slave maven sorry slave maven job and here you can see palm.xml src and a target under target we have the our var file so this is how we can run jobs on our client systems as well any questions over here uh, that's all for today and we'll again meet on tuesday hello friends welcome back so in today's session we are going to discuss about uh, how to build a job using uh, github webhook so this is one of the concept we missed while building our jobs and dsl jobs then pipeline scripts i don't think so we can cover pipeline scripts today but if time permits we'll go there and also integrating artifactory with the jenkins in previous class we tried to do this one and there was a bit of confusion so i'm going to cover uh, pipeline scripts and integration sorry integrating artifactory with the jenkins in next class so in today's class we are going to see build a job using github webhook and dsl jobs let's jump into our jenkins console so this is our jenkins console why it is still running let me refresh it it's still running okay this is ninth job right ninth build okay let it run okay so assume that let's take an example that hello world okay so in the hello world program what i am doing is whenever there is a new code i need to come here and build it I need to come here and build it rather than this one i i i have another option where i can use the polysium so in the polysium case what happens whenever there is change in the code it is going to poll for every uh, what i can say every timeline which we have given in the polysium through the cron job and in that particular period of time it finds any changes in your github repository it uh, takes that code and do a build apart from that we have one more option that is github webhook so the difference between github webhook and uh, polysium is in polysium case let's take an example that so in the build triggers if i enable polysium what happens you need to do the schedule according to the schedule your jenkins has to go to your github and validate the git repository whether there is any changes or not and do the build but in case if we are using github webhook this option in this case your github itself will tell to your jenkins that i have new code i have new code so you can build it so it is a reverse way rather than jenkins go and validate it okay uh, i have a image yep in this case so if i take the uh, polysium in polysium case jenkins has to go and talk with github and check it out whether there is any changes in your github or not but in github webhook github will go and communicate with jenkins that i have new changes please execute the build please execute the build so that is how the github is going to tell to our jenkins so to enable this one we have option in github jenkins job itself that is G 
github hook trigger for git scm polling so if you choose this option what will happen whenever there is any changes in your github your github tells to your jenkins job that okay boss uh, you have chosen this option so i have few changes in my uh, repository so please execute it please execute it so this is one of the good option in case your code you are not pushing or your github is not updated frequently why well, because if your code is not updated frequently if you go with the poll scm then there may be a problem that your Jenkins has to go and check your uh, GitHub each and every time according to the timelines. But if this is the case, your Jenkins Git itself will come and tells you that, okay, I have some changes. So that is the advantage. Again, it is a project necessity, which one you should go. Either you need to build uh, what I can say normally, or you need to build or you need to do the policym or use the github webhook or build after other projects like this according to the project necessity you are going to do this so now in in our case what we are doing is we are going to our github and we are we are enabling github webhook for that you need to do one more configuration okay just changing over here doesn't help you uh, if you change the code so let's save our job just we have done that github webhook and if you see this is the repository i'm using so if i change anything in this repository this job should get execute this particular job should get execute and nothing we are doing just we need to see that it could able to pull the code if you want to do some build still you can do the build uh, what I can say I am going to enable build as well then So this is a maven project so we can use the invoke top level maven and the default maven and goal is clean install Okay, I'm building this job. It should clone the repository and it should build apply and save That's it. So now my job is ready and so far only two uh, executors are there i mean to say two times we have built this job and uh, if i go and change something in my code third build should execute but before doing this one even you need to tell to your github that if there is any changes you need to tell to your jenkins so far we told that in this repository i mean to say In this repository, any changes are there, our Jenkins job should trigger. That is what we told. But at the same time, I need to tell to my repository also that, uh, boss, if there is any changes, please intimate to the your Jenkins server. That is what you need to tell. Currently, this GitHub repository doesn't know to which Jenkins server should I need to tell. Which Jenkins server should I need to tell? That's the reason you need to go to settings you need to go to settings and if you scroll down you can see a option called webhooks you can see a option called webhooks click over here and add webhook here you need to add a webhook so if you click on add webhook it's displays that payload url payload url nothing but your jenkins server so which jenkins server should i need to intimate whenever there is any changes so you need to go here and take your Jenkins server IP address with port number. So this is your Jenkins server, right? So not here. Yep. So here you need to give your Jenkins server URL and also at the end you need to add GitHub webhook. Okay, GitHub webhook slash okay so this is the additional stuff you need to give for your particular job so you need to give slash github webhook slash and don't miss this slash if you do miss this slash it won't able to communicate with your github server so you must add this github webhook slash once you have done the content type is application and json you should choose application and json once you have chosen you need to add your webhook once you add webhook you can see here 
why it could not able to communicate HTTP. Spelling mistake. Okay, web sorry. Hook. Yes, webhook. There is a, my keyboard has some issues. Seems okay. Webhook. So update it. Once you update. webhooks i'm going back to webhooks and still it could not able to recognize so first time if you do some mistake it is not going to recognize so edit it i'm just copying it control a and delete this webhook i'm going to recreate it because first time if it is failed again uh, it, it is going to take some time to recognize that it is fine so i'm again adding it same url our Jenkins server so this time the spelling is correct there is no typo and uh, add this webhook so once you add your webhook you can see here it is currently validating whether this URL is correct or not whether can I able to communicate with this URL or not and uh, it should show as a tick mark if it is a tick mark nothing but I can able to communicate it let me refresh it Yes, you can see here it is came as a tick mark nothing, but I can able to uh, Communicate with this particular Jenkins server Now let's go and do some changes to our test hello program So this is a Jenkins file which I pushed yesterday. That's okay So form.xml is there and uh, source code. We are going to update our uh, Index.jsp file so main under main we have app.java hello world okay just it is displaying the hello world this is a jar application so i'm going to change just a hello world to so welcome to devops training i'm giving and update it so whenever we update it is going to communicate with our jenkins server and it creates the uh, new build so let's update it so i have updated but now it's not recommended to update from here usually you should update from the git so now you can see here third build is under progress so it is successful and if i open it you can see here we have updated app.java so this is the default commit it took and uh, it should be able to execute this successfully it should be able to execute this successfully so now again if i change it it automatically triggers this job so that is how github webhooks does work so again we are testing one more time i will do one more change to our jenkins job or else we'll do test on another uh, application that is a web app project quickly i'm going to update or create a new job so i'm going to create a new job webhook job two i think already I have created one so you just choose the a freestyle project or else if you want to copy the some configuration from your existing job what you can do there is a option to copy from okay i haven't talked about this one but if you see here there is a option to copy from and here you can check out your jobs if you type some job name if you type some job name whatever jobs are created in your jenkins server those jobs get uh, appear over here and you, it will copy the configuration of that particular job so whatever is there in the webhook test job same data get copied or same way this job also get created and you can modify according to your necessity so this is how you can copy a duplicate job but uh, we'll go and check it out so git url it is uh, referring to the test hello job but i would like to go with the uh, what i can say this one so webhook web app project so change it to web app project and for this we need credentials right 
because it is a private repository so give the credentials and uh, i should run from the master only and github webhook let it be and maven goals clean install so my job is ready at the same time i need to go here go to settings and choose webhooks and add a webhook and take the url of your jenkins server and make sure it should starts with the http okay http colon slash slash and the url of your jenkins even you can replace this url with the ip address as well so we have ip address right jenkins server ip address this one so even you can give this ip address also not a problem let me give the ip address as well because both will refer to the same thing and webhook slash then it is not webhook sorry github webhook so add this one it could be able to communicate and if i edit it you can still see this is application is something else let it change it to this one it works with this one or else you can try with this as well okay you can test it if necessary so update now i'm going to change my code rather than changing it from here i will do it from my console so go to web web app project and update it so i have this code in my local repository i think i didn't clone it git clone i'm going to clone this repository okay okay i have cloned it into my home directory so i just switch it to home directory and you can see here web app project is there now git pull because before modifying any changes it's better to pull if there is any changes it is going to take it earlier it was not able to clone because uh, i'm in the home directory i don't have permissions under the root that is the issue so it's already up to date so now what i will do i am going to edit my uh, rather than pom.xml src go to tree is not here main under main we have web app under web app index.jsp okay va index.jsp just we are editing this one whenever we edit and push the changes whenever we edit and push the changes automatically our jenkins job get trigger git status one file is there git add dot git commit minus m added new line to test github webhook so we have added into the local repository and git push origin master okay we are pushing our changes onto the master node and uh, you can see now our job should get a trigger automatically because the changes has been pushed and uh, it is triggering the job right so this is how we can use our webhook okay so next we are going to talk about uh, dsl jobs if you don't have any questions okay so let's go to dsl jobs okay so dsl stands for domain specific language okay domain specific language and first of all the use of the dsl jobs is something like this assume that so far what we are doing whenever you want to create any job deploy on tomcat okay because this is a pole SEM, right that's the reason it is running if i open this one because even for pole SEM also it identified the changes that's the reason it is executing at this moment 
policy m okay all right anyway so these many jobs are there and uh, we need to create each and every job manually whenever it is necessary uh, let's take an example that uh, due to some reason you would like to migrate your Jenkins jobs into the some other server or you would like to recreate it quickly or else uh, you don't know what uh, by mistakenly you have deleted your job but you don't know what was the uh, configuration of your Jenkins job so these kind of problems you may face if you create your Jenkins job manually okay assume that i'm running a uh, created a job called deploy on tomcat and uh, after uh, some period of time by mistakenly i have deleted this job this is not working again either you need to configure manually uh, or else sometimes you may miss some parameters and which was working with the previous job and it is not working with the latest job so to overcome these kind of problems you can use the dsl jobs so what is the advantage of DSL jobs? You can write your DSL jobs as a script. So the Jenkins DSL job is a job which will create another job pipeline or so and so. So what does it do? It is going to create your Jenkins job. It is going to create your Jenkins job so that in case if you delete your previous job, still not an issue, you can recreate your Jenkins job by using DSL job. Okay, nothing but creating a Jenkins job by using another job. We are going to uh, See that one in a while now in Jenkins. Sorry DSL job. You need to install a plugin Okay, the plugin name is job DSL. This is the plugin you should install if I click over here. It will take us into the DSL uh, job DSL page and you can see here. This is the uh, DSL uh, sorry job DSL plugin and once you have installed you will get this kind of option okay you will get this kind of option but this is a, about the pipeline why we are getting pipeline so this is how you were uh, this is again pipeline job yep this is how your dsl jobs looks like so if you would like to create such kind of project this kind of project you can use the dsl jobs so uh, we are going to create our own uh, DSL job in a while. So once we create your DSL job, you can able to trigger another job. Okay, so this is the pr uh, procedural document. How can you use and how does it work? But anyway, we are going to execute the same job in a while. So that is about the DSL plugin. So we must install a DSL plugin. Once we have installed a DSL plugin, we can create a job, which I just shown you. We can try with this example first. Uh, once it is working, we can able to change it according to our necessity. Next, uh, DSL job API Weaver. So list of the jobs, how do you want to create? It is a little bit of scripting you need to write. It is uh, uh, written in the domain specific language and how you need to write and some examples all this information is available under this one job DSL plugin okay or else what you can do you can just search for Jenkins DSL it is going to show you the Jenkins space this is the uh, what I can say Jenkins space this is about the plugin but this is about your uh, what I can say syntax I can say so here you will have the uh, Jenkins job DSL API here you can search for whatever you need and you will get the list of the information about how you can create your job but don't get confused I'm going to tell you how to use this page for now let's go back and uh, check out how the job looks like so the DSL jobs look like something like this okay you will have a job and job name and uh, you have flower braces or flower brackets under this one you need to write your code you need to write your code but most of the cases it is quite generic you can write it and how to write if you don't know you can come and check it out over here okay so first what we will do we will execute or we will do with this example itself so first we'll do this one and i have updated some of the jobs in my github repository so 
if you go to arsr319 and devops and this is a private repository i'm going to grant access to everyone and if you see here here we have artifactory jenkins maven so i'm creating for each and every service the documentation uh, from past three days i'm working on the documentation itself so you can see more documents over here but anyway here you can see even whatever we just discussed how to use webhook the documentation is here how can you work with the webhook you just need to go through with this one you can able to follow why it is not uh, syntax is not taking okay dot md i need to give because it is not the, taking the syntax yep you can see here now okay so this is the job you need to follow you can follow the, this instructions to create it now anyway so we are talking about dsl jobs so here we have list of the jobs i have created eight jobs so you can use these jobs uh, instead of i have created i have copied from some other github repositories which i could see that these are quite simple so you can follow this one so first job is if i click over here you can check it out this is the first job you can copy as it is and you can create your own job right so first uh, let's jump into our uh, what i can say jenkins server and create a new job okay so now we are going to create a job this job is going to create another job okay so this dsl job going to create another job so there could be a base job base job is going to create another job this base job we call it as a seed job seed nothing but it helps us to create another job it helps us to create another job so if we execute this one it is going to create a new job so let's name it as a seed jenkins job okay so just giving seed jenkins job and it is a freestyle project and okay so seed jenkins job i'm creating and uh, by the way we need to install jenkins plugin right that is a job dsl plugin we should install i have already installed it that's the reason again i don't need to do but uh, just apply and save let's go back and see how to install that one i will just show you i haven't updated anything in the seed job but get just go to ma manage jenkins and manage plugins and you need to search for seed dsl un under available tab but currently it is already installed even though i search for that you don't find job dsl or just a dsl you can search so i'm searching for job dsl you can see here the there is no plugin but if i go and search same thing in the install you can find the job dsl you can see here this plugin i have installed yesterday during my testing so this is the job dsl and go back now we just created a seed jenkins job we just created and if i open this one okay nothing we have configured so far so let's go to configure and here first i am going to copy my example so nothing you do over here even in the github uh, link also you don't do anything under build section you need to choose this option process job dsl okay this is the option if you choose this option it is going to show you this uh, what i can say page here you can see here use the provided dsl script you can choose this option or, or else you can use the dsl sorry look on the file system so if you do look on the file system you need to provide your github repository where your uh, script is located and you need to choose your github repository over here but we are not choosing github repository for now we are going to do that one in a while for now what we do we just do the dsl script and we'll copy what we have seen in our example either we can either we can use this one or else we can use 
what is there in the github repository first let's start with what is there in the github repository you can see here job and job dsl example so now what it is going to do it is going to create a new job with the dsl okay so let's copy this one i'm closing all the unnecessary tabs so here you are going to copy your syntax so it starts with job and the job name nothing but it is going to create a new jenkins job the name is job dsl let's use the velaxi job okay just for testing purpose velaxi job i am using so it should create a velaxi job under velaxi job nothing is there we haven't specified anything so it is not going to create anything i mean to say it's create an empty job so apply it and save it now if i build it and i will open the one more tab and if i search for velaxi nothing is there with the velaxi name there is no job with the any name so now we are going to execute a seed job whenever we execute seed job it creates a new job over here that job name is velaxi job so let's execute our seed job build now and it is successful and if i refresh it it is going to show that what job it has been created you can see it's created a velaxi job and if i go here and refresh and if i search again velaxi and you can see here there is one job has been created with velaxi and if you see the content inside to this one nothing should be there why because we haven't specified anything in this job so whatever content you are going to specify within the job that content is get displayed over here get displayed over here let's take that okay this for this velaxi job i would like to add a description i would like to add a description then i need to go here this is my seed job right so go to the configuration and i need to update my job to add the description so to add the description i don't know the what is the entry i don't know what is the entry right then you can come here and you can search for the description so so description so ours is freestyle project right so you can see here freestyle job so freestyle job if i click over here it is going to give how you need to specify the your description so this is your job name already we have this name and the description if you would like to provide this is how you need to add it so description is my first job something like this you need to add to your seed job not to the velaxi job to seed job so i am adding the description over here rather than this is my first job i will give it as a my test job my test job so now apply and save and if i execute my existing job is going to get updated and it add the description to this particular job so let's build now and build is successful and if i go here and if i refresh my job now you can see the description yes you can see the description it is saying that my test job this is my test job now again we'll go here and update some other configuration and what you need to update you have the list of the jobs over here so first we have just empty job then we have added description next parameters let's add the parameters and uh, to add parameters you need to add one more entry called parameters you need to add one more entry called parameters and uh, the parameter type you need to provide so this parameters information you can search again over here not here here if you search for parameters it is going to display the parameters and ours is a freestyle project and if you click over here you can see here how you need to define your parameters so boolean nothing but a true or false choices we have created parameters right nothing but in our job we want to use uh, where we can get this project is parameterized and add parameters we have done right so these parameters if you want to get it through the job itself you need to add this entry sorry 
you need to add this entry something like this okay choices options you need to provide the options like something like this so same thing i have updated in our github repository so just copy and paste this one so you are going to get the boolean string and choice parameters so this is to drop down options you are going to get this is to true or false checkbox you are going to get this is you can choose any options sorry this is choices here you can fill by default information it will get and you can fill any information if you need so let's copy this one parameters option and we are going to update our jenkins job itself so this is seed job so everything you need to update in your seed job so first we have added description now we have added the parameters and apply and save we have added parameters now build now if i do it created a new job and if i open the new job again and this time if i go to configure with the description it should have the parameters as well right even i can refresh this job but uh, just to try to open the new job each and every time okay so it's just loaded you can see the option my test job this is the description and this project is parameterized this option it has taken it from this particular configuration so this particular configuration string parameter first one you can see here string parameter it came and uh, this is the default value name and value and the description same thing it is there so planet is the name and this default value this is the default value is world and the description what is the def description you want to give okay this is next one is boolean parameter so here you can see this is the boolean parameter boolean parameter uh, you, you are getting the default value as a tick mark next one is choice parameter which option do you need to choose so these are the options which you are getting and option one is the default one so like this your parameters can configure okay next scm scm nothing but you would like to get code from your github repository you would like to get code from code from your github repository then you can go to the scm then you can go to the scm and you need to add your jenkins job over here you can see here uh, we have given the description we have given the parameters now we are giving the from where i should clone my repository so to clone the repository you need to use the scm option so scm option is going to clone the repository now i am going to give the scm option in our seed job so i should copy it over here and instead of this particular url i am going to change it to our jenkins uh, sorry github repository so what i will do i will go with this one web app project repository sorry it is a private let me go to the public one this is uh, hello world right so going to hello world program test hello world if i am giving this web app project i need to provide credentials also i need to do the little research to do or add the credentials to the job so now what we are going to do is we are just replacing this url with the okay our own url and master is the branch master is the branch from the master you can copy it so apply and save and if i build it now for this particular job apart from these options you are going to see the it is going to select the git and git will have a repository so let's build now okay build is successful and let's open this job i'm just closing it and if i see configuration and with these parameters you can see here it has a git and the url what is the url we have given okay so this is how you can keep on updating your jenkins job and if you don't know how to use it 
the re here you have a option so here we have examples and if you need more options if you click over here it is going to give the more options nothing but still more you want to define in your uh, uh, what i can say job so under parameters we have used only this option and boolean we have used right yeah boolean parameter so string parameter apart from this we have string parameter apart from this we have few other options depends upon uh, what do you need you can change it to uh, your necessity but it requires a little bit of practice to write the dsl jobs it doesn't come that okay uh, i can start a day one because it returns in the domain specific language okay it is like a groovy script so you need to follow the appropriate syntax to do that one the syntax you can find it over here next thing if i go here so we just seen the scm and the triggers triggers nothing but when you you need to execute the your job we have seen the polycm all this stuff right so if you give the triggers cron okay if you give the cron it is going to enable the uh, polycm currently we haven't to trigger this job right if i go here okay polycm is not enabled now if i update my seed job with this configuration it could be able to trigger the job okay so inside to this one okay this is the job one this is here it is opening and here it is closing so all the values should be within the job that's the reason i am specifying under to this job and apply and save it now if i build it again build now okay i think this is the one huh? no okay let me build it again i'm building my job so build is successful now and uh, if i go and open okay this build is going to successful whenever uh, there is no error in the syntax okay if i open it and if i go to configuration i'm just closing it so go to configuration and if i scroll down with the github you can see the polycm has been enabled build periodically sorry not polycm cron is build periodically and if you want to enable polycm you need to go and search over here okay i thought it is a uh, polycm but uh, we'll enable polycm if you want so if i go here triggers because uh, this is the example how you can trigger this is scm daily nothing but daily it is going to trigger so polycm so cron string cron then yeah you can see here pull the source control for the changes if you want to enable the polycm you need to give the just a scm so we can just change it to the scm configuration and instead of this one i'm going to give the scm and i want to execute it for every minute assume that every day 12 o'clock so 0 0 12 star 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 okay 12 nothing but it is again come to 0 0 midnight 12 if you give 12 it is afternoon 12 it comes so apply and save and build now we have updated our job so now if i go to my job and i'm closing old one and the configuration so this time it should be polycm you can see here double zero double zero we have given and three stars so this is how you can schedule your job if it is necessary okay next we have few other examples i think i would recommend you to go through with these so steps are there so steps nothing but you need to specify that what command you would like to execute it okay so if you add the steps and shell if you give it is something like this in our job what happens it will go to the build and execute shell so this option it will enable and whatever content you have given in your job it is going to display over here so let's go and do this one 
okay so now what i will do i'm going to update my seed job so far we haven't built this galaxy job we are going to build it now so under seed job i'm going to add not here so trigger should get closed over here so here we are going to add steps so steps nothing but you are going to specify what is the job you need to execute under your build which step you are choosing if you want to execute the uh, bash command maybe it is it could be bash you can go and check it over here okay uh, like that you can change it so for now just execute this one hello world apply and save and if i build now okay so build is successful now if i go and open my job i'm closing my old job sorry old job leave it so and if i go to configuration this time it should add the build option okay everything is fine and pole SM is also there now you can see here build and echo hello world okay echo hello world is there and if i go back and if i execute this build i need to build with parameters why because parameters are enabled and uh, i can choose the parameters whatever is necessary let it be default and build if i execute it it is going to build this job uh, during the build it follows the other steps nothing but it to pull the code from the jenkins and it is also going to execute the command but it's failed why it's failed under manage jenkins configure jenkins like there's some option to configure user and uh, email maybe the, that could be help us let's do that one configure system. system maybe but i'm sure that this is a due to a plugin uh, because even in maven also i had the similar kind of issue so git 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 github this yeah, is yeah. git plugin okay maybe let's try this option so yeah shankar and okay apply save so let's execute our job one more time so build with parameters and build okay yes now it's working thank you yeah uh, so it is successful at this moment but i will tell you uh, what could be the reason okay so for now what we have done is we have updated our details under uh, our jenkins job sorry jenkins configuration to take pick up our username and password see now it is successful and it is displaying hello world because our seed job is just executed the cell and it also pulled the code from our github repository okay so now we'll go to again our seed job and we'll update uh, one last configuration we are going to do is we are going to add our maven job okay this is done and if i go to dsl job and uh, this is to set up our maven job uh, okay so we'll create our maven job if you do remember we were building our code right so from starting i'm going to write my seed job so what is the job i can take yeah uh, maven first job and if i go to configuration if you do remember we were doing taking this url and we are going to pom.xml and uh, we are going to do the clean package okay this is what we need to do but uh, this is a maven project uh, even the maven project we are going to create with the freestyle so for that one let's qu create quickly a dsl job so that even you will get some idea how does it work so file new so dsl job starts with job and you need to provide your job name my maven job okay my maven job i am giving and starting and closing under this you need to write your code so next you need to 
clone the repository right to clone the repository you need to use a parameter called scm okay so if you go to your here if you search for git or scm and freestyle project if you go you can see here uh, scm you need to give and github and github url you should provide okay so i'm giving or else we can take the example of this one itself so here we have a maven job but we are taking the same one so first one is job we have given maven job and we have started it here and we closed it over here next uh, if we would like to give the description we should provide the description to our job so instead of scm let provide the description my maven dsl project let it be the description once the description is done we need to give the our poll scm so scm we are going to give and we are going to clone it from the gate so this is the one and here we need to replace this one and this is the master and uh, this is some additional value to pull it from the master only otherwise it is not working i have tested so you just add this one if you are creating your maven project and we want to do it in our script that is github yes so github test hello project so I'm just replacing this one. Now we have specified the SEM. Next, we need to give the Maven project, right? So for that one, if I go here, sorry, yes, here, you can see here steps. Under steps, the build parameters you need to provide. Under steps, you need to provide your build parameter. So let's write steps, under steps, we are going to specify the Maven, okay? we are going to build with the maven so that's why you need to provide the maven or else let me copy this one and we'll change according to our necessity so maven build we are doing and while specifying the maven you need to provide the maven installation path nothing but configuration if you do remember uh, our jenkins job sorry in our jenkins if i go to jenkins and go to manage jenkins and configure system under configure system we have configured maven right sorry not under configuration under global tool configuration okay so under global tool configuration if you do remember we have set up jdk git as well as maven you can see here maven so this maven name we should provide in the uh installation maven version i can say okay so here maven installation you need to provide the maven path so currently it is maven if you give some other name maven our version is 3.6.6 i think so if this is the version you need to provide the same over here so whatever name you have given over there same thing you need to give but here we have given only maven as our name just you need to replace the maven installation to same one okay so i have changed it to maven next to goals goals nothing but what do you want to do i want to do the clean package this test we are not doing just to skip that one and uh, clean install okay so if you specify like this it is going to execute the clean install goal but if i specify like this it is going to skip the test cases while executing our job if there is any test cases are there just to skip the, those and uh, do the only clean and package do the only clean and package and uh, again you can write one more uh, same entry there you can specify your test goal okay something like this maven installation path doesn't change and goal i am going to specify the test over here so first i want to do the package then i want to do the test and even if you would like to deploy it on the artifactory you can add one more okay because through the uh, deployment we, we want to do here you can specify the deploy like this you can do but so far let it be first what we are going to do we are just doing the cleaning and package clean and package then we are running the test cases okay 
so this is our job and if you would like to deploy on the tomcat server then you need to add one more step okay that will come under to the uh, steps itself so once the build is done no not steps it will come other out of steps nothing but here you need to add something like deployment and you need to specify the tomcat server url and all that stuff i'm going to update my code to deploy as well but for now we are going to test with this one it is sorry what does it do it is going to clone the code from the github repository and also it is going to do the packaging of our code and then test so let's update our seed job according to that one and i'm going to give the new name i don't give the velaxi job and i want to give the my maven job right yep so my maven job is i have given with this name i don't think so there is a job name is created make sure that it is not conflicted okay it's already there so what i will do i will give my maven test job okay my maven test job with this name i don't think so a job is there my maven test job is not there so let's create this one apply and save now what will happen if i execute it uh, so far it is managing only velaxi job now it is going to create the um, my maven test job and it is no more do any changes to this job because we have removed it from our configuration okay let's build it now there is no syntax error in our code the build should successful but there is some problem it seems okay somewhere we haven't closed it properly so configuration so this we have closed here this we have closed here this we have closed here yeah steps then job one yep you can see here now it's closed apply save and build now so it is successful and uh, still it is showing the same job if i refresh we have the new job so it is not going to manage this one so let's open this one and if i see the configuration of this one it should able to add our github repository yes and if i go here you can see here it is invoke the top level maven targets in the freestyle it will come something like this so it's chosen the maven because in our job we have given maven okay here we have given maven so same maven is there and here we are skipping the test cases and the test case we are running over here so we are not changing anything and let's build it and uh, you can see here it is cloning the repository and uh, first it is building then it is going to do the test cases you can see here usually test cases were happening about to your build okay but uh, now we have done first we have skipped test cases we would like to go with the build first then we can execute the test cases so this uh, uh, execution of steps freedom is there in the dsl jobs okay so this is how we can use the dsl jobs but the purpose of dsl job is just to create your own jobs by using another job assume that i have deleted this job still no worry as long as my what i can say seed job is there i don't have any issue again my seed job is going to create it even you would like to create the same job then what i can do rather than uh, what i can say uh telling or giving the procedure how to create a job i will just share this script with you if i share this script with you what you can do you can create your job in your system without any issues so the ultimate goal of dsl uh, jobs is convert a pipeline into a script convert a pipeline into a script but uh, whether you want to use the dsl jobs more or not but to uh, few cases we use the dsl jobs rather than dsl jobs people more tempted to use the pipeline scripts so pipeline scripts also do the similar kind of activity but there is no seed job for that one all these steps whatever steps we just seen right let's take a velaxi velaxi job so 
here we have configured we will directly create Velaxi job but rather than specifying all this manually similar way how we have added DSL job right like that we can add the DSL jobs uh, in the uh, this kind of field with the pipeline there you can write your all the code so that it automatically picks up rather than choosing such kind of options okay but pipeline we are going to discuss in next class so far we have discussed about dsl jobs and any questions over here and it is just self explanatory how to start i just given the hint and we have seen some basic way of creating jobs if you want to go more depth you need to do research and you need to keep creating the jobs again it is depends upon the necessity and there is no much complex why because you just need to know how to define within your particular job that's it what is the name i should use for maven it could be maven for uh, what i can say javascript the name could be something else something like this it will be keep on changing yep uh, sorry here one more test i want to do i told you right okay even DSL jobs are uh, what I can say. Yep, DSL jobs uh, we can pull it from the GitHub as well, right? So now we are going to pull it from the GitHub. So so far we have directly copied over here, but it is not a best practice. But for just understanding, I have given over here. Rather than this one, we need to look for the in the file system. So nothing but go and check in the file system and take that particular. Uh, job and create the job out of that okay i mean to say go and check for the dsl script in this particular location and uh, create another job so my jobs are available under devops directory right this is our devops directory under this one i have a file called jobs okay i have a file called jobs here this is again a maven dsl same and some information is there let it be so what yeah i will explain what i am doing i am cloning the repository over here so this is the repository this is from the jenkins docs itself simple java maven application i am cloning it once i have cloned i am doing the clean package then test i am doing then shell shell nothing but it is going to execute the job it creates the uh, execute shell uh, there it is going to create this one java jar and uh, we are executing our snapshot nothing but whatever package you got it out of this one you are executing it this is how you need to execute a jar file okay java minus jar is a command to execute a jar file once you have executed some output get displayed same output you can see then publishers if you want to list out the information to and uh, send you an email to your email id so you can do that one okay so let it be i am going to run create this job by using the dsl job and i would like to pull it from over here so what i can do in my seed job i need to give this url in my seed job i need to give this url so let's go and uh, yeah, configure seed job is in editor mode so seed jenkins job and go to github and seed job you need to create manually why because uh, this is a what i can say initialization job and uh, my devops.git is a private repository so i'm providing my credentials then i'm looking for the file system nothing but in this repository where is the job in this repository where is the job so if you go to your repository we have the jenkins directory under jenkins directory we have dsl jobs under dsl jobs our file name is jobs so this path you need to specify so till devops it is going to clone after that it should go inside to jenkins then dsl jobs then jobs so copy the path and just make sure that their code there won't be any special character so copy this one and copy it into your job seed job so this is seed job and copy it over here so now what it will do it is going to look for this particular job file i mean to say dsl job in the repository 
and whatever configuration is there if the configuration is correct it is going to create a new jenkins job so now let's build it okay before building let me see what is the name is there not here in my github repository because i might have created that one earlier so maven dsl is there if it is already there in my jenkins server i'm going to delete it okay there is no maven dsl it should create a maven dsl job so seed job seed jenkins job and uh, now let's build it and it should create a maven job it failed let me see what's the issue uh, there is an option when we go to manage jenkins there is the script approval option okay under manage jenkins you mean to say yeah uh, see there is something like script uh, yeah in process script approval okay okay so it is coming from outside approve it let me go and uh, i need to re-execute it then build now okay this time it is successful because we have approved the script so jenkins job name <clears throat> maven dsl this is the previous one so this is our previous one but uh, unreferred this is to added a new one maven dsl if i go to maven dsl now in our jenkins job we should refresh it and uh, if i look for maven dsl you can see here there is a new job created so far it hasn't executed and if i go and if i check for the configuration whatever we have given in the script same thing it should get added but this time we have copied it from the github okay so this is the url we are using and the build maven and testing and also we have added execute shell it is going to execute this job and then these all are the reports it is going to generate okay and send the email notification okay this i just copied from somewhere so now let's build this job maven dsl okay so build is successful and also it is uh, tests and uh, also publishing reports also successful okay so this is how we can able to create or clone the repository from the seed job and you can see here seed job also if I click over here again i will go back to the seed job okay that's all about the dsl jobs and uh, uh, you need to keep practicing to create uh, more jobs if you are able to do that one you will get familiarized more and uh, one more thing is uh, if your job is creating from the seed job don't modify it manually assume that velaxi job so it was uh, created by the seed job right so uh, it is not a best practice to change it from manually over here if i change something manually over here something like description and apply save so now what will happen these changes doesn't get reflect in the seed job right so again whenever you run the seed job whatever changes you have done to your uh, what i can say child job those those doesn't uh, applicable that's the reason it's always best practice that changing the job in the seed itself not in the uh, actual job so that's all for today again see you tomorrow bye guys good morning and good evening guys in previous lecture we have discussed about how can we do build by using the github webhook and also we have discussed about dsl jobs in today's lecture we are going to discuss about how can we create pipeline scripts and what is pipeline scripts and uh, when do we need it okay once this is completed then 
if time permits we are going to discuss about integrating art factory with jenkins first let's start with the pipeline scripts first of all we should understand what is pipeline scripts okay so all right if you see here uh, jenkins pipeline okay first we'll understand what is jenkins pipeline and uh, what does it do so far we are creating any jobs if we want to create any jobs we are going to gui over here over here and we are creating our jobs manually we are creating our jobs manually like new item and we'll start specifying the all the parameters okay either it is a freestyle or a maven project we are choosing that one and we'll continue with that particular uh, job okay but assume that in case you would like to recreate that one in another uh, server then it is difficult and uh, there is no proper tracking as well proper tracking nothing but who created what uh, jobs and also what is the initial job how 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 the job initially working and after some time what changes have have you done all this would be not properly tracked and also it is quite a uh, little bit difficult to manage it okay it is easy to create but managing is difficult if you are creating manually your jobs okay due to some reasons your jenkins server is not able to up again uh, you need to create a new server and you don't know what and all jobs are running in your system and to configure it takes a hell lot of time so to reduce the time which is uh, unnecessary causing for the uh, issues i mean to say who has done what changes and uh, how it was done so this kind of information if you need and also to track it appropriately we are going to use the jenkins pipelines so uh, the simple way of jenkins pipeline is instead of creating jenkins jobs from uh, user interface nothing but gui you would write a file or script to create a job okay you are going to write a jenkins file or a jenkins script we called it so we are going to convert that into a script that script we call it as a scripted jenkins file or scripted file okay so the scripted file is going to help us to create a jenkins job that is what it is going to do now why do we need to use the jenkins pipeline as i said the tracking would be easy and also uh, one more advantage with the scripted pipeline is you can change your build steps uh, build steps nothing but if you take the any freestyle project i'm taking this one as a maven job itself so in maven job if you see the procedure how we are building first we are going to clone the repository once the clone is successful then if we want to pass the parameters we can pass it then build happen then deployment will happen so the process should happen in the same flow but in jenkins pipeline you can change your process flow so first maybe you are going to clone it okay first repository then you are going to build it once build is successful you can deploy it once deployment is successful then again you can clean your repository cleaning nothing but you can add one more gold goal called just to clean for your Ma maven but in this case you cannot able to do that one why because maven it will come as a build steps again if i want to do post build actions there won't be any option but in jenkins scripted pipeline you can able to use any stage we will call this as a stages okay this is a source code management stage nothing but uh, uh, one stage build stage deployment stage testing stage like that we have different stages you can choose or you can change your steps wherever you want to use okay that is the another advantage now as a definition if you see jenkins pipeline is a suite of plugins that supports implementing and integration continuous delivery pipelines into jenkins so it is like a plugins which will help us to add few more fe features to our jenkins server 
okay and the documentation for this one is available over here let's click and open this one or else i have already opened this is the one so let me close either one okay so if you scroll down okay why pipeline the pipeline usage is jenkins is fundamentally an automation engine which supports a number of automation patterns pipeline adds powerful set of automation tools onto jenkins supporting use cases that span for simple continuous continuous integration to comprehensive cd pipelines okay and uh, it is going to do all this stuff and this is uh, one of the example view image can i able to save image just i'm saving it and if i open it yep you can see here this jenkins pipeline so usually developers develop their code and it should go to the production okay in between how you are managing is your skill okay usually devops engineer what does he do developer give the code you should deploy it into the production system which is used by the users in between devops engineer going to manage it efficiently so that your production doesn't get impact at the same time whatever developers give the new code it should get de deployed into the production okay so usually it will go with the workflow like a start first it he will commit into the source code management system once it is uh, what i can say committed into the source code management system check out nothing but we committing it into the source code management then we are going to build it test it and deploy it whenever we, we deploy it will get in get deployed into the production so all these stages are managed efficiently in the jenkins pipeline all these stages are managed efficiently in the jenkins pipeline and again if you see in the each phase there are different uh, sub uh, stages nothing but this is stage called scm checkout this is stage called build this is stage called test this is stage called deploy again in this uh, you have the uh, what i can say again sub stages i can say right now let's go back and uh, uh, just go through with this documentation. This is the official documentation from the Jenkins. What is Jenkins pipeline? Even I have copied my definitions from over here. Okay, and uh, if you sc scroll down, you have examples. Okay, how the Jenkins pipeline you can uh, define. Okay, before going here, le let's go and uh, see our uh, what I can say PPT and creating a jenkins file and uh, committing it into the source code control provides a number of immutable benefits okay so what we do usually we will create a jenkins file list of the steps what which you need to follow and will commit into the source code management so whenever you commit into the source code management nothing but your jenkins pipeline also now part of your source code management you no need to create your jenkins pipeline uh, through the gui whenever you log into the jenkins and you manually yes create a uh, a jenkins job but you will just give the input as a your jenkins pipeline whenever you give your jenkins pipeline it takes the source code management it builds it it tests it it deploys all the steps are defined in your jenkins pipeline so it is going to take it up so what is the benefit of committing into the jenkins pipeline as i discussed automatically creates a pipeline build process for all branches and pull requests so now wh what does it do we are going to have a jenkins pipeline in our uh, github repository so whenever you are going to clone the code you are going to get the pipeline as well and it will have the all the steps how you need to build okay uh, if you if I don't give the Jenkins pipeline you have the code, but you don't know how you need to build you need to write the documentation How you need to use that code, but if you give the Jenkins pipeline It could be quite easy for them to build it next code review iteration on the pipeline nothing but uh, you can review and uh, Who has done what changes on your Jenkins pipeline also? Maybe today you are giving the maven goals as a clean and install or clean and package tomorrow You have changed clean and deploy. Why did you change it to the clean and deploy? 
and who has changed what is the purpose you can understand that and the audit trial for the pipeline yes you can check it out who has done those changes and all the previous versions also will be available so these are the advantages of using jenkins pipeline or scripted uh, jenkins pipeline next pipeline types there are two kind of pipelines okay one is declarative pipeline okay another one is scripted pipeline so declarative pipeline nothing but this is a new feature recently they have introduced before that one we have only scripted pipeline nothing but uh, you need to write the script but to, to write the script you should have the groovy and uh, javascript knowledge otherwise you cannot able to write it it uh, it is in what i can say ruby language okay so if you know the java and ruby then only you can able to write it that is a little bit of difficult scripted pipeline it is not more structured way uh, you should need the scripting language so to make more uh, advantage of using the pipelines jenkins introduced the declarative pipeline so in the declarative pipeline there is a certain procedure and it is easy to manage it you can see here declarative and scripted pipelines are constructed fundamentally different uh, differently declarative pipeline is more recent feature of the jenkins pipeline okay so uh, the declarative pipeline if you use what does it give provides richer syntax um, syntactical syntactical features over scripted pipeline syntax so syntax is something is a structured so which will help us to uh, easily write it and uh, is designed to make writing and reading pipeline code easier so comparatively that it is quite easy okay so scripted pipelines are quite e sorry declarative pipelines are easy comparatively scripted pipeline so we are not developers so we are going with the declarative pipelines itself and there is a certain steps uh, it is already have and you can just follow those steps and uh, according to your build uh, necessity you can change it next this is the syntax of scripted pipeline and the declarative pipeline so in the scripted pipeline it starts with node it starts with node inside that one you need to write your groovy script if you know the groovy script then only you can able to write it but whenever it comes to the declarative pipeline in declarative pipeline it starts with the pipeline and it have the agent any so which will talks about the uh, what i can say on which agent you need to run and stages this is what i am talking right there is a different uh, stages are there there are different stages okay so in declarative pipeline we will have the pipeline and uh, uh, what i can say it will starts with pipeline and in between of the pipeline you need to define all your conditions so it will have the agent agent any nothing but on which agent do you want to run if agent any means either it can build in the master or in slaves as well so nothing but if you do remember we have set up master and slave configuration right so agent it is going to define in uh, either master or slave it can build if you give only specific agent agent name if you specify only this particular job is going to build on that particular agent next to stages as we discussed there are different stages and uh, you can specify the stages and this is what i can say it can be variable anything you can give any name but in the stage you need to define your steps what do you want to do within the stages okay so this is how you can write it so these are the syntaxes for the uh, scripted and declarative but we are going to deal with the declarative now let's see a simple syntax of a declarative pipeline so this is one of the declarative pipeline and if you scroll down you have the scripted pipeline okay in the scripted pipeline you have the node build test deploy all these steps okay so in the scripted pipeline you can see here pipeline it is declarative sorry it is declarative pipeline pipeline agent any stages and stage build okay in the build stage what do you want to do in the test stage what do you want to do in the deployment stage what do you want to do so these you need to define within the uh, script okay i am going to take the same script for now and will convert it into the uh, our declarative pipeline script our declarative pipeline script let's open 
new file so pipeline agent any i can able to build any agent but if you want to build only uh, what i can say maven agent we have already created maven agent right there you can specify it that sorry that particular server information you can specify it and stage build okay under build stage you need to specify the steps okay let's give the simple step as a echo i am giving this is build stage okay so what does it do whenever you execute this stage it is going to execute this command it is going to execute this command and whatever you could see over here same thing is get displayed so just i'm changing it to our stage what do you want to do on each stage in the each stage we have steps within the steps you need to give maybe this is build stage right you can give the maven okay rather than this one maven you can give and you can specify the what do you want to do with the maven we are going to check it out that okay in the test phase again you can give the maven goal as a test in the deployment phase you can give the where do you want to deploy right so let's copy this one and we need to create a pipeline script okay so what i can do i can commit this change sorry i can create this as a jenkins file and commit in our repository github repository and from there you can call it or else you can directly define it uh, in your uh, job itself first initially uh, how we have done in yesterday in dsl job also first we have uh, used uh, script directly within the job then we have created a file and we have used it right same thing we are going to do now so let me log into my jenkins i am going to create a new job pipeline test job okay pipeline test job and uh, yeah by the way before creating your pipeline uh, scripts you need to install one more plugin called pipeline plugin so go to manage jenkins and uh, search for manage plugins sorry select to manage plugins and available here you need to search for your pipeline plugin pipeline plugin i have already installed so you cannot able to see that under available tab you can see that in the installed tab okay so pipe sorry pipeline okay so if you see there is no uh, pipeline plugin and pipeline multi branch with the defaults so multiple jobs it is going to run parallelly and uh, pipeline github notify step so plugin that provides the github status notification step like like this uh, different features it is going to uh, give and if i go and search over here pipeline where we have pipeline i think so docker pipeline is installed yep yeah. You can see here pipeline this is the pipeline uh, we have installed so that is the reason we could see the uninstall and also i have installed pipeline maven integration plugin nothing but to build a maven job i have uh, created a pipeline maven integration plugin otherwise it is going to throw an error while we are building maven pipeline okay apart from this you can see here pipeline basics pipeline build these all are the dependency plugins that is the reason you cannot see uninstall option okay so this we have installed you need to install pipeline and pipeline maven plugin these two plugins you should install in your uh, in your jenkins server to manage with the plugin sorry pipeline scripts now let's go and uh, new job my pipeline pipe test job okay pipeline test job i am choosing this time we don't choose either freestyle or maven project we should choose the pipeline because this job type is pipeline you need to select it and okay next we need to scroll down 
and if you are cloning it from the github repository you need to choose from which github you are going to clone it okay under what i can say uh, here or else here itself we are going to give it pipeline script and pipeline script from SEM. If you choose pipeline script from SEM, you need to give the GitHub URL. But we are not cloning it from the SEM. So we are just going to write the pipeline script and this has given the box to write your code. And also they have given some examples. You can see here, hello world. So it is going to tell you that how you need to write a simple hello world uh, pipeline job. You can see here pipeline and agent any steps under sorry stages under stage we have a stage called hello and uh, steps you can specify the each step okay what do you want to do whatever we have done similar way we are doing under stages we have stage okay so let's apply this one first we'll build the hello world test so once i have applied and save this job got created this uh, whenever I execute this particular job. It is going to give the hello world Okay, it's like if initially we have cre created the execute shell command, right? Same thing it is going to do build now And uh, you can see the information stage view nothing but how many stages are there and how much time does it take and whether it is successful or failure if it is comes as a green it is successful if it is comes as a red it is uh, failed so it has been successful and if i see build output you can see here it is successful and uh, just to go through with the what it has done you can see here stage hello world hello so this is the stage it executed in this stage it's just displayed hello world because we have given the echo all right so this is how it is executed and go back we'll modify with our script now configure and what is our script i think it is here let's copy this script and uh, okay so pipeline stage any and stages we are giving the uh, stage build and steps okay under stage build we are giving that okay it is a build stage sorry it is test stage and it is deploy stage okay it is deploy stage okay this you can give whatever naming convention you want to give okay it doesn't mean that it should be same what you are doing you can specify over here apply and save okay now let's build it build is successful and uh, let's go and check it out and before checking out you can see here build stage now it ran with the three stages that is build test and uh, deploy each one how much time it took and if you click on this one also you can see the logs okay this stage is a build stage there is no problem with this one and this one also successful and this one also successful okay and if you want to see the detailed logs you can go over here and you can check it out okay so first stage is this is a build stage second stage is this is test stage third stage is this is deployment stage and pipeline stages also it is going to display and overall this job is successful okay so this is how you can define multiple steps in your job but this is just we are giving echo rather than running actual commands okay if you want to clone uh, what i can say uh, your github repository you need to specify rather than build you can give the uh, cloning repository okay and you can uh, or else uh, taking the github uh, scm talking with github scm and you can give the url of your uh, github server it is going to do here you can give the uh, testing then you can just execute the maven test uh, case then you can execute the maven build stage like that you can do okay now I have created few jobs in our github repository and you can see here under devops jenkins we have pipeline templates we can go with one by one okay first one is first pipeline okay it is uh, similar to what we just built you can see here same thing we are just displaying hello world and just to understand how the syntax does work okay 
stages we have under stages we have stage under stage we have steps this is the next one okay next we are going to see the second build that is multi multi pipeline steps okay so here what we will do usually in previous example we have stages under stages we have stage under stage we have steps right so this is the uh, way we have executed and here you can see here we are executing ssh within that again we are going going to do the two executions first one is we are executing the script okay either directly we can give or else we can give the sh sh nothing but uh, script okay execute script same thing and the next one is again we are going to do the one more script nothing but two executions we are doing okay that way we that's why we will call it as a multi steps so two steps we are doing over here and let's copy this one and uh, we can update our jenkins job to take up this particular one so configure control a control v apply and save now if i build now it is going to execute the whatever we have done and this is the previous one and this is the latest one and the latest one we have only build right test and deploy stage is not there but in previous build it was there so it is just showing with the previous one so this is the current job if i open it now you can see whatever we have given first uh, it is going to give the echo my first job and uh, same thing it is displaying and the second one is same thing and also ls minus lah we have done and uh, wherever our job is running in the current location it is going to display and we'll see what is there so current location nothing but in the workspace there is a pipeline test job has been created a directory called pipeline test job and in that directory nothing is there i have logged into my jenkins server so just to refresh it and clear the screen let me become a root user and uh, if i go to this particular location you can see here nothing is there ls minus la h if i give okay so whatever output you could see same output you are going to see over here okay this is how you can run multiple jobs sorry multiple steps in a single job next we are going to take another example but this time we are going to take this example from the jenkins uh, sorry github repository itself rather than we are uh, uh, what i can say yep rather than creating directly over there okay so next job is retry retry job nothing but whenever the build is failed okay whenever the build in case failed sorry not build i can say your particular step is failed then it is going to retry your job it is going to retry your job it's like something first initially uh, the git clone failed so it could not able to clone the repository if it is failed try it one more time try it one more time so like that you can retry your jenkins uh, sorry yeah your step by using the retry so how many numbers you have given those many times it is going to retry and if you see the command ssh i am not going to work okay i am not going to work this is the just i am giving it as a command not echo i am giving i am not giving any echo i am just giving this as a command and there is no command with this one right so it is going to fail it if i give working command in the first try itself it is going to work and it won't retry it but it, this is not going to work because it is not a command so it to try to execute this as a command it doesn't work it doesn't work so it is going to retry three times so rather than i'm copying it i'm going to take this path and we'll give this path in our github repository okay so just let me take this path so before taking this path i need to take up this url as well right github url so take the github url and go to jenkins and configure and this time rather than pipeline script we are going to choose the uh, pipeline script from scm now which scm 
we have only git plugin installed so it recognize only git and the url of your git and this is the url and now it is a public yesterday i made it as a public so no credentials are required and from master branch you need and uh, you can see here script path in which location you have jenkins file by default we name it as a jenkins file but for now we are going to take it as a whatever name we have given because in usually it will have single file in the repository that is the reason we will specify the jenkins file and also if it is in the root directory root directory nothing but over here if you see the jenkins file it is going to just uh, if you give over here itself sorry if you go give over here itself like a jenkins file earlier like this if you give it you will take up but if it is inside to uh, some folders you need to give the appropriate path now i am giving retry and apply save and uh, build now it is going to fail because it tries three times and each time it is not able to build successfully because that is not a successful command you can see here it's failed and if i go here you can see here the stage has been first what it do uh, three times it has executed you can see here it is trying to do i'm not going to work first time so command not found it is thinking as a i as a command because there is a space remaining all it takes as a argument i not found and retrying okay again it tried retrying again it tried so three times it retried still it could not able to execute it successfully whenever it failed it give the non zero result as a non zero okay non zero means it is a fail so it means that your script is not successful okay so this is how we can use the retry parameter there are various parameters are there depends upon what do you need you need to use that one but just for easy to understand that's the reason i have taken retry next again we are going to our jenkins and pipelines okay now if you see the timeout okay timeout nothing but uh, what will happen it will wait for uh, whatever time you have given within the time if the job is not successful it is going to give the timeout okay so in this case what we are doing we are retrying three times nothing but in this particular step again this is multi step multi step nothing but we are executing multiple uh, uh, commands in this one first one is sh echo world it is a fine so first time itself it is going to successful okay next to second command whenever it is executing timeout okay we are saying that timeout should happen within three seconds timeout should happen within three seconds and uh, yeah units nothing but seconds this is how you need to define timeout okay time is three units is seconds nothing but here within three minutes uh, what i can say it should say that timeout but uh, it is sleeping for five minutes sorry five seconds so let me explain one more time what you are doing is you are saying that within three minutes you need to say that timeout okay less than three minutes if it is uh, this job is executed then it will go to the retry if within less than five minutes it sorry less than three seconds it is not executed it should uh, what i can say failed okay it should fail and it it could not able to go to the retry okay so let's execute this one and we'll see the output how does it work so it is going to it is it could not able to retry it because you are giving timeout as a three and sleep for five and i can give the directly file name that is zero four timeout okay just you need to change it over here because our job is already there and build now this is also going to fail i think or unstable yes seems it is unstable and uh, you can see here what will happen first one is executed hello world so timeout nothing but within three seconds if you go and execute your retry job that's fine but if it is taking more than three seconds you need to cancel your job okay time out nothing but don't execute this job if it is taking more than three seconds 
okay that is the instruction we have given but it is taking five seconds to uh, what i can say complete the task so then it is saying that canceling the next steps due to the timeout because you have specified that within three seconds if it is uh, uh, completed then retry it otherwise you don't do uh, where we can use the timeout assume that your build is taking around uh, uh, what i can say two minutes okay if it is taking more than two minutes you can specify the timeout that okay if the build timeout uh, is two minutes then only let it execute otherwise you can just cancel the build something like that you can define in your jobs so now it has been cancelled that's the reason you can see the different color of this one it is job is aborted okay this is failed and this is successful that's how retry will work next we'll go with the environment variables okay this is in important parameter environment variables so if you see here uh, if you do remember we we have given the environment variables while executing our job right like a parameters okay if you want to give the similar kind of parameters you can uh, what i can say use the environment variable and these are the variables we are directly using the variables name is ar last name is shankar and if you see here in the stage build stage we are just calling it as a, a uh, echo dollar name and a dollar last name because name is this one and the last name is this one you just need to take this one and update your jenkins job configuration and apply and save and build now this time it should be successful and uh, where is our syntax yes you can see here in the build stage only we are executing and build stage and if you see here it is successful and the output is echo ar shankar okay just it replaced with the our variable names okay like that we have few other maybe what i can say credentials if you would like to pass okay there is a environment variables and secret you can test it out and the next thing is uh, post actions nothing but initially test you are doing and uh, after test you you have the post post nothing but once your stage is completed okay your stage is completed in the post actions what do you want to do post actions nothing but if it is successful if it is successful your build is successful display this one your build is failed display this one your build is unstable unstable nothing but aborted or uh, the jenkins could not able to understand what is the case then aborted will come okay execute this one always nothing but execute always this one okay this is how you can define uh, let's uh, what i can say execute this one quickly or else i am going to take uh, yeah, i will take this one because we need to modify and we will see the different cases so just going over here and uh, i'm going to update the configuration and this time i'm going to copy the declarative pipeline so copy it now what will happen if you see the above case stage step echo fail exit one exit one nothing but it is a in between of execution sorry aborted apply save and build now and we'll see it has been failed and whenever it is failed we have given the what i can say uh, failed condition right so you can see here always get executed always get executed nothing but uh, where it is yes always get executed means if you have you have given post as a always whatever you have specified under always it is going to execute all the time and uh, it is skipped success and unstable because build is failed and it's executed only this one you can see here i will only execute if this fails okay now what we do we will make it as a success configure and uh, i just remove the exit one exit one what does it do it is going to abort your change uh, in between so now what will happen echo fail it is going to just display this one and displaying this one doesn't uh, uh, is not a fail if this command is successfully displayed this one it means success 
so now you can see here build now <clears throat> and it is successful and if i open it you can see here echo fail yes it's just to display the fail and i always get executed and also i will only execute it if this is successful and if i want to make unstable like awarded we can do right that particular job i will take it so where is this timeout one right yes timeout one so i'm taking this one and we'll replace the our jenkins job before doing that one let me okay under stage i am going to copy i don't want to stage deploy right so stage instead of test i'm going to give the deploy this one this one is closed here right yeah because we need to make sure that syntax are fine apply and we'll see what will happen i didn't try hopefully i'm saying that unstable should get executed okay it given the failed one okay so there is a syntax error configure so this one is closed over here this one is closed here this one is closed then i think we need to close the stage as well then we need to close one more thing stage and stages so we are we have closed everything so this closed over here this is closed over here this is closed over here yeah apply save build now it should go to unstable and yes it is unstable hello timeout this is okay this is the one and i will always executed and the timeout has been taken okay return okay it is aborted so it could not able to uh, execute the unstable also because it should be unstable rather than aborted so unstable nothing but few uh, builds are successful and few builds are failed then it will go to the uh, unstable one but this is a different situation aborted so it could not able to execute the unstable okay so these are the examples now let's go and create a pipeline actual one that is to uh, set up our sorry build our maven job build our maven job so i have already created one and uh, updated over here just run through with this one how we are going to do the build okay so you can see here uh, what i can say pipeline agent any stage okay you can give the stage anything compile stage we are giving the compile stage nothing but we are going to compile in this one uh, steps with maven okay with maven and maven so what is the what is the maven value you have given if you do remember we have get, given the name as a maven installation as a maven yesterday we have seen right even in our dsl jobs also we need it okay so we are giving it as a maven and ssh maven clean compile nothing but we are cleaning it and compiling in this particular step in this particular step in next step we are doing the what i can say uh, in next step we are doing the build sorry test because sorry because this is a testing stage so this is just testing stage we are testing it out next one is deployment stage deployment nothing but this code get deployed into the art factory uh, sorry repository but in our case we are not using the repository so i don't think so deploy does work uh, because it will try to deploy into the some maven repository and it won't it may or may not work let's try this one okay but to try this one what you need to do is you should have the you should have code right and which code should i need to do 
that's the reason you need to copy this one into your jing what i can say uh github repository this kind of this kind of script you cannot give directly in the declarative pipeline okay where i can say here you cannot give if you give over here you need to clone the your repository you need to give your github project and project url you should provide okay instead of that one you can directly specify over here take the code and build it take the code and build it by using the jenkins pipeline so now what we do we are going to take the another yeah this one we can take yeah i have already created a java file over here sorry jenkins file over here yeah same thing you can see here so first we are doing clean compile and clean test and install i am doing okay install i am doing let's take this repository and uh, we'll execute it and we'll see what will happen so copy it and uh, url git and uh, this is the url and it doesn't require any credentials and it is from master branch and our root path root path nothing but over here here we have a file called jenkins file yep same name we have given over here apply and save it okay so we have updated our build now let's build it and we'll see what will happen it's failed by unable to find build pipeline configure is there any typo or space uh shankar i guess the j of jenkins file is uh, in small letter in the oh, github yeah. j apply and save it now let's build it okay it's building so check out from scm nothing but from the uh, whether it is pulling from your github or not it is successful then compilation stays it is also successful it took five seconds now it is testing phase it is also completed within six seconds okay then deployment okay everything is successful and if i go to the logs okay maven test it is doing so test test stage is completed then build stage and uh, if i go next stage you can see the logs okay so test is completed and build is completed okay and if i go to the same output over here okay it started by so and so so and so and no credentials and uh, what i can say it is building with the maven so using maven installation i'm using maven as a maven installation quickly i will show you where i have defined my maven so manage jenkins and global tool configuration here we have defined maven installation as a maven so whatever name you have given over here same name you should use in your pipeline nothing but uh, over here so here you need to give the same name all right so this is how you can build your uh, maven jobs by using sorry yes this is how you can build your maven jobs by using the scripted pipeline okay now we can add few more steps nothing but either you want to pass the parameters or some something else all this stuff you can pass to your jenkins pipeline and the jenkins pipeline syntax is available over here and pipeline syntax it is declarative pipeline so how you need to use what and all things you need assume that i want to pass the parameters or uh, okay so you can just search for the parameters in the declarative pipeline you can see here parameters how you can specify string name of the parameter okay so this is how you can specify let's uh, add this one also and it will get to add add as a parameters okay just we can copy this one and it should be outside of your build okay now okay i have executing sorry i'm executing as a jenkins file i need to update my jenkins file but rather than updating i will just go it 
and update the configuration for other job so i will copy other job rather than this one so let's take something like uh, first job itself quickly we are going to update our stuff so pipeline script and uh, we want to define the parameters so parameters you need to define all the parameters are environments everything you need to define over here so i'm just copying this parameters one and you can see here string name deploy env default value is string description you can give test parameter okay if you want to use it somewhere you can use it uh, what i can say i can just give the in the test step echo display deploy env okay something like this you can do okay similar way you can add a few other stuffs as well uh, like uh, environment or credentials build now so build is successful and you can see here okay why okay okay deploy env you need to keep it in the double quotes if you are using variable you need to keep it in the double quotes not in a single quote okay so otherwise it treat it as a uh, just uh, text apply save and build now yep build with parameters now and uh, let it be the string itself because we are giving the same value and it is going to display the same thing earlier we didn't build it i think yeah we built it 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 could not able to recognize it you can see here display string okay sorry staging this is the what we have given right to display staging and uh, what i can say deploying everything has displayed as it is so this is how you can add and uh, apart from this uh, anything i can test it out let me go what and all options are there okay so triggers when do you want to trigger like uh, uh, scm okay you can add it add it to that scm and uh, what i can say stages we have done agent post nothing but after build we have checked stages steps and uh, environment variables options okay if you want to give the options uh, we can use this one triggers will do so when do you want to execute this job you can see here stays and uh, triggers when do you want to trigger you need to give the cron job this will be give the uh, what i can say scheduled triggering and uh, what do you want to trigger okay that information you can give you can just add this one to our job now so triggers i would like to give all stars okay if it is cloning it will make sense otherwise it doesn't make sense at all why because we are not building any code uh, from the scm so you could not able to see the any uh, what i can say advantage out of this but the build will happen okay so like this you have the sorry you have the all the options over here i'm going to share this one you just experiment with the different different options okay which you want to do and input output any other we can test yeah when condition so when condition nothing but you can specify that when you want to build this one uh, maybe if build is successful then only go to the next step if build is failed about from there itself okay that you can give in the when condition i'm going to show you how can we deploy using the jenkins pipeline in the later classes but for now just get it uh, habituated how the pipelines does work okay fine then again meet you on friday good morning guys and good evening in previous lecture we have discussed about pipeline scripts in today's lecture we are going to see 
integrating artifactory with jenkins this topic we already discussed uh, but uh, due to some technical issues we could not able to continue further so we are doing it today and also executing upstream and downstream jobs i thought to include this as well but uh, we are going to use effectively these in upcoming classes right first we'll see integrating artifactory with jenkins and before doing that one i have a quick update uh, my github repository I have, name has been changed to okay rowdy it's like a rowdy okay so just thought that uh, it could be unique name uh, to hide my identity there is few reasons why i am using it okay this is the url rather than arsr319 uh, from now onwards you can uh, use this one and uh, arsr319 is no, no more going to work if you search for that one okay why because apart from you guys few other guys are also watching these recording videos due to that i just uh, highlight this one okay next thing is uh, i have my jfrog artifactory server and jenkins server so i just bring up my jenkins server and i have logged into my jenkins server and the next thing is jfrog artifactory system i am going to log in and will so i am logging into my server okay so my devops key and username ec2 minus user so this is my artifactory server and uh, i don't think so i have updated host name for this one that's okay va slash ctc host name i'm just going to change it as a artifactory server host name sorry yeah i need to just give host name cat slash ctc host name okay so i just renamed my host name to artifactory server and in this one we have installed artifactory under opt directory here we have artifactory and start your artifactory server from the bin directory so artifactory dot start sh start okay this is the command we can use to stop we can use artifactory sh dot sorry sh stop also or else just giving artifactory sh also starts your service but let's use the start parameter and we'll try to access it from the browser and it runs on port number 8081 okay it's still getting ready okay my username is admin and password is admin at 123 i have configured a new application on my artifactory that's the reason it is showing this one but anyway quickly we'll configure our system so i don't want to change proxy skip this one and the repository we are creating a fresh repository so maven and create a repository and this is uh, uh, what i can say open source one i'm going to create a video for this one so that you can able to understand earlier we were using the licensed one but this is the open source one okay and uh, whenever you choose maven it is going to create five repositories right okay lib snapshot local lib release local and also lib snapshot and lib release and this is json is a central virtual repository and finish now it creates the five repositories those are maven repositories you can see here m yeah, means maven repository okay so now we are going to use these repositories to store our uh, what i can say artifactories sorry artifacts so far in local we don't have any artifacts even in release also we don't have anything now we need to integrate our J artifactory server with jenkins and we should in uh, copy our artifacts over here for that one we are going to create a jobs over here so these are earlier created jobs let me quickly delete it
okay i have deleted artifact projects so now what i am going to do is i am going to create a new job but before creating new job we should install artifact repository sorry artifact artifact plugin in our system if you do remember we have already installed artifact plugin but quickly i will show you how to install go to maven plugins under manage jenkins sorry manage plugins and go to available section then search for artifactory so artifactory we need to search but already we have installed this artifactory plugin that's the reason you could not able to see if you go and check in the installed tab you can see the artifactory plugin okay so artifactory plugin has been installed once artifactory plugin has been installed we need to again go to manage jenkins we need to configure credentials we should configure credentials for that one go to configure system under configure system we need to give the git uh, artifactory url and username and password and uh, if our jenkins server can able to talk with our artifactory server it means that it can able to store the data so if you scroll down you can see here artifactory and we have already given a previous time let me delete it and create it from fresh so this is how it looks like if you don't configure artifactory so i'm adding artifactory server and you can give name what do you want to call i can give artifactory server okay so same name we are going to see whenever we are uh, adding to our job and the url of our artifactory server so this is the url of our artifactory server and we should provide this url name then we should provide the credentials we are using the default credentials admin credentials or else we can create separate users you can see here security users we can create separate users to manage our artifactory i am going to create a new user jenkins user i am giving okay let it be more relevant and uh, let let him get a admin privileges and password is jenkins at 123 okay jenkins at 123 i am giving here just will give jenkins and retype the password jenkins at 123 okay so we have given the password and uh, okay email address we should provide i'm just giving my email id and save it that's it so we have created a new user called jenkins and i am going to use the same username in my jenkins server so jenkins jenkins at 123 once you have given your credentials test the connection if it could able to communicate properly uh, it should able to say that what is the version of artifactory you have installed sorry after this you need to give the artifactory as well that is the full url you should give and test the connection now and you can see here found artifactory version 6.19.1 okay but latest one is 7.4 is there but this is the stable version that's the reason i have used this and once the test is successful it means that your jenkins server can able to communicate with artifactory server apply and save all right so now what we have done is we just bring up our artifactory server and we integrated our artifactory server with our jenkins now whenever we create any new job and if we run whatever artifactory we are creating that artifactory we can store in the artifactory server so let's create new job job name i am giving artifactory project one i am giving anyway we have deleted this one so artifactory project one and either we can choose freestyle project or maven project so let's choose freestyle project first and then we'll go with the maven project so freestyle project okay and uh, we need to give the github repository this is where you need to provide github repository i'm going to give my uh, hello test uh, test hello yep test hello project i'm going to give even web app 
project also we can give let's give web app project taking the url and provide web app project over here and it is a private repository so we must provide credentials once this is done next thing is you can see here under build environment we need to choose the maven 3 artifact integration nothing but whatever build outcomes it comes it it generates store under artifact server okay that is the intention of this one so we are choosing this option whenever we choose this option whatever artifact server is there it get highlighted if you have multiple artifact servers sometimes okay sometimes people use multiple artifact artifact servers so you will uh, what i can say get those artifact servers and the refresh repositories whenever you refresh it identifies what and all repositories are available in, for the maven project for maven project whatever local is there release local and snapshot local are there right so for release you can store over here for snapshot you can use the snapshot local so target snapshot so you should choose a right one okay you should not choose for snapshots as a release for release as a snapshot it doesn't work so we want to store it over here and then build because this is a maven project but we are building with the freestyle so we can choose the over here invoke top level maven targets okay so invoke top level maven project projects you need to choose in case if you are building maven project with the uh, freestyle project and you need to choose what is the maven you are using so our maven name has given as a maven itself and goals clean install okay even we can do the deploy but let's try with the clean install for now yep even deploy also we can do so apply and save so now what we are doing we have build we are building our uh, maven project and we want to store artifact into the artifact server let's build now so it's building at this moment okay it's saying that uh, default deploy has been failed i don't think so i can use uh, uh, deploy over here because deploy doesn't work as per my knowledge okay we should give install only okay so we are going to use install apply save and build now so this is building our job and it is successful and uh, whether it's copied into our art factory or not snapshot no it hasn't copied the problem here is whenever we are using freestyle project we need to update our palm.xml to choose this repository we need to update our palm.xml as well as the uh, settings.xml if you do remember whenever we are doing maven we were doing that one right so we should update that information then only it is going to work for freestyle project but for the maven project it is going to work without updating any palm.xml so let's create one more project uh, that is art factory project to do and uh, we'll create the similar project and then we'll check it out but for art factory one once so we have created that one and we tested that we'll come back here and we'll do that okay so again i'm going back and a new item this time i'm creating artifactory project 2 this is the name i'm using and this is maven project and okay and then git url i'm using the same url which we have copied and then credentials next this is a maven project okay first we need to do the build clean install once it is installed our build happens post build actions nothing but once build is completed we need to store this into the artifact you can see here deploy artifacts to artifact so this option we need to choose and we just need to refresh it to find out our repositories this is release yes it's selected release this is snapshot and uh, deploy maven artifacts yes 
I want to deploy it and apply and save. So here we are creating Maven project and let's build now. Okay, so build is successful and you can see here deploying artifacts onto our GitHub sorry artifactory server. Okay, so if I go here and if I refresh it now and uh, and this is a snapshot, right? So you can see here there is a Velaxi web app has been created and uh, snapshot 1.0 snapshot. Where can I find this name? It is under our palm.xml. If I open our palm.xml, whatever name you have given, you can able to see the snapshot name. So this is how we can deploy our artifacts onto the system. Okay. So now we'll do a little bit of modification. Why? Because at this moment, what it is doing, whatever uh, packages it requires to build this project. Okay, whatever packages it requires to build this project, it is pulling from the M2 uh, repository. Nothing but directly it is going to internet and pulling the repositories. But if you want to get it from the where I can say it is already built a couple of times, so that's the reason it is not able to pull any additional repositories because code not yet updated. So that's the reason. But uh, if uh, it is pulling need any third party libraries at this moment it is going to pull it from the default maven repository okay but i don't want to use the my uh, maven to pull the third party libraries i want to use my artifactory server okay in that case we need to modify our jenkins job little bit that is configure so here we have one more option if you scroll down so resolve artifactory from the artifacts from the artifactory so what what does it mean is uh, whenever it requires any artifacts i mean to say third party libraries or any other artifacts it needs you can go and check it in this server rather than going to default public maven repository so that is the meaning of this one and you just refresh and you need to choose the okay lib release this is the what i can say remote repository and snapshot so we need to choose the remote servers so which means uh, uh, sorry remote repositories which means uh, our libraries and uh, third party repo uh, sorry third party libraries and artifacts are stored over here so it pulls from here if it is need any third party libraries and build it and it stores over here that is how we can do so apply save and build now so now what will happen it is going to pull the all the dependencies from the artifactory server rather than uh, what I can say maven a uh, default uh, repository and it stores the outcome of the artifact into our artifactory server so this is how we can do and if you don't want to use this one okay I mean to say you don't want to specify explicitly for your job you want to specify yeah here you want to specify or it should take by default uh, whenever it is running the job then what we can do we can update our palm.xml uh, by saying that yeah we can update our palm.xml by saying that where it can resolve the uh, required dependencies i mean to say in the settings.xml we need to update that is the reason uh, even for our uh, uh, freestyle project also it's not working okay so now i want to make make work my freestyle project right because in freestyle project it is throwing an error whenever i'm using deploy okay so why it is throwing error why whenever we use deploy whenever it want to use the deploy it should have the artifactory should be updated in the palm.xml but we haven't updated anything in the palm.xml that's the reason it is throwing error now quickly what we do we are going to update our palm.xml with the repository and also settings.xml with the credentials then only it works so first we'll update the palm.xml and we'll execute it then we'll update the settings.xml okay both we can do let's log into our jenkins server now because palm.xml uh, i'm going to do it from our Linux system. I mean to say Jenkins system and I will push it into our repository 
so i'm connecting over here and the devops project and ac2 minus user okay this is my jenkins server i'm becoming a root just i'm going to clone my code i can edit my code anywhere okay already i have code but let me remove it and uh, nothing is there let's clone my code git clone our repository name so web app project clone this and i should provide my credentials because uh, i uh, my uh, what i can say repository doesn't know whether i'm a authenticated person or not so my username is ravd sorry there is a typo okay let me give email itself okay so i could able to clone it now go inside to this one and va palm.xml okay i need to edit palm.xml and uh, if you do remember we have done this one whenever we are doing our maven classes so we need to give the uh, what i can say the repository information for that we just need to go here okay set me up and uh, here we need to choose our lib local and it generates the distribution management this we need to copy okay this we need to copy and also similar way we need to sorry not for this one yeah lib release local and also lib snapshot local so for these two we need to generate it we are just telling that where we need to store and remove this one because everything should be in the distribution management okay this is snapshot repository and this is the release management repository we need to update our palm.xml with this information okay now yeah my server right so let's remove the all this stuff we don't need it but uh, distribution management we are doing plugins for deployment okay so this is the one we want to do and apply okay now git status git add dot git status git push origin master not oh sorry yeah git commit minus m updated form dot xml with repo art factory info okay git push origin master okay now we should provide our credentials arsr319 at gmail.com okay so we have updated our file okay now if i go and refresh it form.xml i could able to see that our repository information has been updated now let's run our jenkins job now so project one let's build now now it is going to take the latest uh, repository information and it tried to build it so now build is successful but if i go and check it out it is not yet yet deployed and uh, it is trying to get it store the snapshot under over here but according to our expectation it should deploy on art factory so we just need to add deploy otherwise it won't get effect so apply and save <clears throat> build now it is going to fail because uh, uh, it is uh, it doesn't have the proper credentials to do this one you can see here gold so and so is not yet done now what we need to do is you can see here it is trying to downloading from so and so server whatever required uh, snapshots are there but it is not working now what we need to do is we need to update our server.xml if you do remember 
but this time we are not updating the m2 server.xml if you go your maven so opt maven is installed over here right so maven under maven we have conf under conf we have settings.xml okay so settings.xml is there in this file we should update our servers information and if i see some content is there but all are commented out so in xml this indicates the comment so we are generating the settings.xml from our artifactory so generate maven setup and generate settings.xml and uh, copy this file copy this snippet i mean to say clear the screen cat greater than settings.xml nothing but overwrite all the data with the latest data that is the meaning of this command and uh, just paste the data whatever you have copied Control c and one last thing we should do settings.xml we need to provide credentials of our artifactory server so what we are doing is username uh, jenkins and password jenkins at one two three same thing we need to provide under here as well now we have updated all the credentials now let's run our jenkins job this time it should be successful why because whenever we run it will try to maven could able to try to pull the artifacts from over here so it could able to do that one and uh, after that it is going to store in the same system build now yes this time it is successful you can see here uh, whatever uh, snapshots downloading means if it requires any metadata it is downloading from the artifactory server itself okay whatever packages are needed and uploading snapshots so snapshots it's also uploading onto the uh, artifactory server and if i go and check it out we should have multiple versions over here not multiple versions same form.xml right so we can see the same version but multiple times you can see the where file has been created and if i check this one this is the timestamp it has okay maven project 1.0 2020 05 29 under the timestamp this is another timestamp this is uh, another sorry this one and this one and this one so three times we ran and these are the what i can say artifactory uh, versions now uh, I, we want to release it release nothing but assume that we our code is fine and uh, uh, i want to deploy it onto the server so usually deployments will happen from the release branch not from the snapshot branch so now what we can do we are going to update our uh, what is um, sorry we are going to update our palm.xml in the jenkins server that instead of snapshot we are going to change it as a release whenever we change it as a release let's go to home directory ls whenever we change it to release it is going to store under release branch so now palm.xml i am updating so here instead of snapshot i am going to make it as a okay this snapshot keyword is missing in the version then it treats it as a release i can name it as a 2.0 okay so the keyword is missing at this moment now what does it thinks is uh, it is not a snapshot anymore and uh, it it recognize it as a release and uh, git add dot git commit minus m replaced 1.0 snapshot with 2.0 means 2.0 version we are releasing now git push origin master okay i have uh, committed my changes and let's run our job now okay project one only i'm running build now and this time instead of it is going to the snapshot branch it should go to the release branch you can see here downloading and upload central 
and uh, you can see here lib release local sorry not this one metadata these all are metadata yeah var file you can see here earlier it was really updated in the lib uh, snapshot local i will show you the previous job as well so five right previous one you if you see downloading snapshot uploading where file where where yeah this is where file and you can see here where it was uploading it is uploading onto the lips snapshot local but now we have changed in our palm.xml it is not a snapshot and it is a release that's the reason this is updating under the release branch and if i go and check it out earlier under release branch nothing was there if i refresh this time this time we are going to see the 2.0 so if you go release you can see here and 2.0 nothing but it is the release and it won't you don't see this one in the uh, snapshot because it is not a snapshot anymore it is a release and from here we are going to take this one and we'll deploy into the target system that's how it works okay so this is how we can configure our artifactory and how we are taking this artifact and deploying whenever we go to the deployment uh, i mean to say continuous deployment or uh, continuous delivery there we are going to talk about for now we are more concentrating on the continuous integration nothing but building the code and keeping our artifact somewhere just make it ready for the deployment purpose that is the only thing we are dealing at this moment once we have completed uh, Docker and Kubernetes, then we are going to integrate the deployment part with this one, right? Any questions about this? So next thing what we are doing is upstream and downstream jobs. Okay, let's uh, uh, enhance the, the only this project itself. Okay, so let's take the Maven 2 project. What we are going to do is we will split into two jobs. In one job, I will do only build. In another job i will do the deployment i mean to say if the build is successful then uh, next job should run and whatever outcome it is giving that job should get deployed into the art factory that job it should deploy into the art factory that is the intention of executing this job okay um, can i able to test it no i cannot test it because ca job i cannot able to split but anyway we'll we'll take another example so what do we do we are going to take uh, two jobs and uh, first i will execute one job if that job is successful i want to execute another job that is the intention okay if first job is successful then i want to execute second job so that is what we call it as a upstream and downstream jobs so let's create a job over here okay test dependency job i am giving and let it be freestyle because it is for testing purpose okay and here we will just execute a shell we will just execute a shell build and execute shell echo i am job one okay just i'm saying that i'm job one apply and save let's create one more job okay i'm creating one more job and this time test job sorry test to deployment job two job to i'm giving and uh, I i'm going to copy it from the test deployment job one so whatever name you give over here whatever configuration is there in this particular job same configuration get copies into the this job it's just like a copying the existing job configuration to the new job that is the meaning so same thing we are getting but just we will change it as a job to okay we are changing it as a job to apply save so now we have two jobs that is test to dependency job one test to dependency job two my intention is whenever test to dependency job one runs i would like to run the test to dependency job two as well okay for that what we can do is let's go to test to dependency job one 
okay and if i execute it and i will open the test dependency job 2 as well so now if i build this job only it is going to execute this job i don't it, it cannot able to execute this job you can see here it is not executed but my intention is whenever i run the test dependency job 1 it should able to run test dependency job 2 as well in that case we can adjust our configuration by going over here and post build actions okay nothing but after execution of this job i want to build other project okay i want to build other project nothing but other uh, job so i want to run the test dependency job 2 okay test dependency job 2 i would like to execute but while executing whether if this job is successful then only do you want me to run or if this job is failed also should i need to run that is where you can see here trigger only if the build is stable stable nothing but this particular job is successful then only you will get as a stable and the trigger even if this job fails nothing but if this job fails if i choose this option if this job fails still it is going to execute this one usually we don't choose this option next one is trigger even if the build is unstable unstable nothing but in this particular project few tasks are successful and few tasks are failed if that is the case it is going to give you as a unstable okay so mostly we don't choose these two options maybe rare cases if there is some uh, explicit requirement is there then only people go with this option so for now we are going to choose this option apply and save now build now you can see here it is doing this one and downstream projects you can see here downstream nothing but if this is successful i want to run this one also you can see here i haven't executed this job but still it is going to execute this one it is going to execute this one so this this is how we can make it as a downstream jobs downstream jobs nothing but job one is going to trigger job two job one is going to trigger job two okay now we have uh, what i can say upstream jobs as well upstream jobs nothing but okay i don't uh, job one don't initiate the job two job two itself is monitoring the job one and whenever job one is successful then it is going to initiate uh, on itself for that we just need to change the configuration now we are going to set back the set back this one i mean to say removing this one now here only one task is there i am job one i am job one and save this one and nothing we changed and this is uh, doesn't have any downstream jobs nothing but i don't trigger anybody now come here and in the configuration of job 2 okay so when do you want to run i want to run i want to run you can see here build triggers build after other projects are built build after other projects are built nothing but if my parent job is triggered then trigger me as well if my parent job is triggered trigger me as well here we can give test to pro test dependency project now what this job do this always monitor this job whenever it is executed it automatically get executes so apply and save and let's try to build the job one build now and it should initiate the job two yes you can see here it is building job two now what will happen this job two is going to monitor job one and it's execute uh, whenever the job one is executed it automatically executes the job two clear so this is how we can create the upstream jobs so this is upstream project and this is earlier it was a downstream project nothing but if job one is initiating job two then we call it as a downstream job in case job two monitoring job one and whenever job one is executed initiates itself happens then we call it as a uh, upstream jobs and when are uh, in which situation do we use these jobs in going forward we are going to create a continuous integration and continuous deployment so assume that 
uh, we want to deploy this artifact re, sorry artifact into the server we want to deploy this artifact into the server uh, when this artifact we want to deploy onto the server whenever the latest version comes whenever latest version comes then only we are going to deploy it but in uh, ca and nothing but continuous integration job we will do the so many builds but each time uh, we may not generate the latest release we may generate the snapshot so what we can do is we can initiate in case we are doing the release we can initiate downstream job in case uh, what i can say yep we can initiate in case our uh, ca job is successful and it is deploying onto the release one if it is deploying onto the release branch then only initiate the cd job otherwise don't initiate it if i am doing or if i am deploying only in the snapshot don't initiate the uh, downstream job so that is how we do in the later classes but for basic concept uh, we have two jobs that is downstream and upstream downstream nothing but it is going to initiate the child, child job upstream nothing but it is going to initiate by itself if parent job is successful or parent job run is it clear can i repeat the entire concept again uh yes yeah please okay fine so what i have done is i have created two jobs that is test dependency job one and test dependency job test dependency job two and both are independent let me make it as a independent so now both are independent nothing but if i run this job it only execute this job it cannot able to initiate any other jobs okay here also two builds are there as it is and if i build this one also it just initiate its own job it doesn't create anything okay so let me build one more time because so that both are equal four builds here also four builds okay four builds are there now my intention or my requirement is whenever my job one runs it automatically initiate the job two as well whenever job one is runs or whenever i am successful i want to initiate another job if that is the case in the job one we need to update our configuration okay so once this is completed then only i want to initiate this one right so whether i'm successfully completed or not will comes only the post build nothing but once build is successful then only i can tell to my job to execute that is the reason under post build actions you will have a option to build other projects build other projects so here you need to provide your other project name so that once this job is successful it is going to initiate other project now i am specifying my test dependency job to test dependency job to i cannot give my own name to initiate it will become a recursive loop nothing but it is going to successful and it executes again it is going to successful it executes again so i am giving job to whenever job one is successful i want to execute job to and uh, here we have option stable nothing but successful okay uh, unstable sorry fails nothing but even the job fails and there is no condition over here to uh, fail if you do just uh, uh, what i can say non existing command maybe it is going to yes now it is going to fail it won't be successful because there, there is no command called i in the linux so let me change it back so if that is the case we can choose this kind of options unstable nothing but some of the jobs may be uh, sorry some of the tasks are successful within the uh, job nothing but we are cloning the repository we are building it among them only cloning is successful uh, what i can say uh, build is not successful then it may go unstable but that is not exam that is just example such kind of cases it go into the unstable so even though if it is unstable still i would like to initiate my job to then you can choose this option but for now we'll take the only trigger if this job is successful test job is successful and save it now if i run this job it automatically whenever it is successful sorry if i run this job 
whenever it is successful it automatically initiate the test job too let's build now and fifth build is happening now if i go and check it out over here it get triggered you can see here it is triggered it is triggered by whom it is triggered by test job one and even in the result also you can see here see here started by upstream project test to deployment job this guy initiated my build number five not a jenkins user if you do manually if you go to the fourth build fourth build we have ran manually right that's the reason you can see here initiated by the jenkins user but at this moment it is initiated by the my upstream job my upstream job that is the reason even here also if i refresh this space okay you can see here downstream job uh, name is this one for this guy for project two test job one is upstream for project one upstream sorry test job two is a downstream job because once this is completed i'm going to execute the this one is it clear till here is it clear yes thank you yeah okay now next scenario is i don't want to initiate any other guys i don't want to initiate any other guys so i can remove this one and uh, this guy but this guy i will be monitoring uh, job one if job one is successful i will initiate myself nothing but started upstream by project two you will get nothing but uh, my job a is successful i will execute myself that's what it is going to do for that one you need to update the configuration and you need to monitor the job one right for that what you can do is build after other projects are built project to watch i want to watch a project which project that is test job two i am going to monitor this project and whenever the this project is successful then i will execute if you choose this option whenever this project is failed then only it will execute okay why when we use failed one assume that the project one is trying to uh, set up some environment okay but uh, in between it got failed nothing but it set up some of the systems or some of the resources it set up then a job failed then uh, half of the resources you have set up and remaining is not yet completed so you cannot use those resources then what you can do you can initiate the downstream job when it failed in this job what we can do we can delete the whatever resources you have configured okay so that it will be clean up so job one is trying to uh, create something but in between if it is failed who will remove those resources then we can choose this kind of option okay but anyway i'm going to choose whenever the this job is successful then i want to run myself so apply and save and uh, now i'm going to build project one i'm not building the project two whenever i do build the project one and the project one is successful this job is going to execute itself so so far it is still five and here it is completed sixth job and here also it is going to initiate downstream did i configure configure i have chosen the wrong job name i should choose job one right because under job two i need to tell to job one not the job two okay so apply save okay this is a sixth build should happen whenever i trigger it okay wait uh, what i will do i will make it as, as a equal so i'm running manually only job two so this is triggered by jenkins user now what will happen i am going to build the job one build now so seventh build is doing going to happen whenever seventh build is successful over there here also the seventh build happened okay you can see here upstream job yes you can see seventh build and if i open who ran this one started by upstream job okay this is also initiated by test dependency job only it should come the test dependency job too maybe yeah uh, we are monitoring and we are asking the job one to execute our job so now this time this is also executed by the dependency job only job one i thought it is initiated by the job to itself but not this case but anyway the whole agenda is whenever my upstream job is successful i want to get execute 
or execute me as well that is where you we have updated this configuration at this moment the code is available over here from here we are pulling it and building at the jenkins level and doing testing then pushing it into the artifactory once code is available in the artifactory we want to deploy it by using deployment tools that is where ansible comes into the picture ansible what does it do it takes the code from the artifact repository in our case jfrog artifactory and it deploy onto the dev environment let's take the orange line for now okay so orange line came till here so far okay to do this one what we do instead of adding in our uh, same job we will create a separate job we will create a separate job in the separate job the deployment tool take the artifact repository and deploy into the dev environment that is the separate job is do going to do now this job we don't execute manually we will tell to this job is in case build is successful and successfully it stores the uh, artifact into the artifact repository then only execute uh, deployment job there is no or it doesn't make sense uh, even though this build is not successful deploying uh, code right because there is no latest version only the old version 1.1 is there next time you ran a build the build is failed again still there is a 1.1 so there is no it doesn't make sense to deploy it manually right so what do we do we will do this deployment job separate job and we'll create it and we'll make it as a uh, what i can say build job as a dependency build job is a dependency for the deployment job whenever build is successful execute deployment job so this is one scenario where we use not this is one scenario this is the major uh, uh, what i can say we use our uh, upstream and downstream jobs if everything is fine we can end up for today again we are going to meet on monday 